now all you do is complain. You don't sound tired, to be honest with you. You sound quite yeah, angry. Really I, I feel tired. My brain looks like feel I'm looking through Swiss cheese. Oh no. Not the what show. Like me to say anything 7 a.m. for you? you? I expect to say something totally retarded sometimes during the end. I'm going to blame you. Oh, you're going to use that as an excuse. Yeah. That's basically rape. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, well, like, you know, I, 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 I think. I think I, th I think that's about right. Yeah. Well, um. Cool. Uh, but, 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 hold, hold on. We're almost there. Should have pressed that big blue button when it goes blue. Any second now. Uh, Come on. Oh my god. Oh no. Um, no, no, no. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how is. Wait, have. Uh, YMS, Shadow Vista, have you guys met before? I don't know. No. I don't think so. Nice oh, to meet well. you. Hello to both of you. Nice to meet Hello. you, sir, movie sucking, sir. You both review <laughs> yeah. stuff, because you're weird. That's, well, that's I how I weird. introduce you guys. Million oh, plus oh, sub club. Uh, yeah. Shadow Vista. Um, sorry, <laughs> I'm just making sure everything. I'm, I'm, I'm unlist, uh, rather not unlisting now, so it, it is oh my in, God. in the public you're realm. Enlisting it. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. I'm a little tired, so you guys Enlisting. have to do all of the talking. We're right? enlisted. Yeah, okay, good. All listed. All there you of go. it. Perfect. Ultimately, oh, oh, beautiful. It's all done. I don't have to do anything else now. I can just oh, go wow. to sleep. You guys it's can like take a... care of the stream. Wow, it's like a fap. It's like an e fap. Oof. Why isn't the stream in 4x3? What's wrong with you? Well, yeah. This is my vision now. <laughs> oh, okay. I have control. Oh. Um, Didn't mean to insult. You're not a fan of the arts. So, well, yeah, I guess because <laughs> everyone, everyone is now just saying hello. Hello, chat. I guess we should, we'll start with... Uh, Hi. We are uh, here today to discuss the good old Zack Snyder Justice League movie. Um, and I guess we should do a little, <laughs> like... Oh, well, we, we might have meme repository in Fringy at, at any moment. They are both late because they're both Australians. Shad is clearly trying to pull their weight here, so mm. thanks for that. <laughs> right, what? When? What? Is it but, um, Rags is unable to make it. I feel like I'm gonna have to say that every half an hour because people are gonna be <laughs> like, wait, where's Rags? the fuck is Rags? Oh, maybe I should put it in the description. That's probably a good idea. I'll just put Rags can't make this one <laughs> in caps <laughs> lock. Uh, just change the just, title of the video. Yeah, just take out YMS no and Shad today. names. Just, just, yeah, take out uh, YMS and Shad and say, uh, Zack Center's Justice League without Rags. Rags is dead. <laughs> Uh, so you have to put him down. What um, I figure the best thing to do first is is so everyone here has seen the Snyder Cut. Has every like I think it makes more sense to say who hasn't seen Justice League because I I can't remember if uh... me. <gasps> so I I had the only pure experience watching <laughs> the Snyder Cut. Well, so boy. so I don't think I don't think anybody else can even say they watched the same movie. True. <laughs> really, uh, I, got, I got an entirely unique experience because, like, the entire the entire conversation surrounding this is like a comparison, right? Pretty Where much. It's like, yeah, it's so much better do. than the first. Like, wow, what an improvement! But yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I, I got like I got the pure experience. I saw it. In that I case, you know, good lord! I, th I think I agree with you because I, like, I have no idea what my feelings would be about the Snyder Cut if the bar wasn't set so low by the Justice <laughs> Cut, and so. <laughs> I think that's I a true for everyone. I know what I would really feel about it. You're right. Um, in that case, right? I, we should probably just. I want to get YMS's his, his thoughts as a whole on that movie, then <clears throat> untouched by any commentary about Justice League. Right? Go for it. What did you think? Uh, I I, <laughs> I thought it was kind of stupid. Oh no. Um, <laughs> it's uh the. It's it's weird because like the entire conversation surrounding the movie is. You know, th there still is the conversation about Joss Whedon's cut, um, but also the conversation about like artistic integrity and what that means and how much influence a studio can have and what they would do. And all of it seems to be a bit self contradictory. And I guess I'll get into that in a bit. But I guess just I'm as it is excited. as a film, uh, I don't think Ben Affleck works great as Batman, in my opinion. Um, I think that the Flash is the most annoying character in the entire movie and like was was one of the most painful experiences was just the Flash character uh who is not only so irritating and unfunny clearly trying to be funny but also just breaks the entire movie because nothing makes any sense with the Flash 
existing and and you you have to ask way more questions than you could possibly get answers to just by the sheer existence of the flash and the inconsistency of like what his powers are what he can do why he wouldn't do certain things at certain moments or why he does and blah 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 and yeah did you uh, um, did you like the fact that uh when he was saving the the chick from the car crash that his like his shoes got shredded but his clothes were totally intact yeah because like i was having um (laughs) i was watching it with my roommate and he he's more into the like comic book lore stuff than i am like i have no idea um and so he was explaining like oh yeah he needs the suit because his clothes would get vaporized i'm like didn't he save the like he he didn't have his suit on when he saved the girl <laughs> in the car. Like, yeah, I don't know. It's wow. weird. Already it's, it's, it's Hulk Jeez. clothes logic, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what that's <laughs> Scratchy pads. <laughs> um, so I think what we, we should do is pads. go around for everybody and try and like just do a blurb, you know? We're not going to start up any discussions yet on any particular topic. We'll just your general thoughts. So since uh, we got, we got, well, I think Shad going next makes the most sense because uh, the other why, four. Why does that make because sense? Because the other four here know exactly what the other four think. So we're very interested <laughs> yeah. in hearing what you guys have to say first. Yeah, I think my viewing experience was tainted by the Justice Cut because it, my opinion, I hated that movie so much. And seeing any improvement at all, I got an inordinate amount of joy from. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I ended up enjoying it. Um, and uh, and even though the characters, because I'm a bit, I'm a fan of um, the Justice League, the actual characters themselves, and especially when they're got some of the when you read some of the really good comics and stuff uh when they're portrayed their to their best level um like one of the really good ones if, if anyone's interested is there's a remade version where uh supergirl comes to uh, the world and batman and superman basically have to save her from dark side and uh and they and wonder woman teams up and man it's a good comic book and they do the characters so damn well in that one and so seeing the characters come closer to that even though they weren't true to what, you know, I feel like the height of these characters can achieve, but seeing you even betrayed close to that brought me joy. I was, I was quite happy that Batman wasn't the butt of jokes. Like he's like, Oh, something, something's broken. Something's definitely broken. It's like, it, but he wasn't still perfect, but the fact that he improved, I appreciated. Um, I felt that there were better um setups and payoffs even if they were done imperfectly but because again they were better i I was happy about that but having said that there was so there was a lot wrong like like (laughs) there are there are plot holes large enough to drive truck throughs at some point where i was just like "Uh um what's going on all righty then i suppose uh who who wants to go next that's my thoughts at the moment (laughs) okay uh, i'll just go ahead and say it Zack Snyder's Justice League is several leagues worse than, than Justice League as it has become to be known. Okay? <gasps> Spicy. It mm. is not close at all. When we finished the movie, we thought that it might be close, but further examination, I mean, I haven't been speaking much with Mahler about it um, or anyone from the group, but I've been speaking with some other folks. Uh, Marcus, the guy from the TASM2 debate, and Jeb, they're uh, the guys from Ecom. We've been talking a lot about it every single day. That was the um, sentence. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> those guys. Um, Jeb actually put together a handy little uh, <laughs> little document comparing the Snyder Cut to Justice League on uh, Google Drive and um, read through it, rewatch the Snyder Cut and Justice League and can confirm um, for every little improvement that is in Zack Snyder's Justice League, because there are elements of Zack Snyder's Justice League that are better than Justice League, um, it introduces, I want to say, like 20 new issues that all break the story in their own individual ways. And um, what technical improvements there are in the visual effects, in the lack of stupid, terrible comic relief, whether it's from The Flash with his stupid Batcave line or falling on Wonder Woman's boobs. Um, there are way more substantive issues, the kinds that we like to focus on here at EFAP. Oh, wow. Um, in Zack Snyder's Justice League than there are in Justice League because Zack Snyder's Justice League uh, I think has 70% of Justice League in there. 
So all the story issues in Justice League are in Zack Snyder's Justice League as well. Barring, okay, the really stupid scene with Batman and the Parademon in the opening of Justice League. Fair enough. That's that's exclusively Justice League stupidity, okay? But most of the other stuff that's in um, in Zack Snyder's Justice League is also in Justice League. And it's really bad. Well, And actually, I would say that Justice League has improvements in their reshoots. Like Joss, when when rewatching this, um, when watching Zack Snyder's Justice League, I was just like, "Wow, this has really recontextualized Justice League." I understand what they were trying to do. Uh, I'm probably gonna go last because I think I'm only gonna slightly edge out Southpaw in the hot take department. So I'll let uh, <laughs> Metal or uh, Cap go go next. Do either of you want to go? I'll go next. Uh, I thought it was. Uh... I thought Zack Snyder's Justice League was a massive pile of horseshit. I thought it was terrible. <laughs> I I really didn't I didn't think anything they added was better. I think both films are terrible. I think Zack Snyder's Justice League is worse than Whedon's cut. They're both terrible though. I could be convinced that one might actually be better than the other, but they're both terrible. And so anyone who thinks it's really great, I have a hard time understanding because <laughs> It's it's really baffling to me that anyone thinks either of these movies is great. So we'll talk more about the specifics, but it was trash and I hated it. All right, metal. Oh, I guess I'll just keep it short. Uh, yeah, it's not a it's not a cause dog shit as I put it on my stream. I mean, people who watch my stream already know my my take on that, I guess. Uh, but yeah, just like as other people said already a couple of things that that improved like cyborg getting like anything i guess is like by default a little bit better but introduces many more other issues uh and just the the ratio of movie we get to what gets better but on the same time gives us more issues is so fucking broken it wasn't worth the wait it was a waste of effort and money i i i wish i wouldn't have watched it <laughs> <laughs> oh day. Uh <clears throat> oh the bloat. The bloat too. That's probably something worth talking about. Oh this I'm sure we'll, most bloated we'll go movie I've ever so, seen in my life. When I watched it with you guys, I was like, hmm. It was be definitely bad, but like eh, you know, there's a bit of my brain that was like, it's better than uh Jossie, right? Like, you know, you, you think Jossie, you immediately think uh the garish colours and the the incredibly fast pacing and the lack of context for so many things. I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I started thinking about it, writing down notes, doing a few comparisons. I was like, oh, so like in truth, Justice League is way better and it does more for basically all the characters except for Cyborg, but he ends up even more broken in Snyder's cut than he was in Justice League. That's my odd take. Spicy. Yeah. Um, but they're both terrible. Tongue. That's the that's the thing yeah. I think everybody wants to clarify. Oh, and I find the fans of this film and Zack Snyder far more insufferable than the fans of anything that we have criticized in the past. I mean, uh, the, these people have been passionately defending uh, the movement, as as a lot of people call it, while we're more interested in just what was the story like, you know. Um, I, it's it's pretty clear to me that uh, when you compare them, it's kind of cool actually. Honestly, it's it's a little bit of fun when you compare the two stories. Um, as I think Southpaw mentioned, uh, the, there's so much evidence of Joss having cut things out of Snyder's to improve continuity. It's some of the, like you rarely get a chance to see this. There's rarely two different directors' cuts of a movie that you can see which one of them was trying to do what at which point. And I would say like. What, what was it? Twenty eight minutes of slow mo. Was it? Was that the? Ten uh, percent. Ten percent of the movie is what I heard. Yeah, twenty four yeah, so or so. Yeah, twenty four minutes is ten percent of that, the movie. A lot of that was it's, cut. He he loves it. <laughs> yes, yes. It is. What um, <laughs> what I my my kind of weird gripe is like, I I'm not even sure that the Whedon cut is actually Whedon's cut in the first place because wasn't. Wasn't his cut like two hours and thirty or two forty, and then Warner Brothers made him trim it down to oh. be like, okay, we want it just two. That's why it's like literally on the two hour mark. Well, this is the thing. So I think there that... was like a happy medium somewhere. Well, like this... I don't know. 
like Joss was mandated to get that movie under two hours. So if uh, yeah. Zack Center was also still in the direct in the director's seat back in 2017, he would have had to trim down a lot of the fat too. So the only mm -hmm. reason why this movie is as long as it is and as substantive as it is, as the fans say, is because this was released digitally and they wouldn't have to worry about uh, like theater showtimes being four hours long and only getting yeah. like three showings a day. But I mean, like, also, I don't know, the fucking uh, Infinity War and Endgame are one story in two films. Kill Bill got split into two movies. Like, there are other options to this without, like, cutting it yeah. so much that it starts to feel like, well, I don't know, I haven't seen the cut, but, like, I don't know, I've heard that it feels, like, kind of disjointed and well, janky. Let's, let's think of it this way, right? So, uh, Man of Steel comes out, it has mixed reception. It's it's turns out to be shit, by the way. Batman v Superman comes out. Everyone agrees that that's a disaster. And then you've got uh, people a few years later saying, no, no, it's actually a masterpiece. It's not. Then Suicide Squad comes out. Everyone agrees to this day that movie is a piece of shit. It's a disaster. Then Wonder Woman comes out. And because it's not as shitty as the other movies, they're like, holy shit, an actually good DCEU movie. That's the only thing that has drummed up really any hype for uh, for this film. And so uh, mm -hmm. for, for Justice League up ahead of time. Whereas something like Avengers Endgame, that's 10 years of buildup with like their delivering yeah. consistent hits on like the uh, entertainment. It's a it's a factor. bad plan. It literally yeah. like the universe started <laughs> with Man of Steel. You introduce Batman in the Batman v Superman movie. <laughs> mm -hmm. right? like, yeah. Yeah. No Batman movie before that, except for Christopher Nolan shit. And then Suicide Squad and then Wonder Woman is the same year that Justice League is released. So it's like, it's, I don't understand what their plan is. Like, the implication is that things have been building to this moment, right? But it's not, <laughs> it's not what happened. <laughs> so Precisely. It, it's just and a like, bad the movies... plan. Like, they don't know what the fuck they're doing. If they were all I applaud great, them for, like... for, for redoing so much now. <laughs> they're, they're redoing <laughs> The Suicide Squad oh, yeah. and Justice League <laughs> again. So it's like, oh, well, they're... They haven't given up yet, you know, like fucking Dark Universe <laughs> gave up in a heartbeat. So They'll, come back, those, but... They'll come back, dude. They'll come back. Give I them mean, time. If, if they were all at least just reaching the, the oh-so-incredibly oh, so low bar of tolerable superhero movie, this could have been an Avengers-level hit. It's not. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, people really are before. enjoying it more. Like, like the general consensus I've been seeing from, you know, most reviewers is that everyone is thinking it's better. Mm -hmm. And I have a theory as to why I think a lot of people are perceiving that because I know for myself, I enjoyed it more. Um, and when I try and break down why I think I enjoyed it more um, for two reasons, really. And when I also look at audiences, I find audiences mostly judge a film by uh, how, their emotional response and how much they enjoy it. And then if they, you know, if it ticks those two boxes, they'll generally say, yeah, it was a good movie. Um, and so in my opinion, I'm thinking that, one, the tone was far more consistent in the Snyder Cut versus the Justice Cut. Um, and uh, the setups and payoffs were uh, um, uh, clearer to see, even if they weren't done, you know, and they might, only, might not even done been done very well at all, but they were clearer and more noticeable and discernible for, an, you know, the audiences to kind of get the emotional payoff. Uh, the ones that, of course, come to my mind most is with um, uh, The Flash and uh, Cyborg. But a couple of, like, I know... If, uh, <laughs> well, actually, the payoff for The Flash one is uh, it's it's built on <laughs> toothpicks that aren't even there because the reason why <laughs> The Flash needs to do what he does is retarded. Um, but... It, I don't think the the casual audience isn't going to be discerning so you know specifically um, if the justification for them doing these things are, is valid. They're just there along for the ride, and because that has kind of like that you know emotional payoff, they are gonna. My theory is that they respond to it much more um, in that sense. So that's that's what I'm thinking at the moment. I wanted to say something quick about the tone. I'm not actually convinced it's a whole lot more tonally consistent. So one of the things going into this cut that I was pretty sure would be better about this version is that it wouldn't ping pong back and forth between the sort of typical Zack Snyder, grim, dark, and Joss Whedon's quippy fun. Hey, we're making jokes. We're making light of things. But there was a lot of bad comedy in this movie especially compared to Man of Steel and Batman v Superman, which have 
almost no jokes in well, the entire movie. So this is something I find really interesting, right? Because all this conversation about studio control, we don't know that when S Snack, fucking hell, when Zach made the first <laughs> uh, sort of cut or the, the script, whatever, he may have been told, you need to lighten this one up. He was like, a, a lightened Zach film looks like what we just saw in the Snyder Cut, I think. And then when he uh, uh, was taken over by Joss, he was probably told when he came in, make it even lighter, even more comedy, because this isn't a line of it. So I don't even know. But what we have is Zach saying, no, this is my vision. This is what I wanted. There's no like, oh, there's some jokes in there that I didn't want, but I had to put them in there because the studio. Apparently the last scene is like changed too. He almost like quit the Snyder Cut over it. Yeah, he didn't so... even. He was gonna do a fucking a Green Lantern or something. Yeah, and he had to. Right. Uh, yeah. So it's not even this, like it's literally not even his final vision. Well, from what he said, that's so... the only thing. <laughs> apparently, but you're right. But uh, I mean, if, if we're gonna be specific, I mean, like, it's not even the point anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's the I... One thing, two things, whatever, you know? I, yeah, yeah. I have to disagree with you, capital O. I think that <laughs> the comedy in Zack Snyder's Justice League is great. That moment when the woman, the, the Icelandic woman is singing and she starts uh, sniffing Aquaman's <laughs> sweater was hilarious. Oh, can I, it was incredible. On that note, uh, uh, Adam, <laughs> did you think when you she started singing near the beginning of the film that there was context you were missing? You're gonna have to re remind me the specifics to that. There's a that woman... was in the prologue, right? Yeah, yeah. When when Aquaman starts swimming away, like the people there just start like doing a doing a song thing, and then she sniffs his sweater. <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't. I, I I I didn't question it. I was just like, <laughs> yeah, interesting. Yeah, I just I don't even because. None of us knew what the fuck was happening. We were all just like, why? Why? And it's just like, what? It, what? Like, genuinely now, what is... Because I watched Aquaman. <laughs> well, that's the, the, <laughs> I don't know. That's the thing. This is before that, so... But I would imagine you might have thought that would be helpful. <laughs> um, I... So, correct me if I'm wrong, but in Aquaman, like, there's many conversations of the characters talking underwater without having to go into the air bubble, right? <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah. So, in this yeah. right? introduces this okay, rule when they yeah. start, like, making dolphin noises. <laughs> It, well, because it's like, I think it, it's just so weird what DC is doing because there's so clearly it's so, such little communication between <laughs> films and directors. So like James Wan was like, oh, yeah, we'll just have him talking underwater. And Zack Snyder is like, I don't know how well, to do that. Just um, on that note. Uh, <laughs> or maybe Joss Whedon. I don't know which one <laughs> so, was responsible. Um, but it was funny how in the middle of the fight, she brought in an air bubble <laughs> and was like, just to say like a one liner and then. Also, uh, I just want to add that Zack Snyder is an executive producer of Aquaman. So, well, so, oh, yeah. So, what weird. I want to say was like, um, according to James Wan, his movie Aquaman is a sequel to the Snyder Cut, not to Justice League, because uh, the including Patty <laughs> Jenkins, they are unhappy with what Joss did to Snyder's movie. Right? That's that's a common sentiment. Mm. What Joss did. They repeat. There's a top comment on this like little video that goes over all the elements of uh, the film that I, I was watching when I was trying to come up with some more like just discussion points and stuff. And uh, the top comment is like, to, like this is almost a crime, like what Joss did. Like it should be punishable. <laughs> this is fucked up. I think Warner Brothers did it. I don't know if Joss Whedon's responsible. Well, this is so. This is the thing. This is also <laughs> interesting about the whole subject. Is uh, we treat it as though it's Zach versus Joss, but in reality, it's a lot more complicated on both sides. I yeah. would imagine. Yeah. Um. Because you you know that if he had full control from the big like like he, he wasn't off the project at all and he had released it in 2017 it wouldn't have looked anything like what we've got today. Um, oh yeah, not at uh, all. Yeah, there's the, Warner Brothers wouldn't have let it be four hours or four no. by three aspect ratio. Like those two things, you can kiss goodbye. Like even if Joss was not real involved, quick, like Warner Brothers would have. More well, as a Joss stan, so <laughs> Justice League is terrible. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I know I'm gonna have to say it a whole bunch of times in this stream and that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. So can I just jump on, on in on the point that you guys are making just now is that uh, Zach is also working off from the benefit of hindsight and everyone is assuming that every change True. in the Snyder cut was uh, something that he changed from Joss Whedon. Yeah. It's like, no, no, he could change things that he first would have thought would have been great in the film. But now yeah. I mean, with hindsight, when people reacted yes. poorly to it, he has a. You're right. And there are references for this. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> there are things that Zack was going to put in the movie, but with the reaction to Joss's cut having them, he was like, oh, I'm not going to put them in there now. People don't like them. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and like, you can pass the blame. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Joss, Joss Whedon got me too. Everybody can blame him for everything now. Yeah. Right? yeah. Like, you're not, you're not, if you're Zack Snyder or anybody still working with Warner Brothers, you're not even going to pretend like Warner Brothers is slightly responsible for the Joss Whedon cut. You're just going to toss all the blame onto the Me Too guy. Right? And it's fine yep. because nobody cares about him anymore. No. <laughs> so. It's a. Persona non grata at this point, uh, yeah. which you know feels bad because like if you were given an incomplete uh, Zack Snyder base plate to convert into a movie that's a completely different tone with a completely different storyline, I say completely different storyline, a, a meaningfully different series of events. Um, that's a nightmare, like to to try and do that. And on the point of the Aquaman stuff, right? Um, in Zack's version, they do the the, the noises and points. That's not in Aquaman. I don't know why that's happening. But Joss cut them out, and he doesn't. Uh, <clears throat> he doesn't well, he doesn't have them in the in the cut, so it makes more sense with Aquaman. Then you've got, um, uh, is it, his name's Mira, right? The Mira. Mira. Yeah. yeah. Her her parents died, according to the Snyder cut. They are. Uh, <laughs> her dad is incredibly important to Aquaman's storyline, so that doesn't make any sense. But then, if you watch Joss's cut. Uh, the camera pans away from her, and instead of saying my parents died in the war, she says my parents fought in the war. Like, oh. Oh. Like, even though the film came out ADR. that long ago, it was, I'm assuming it could have been Joss, could have been whatever, but they were trying to account for continuity where they weren't in Snyder Cut. And a lot of people have said, well, it's yeah. this director's vision. And it's like, well, what, what does that mean when you've got a shared world, though? Like, I don't understand. Yeah. Um, can I yeah, also add weird. on that point? I I've heard a rumor that uh, Zach didn't even watch the Justice League cut, which and I'm not sure I believe. And even if he didn't, I think a lot of people around him did and would give him information. And even on top of oh, that, oh yeah, he knows. Other... <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There, are, there would be other points of hindsight that he would be reacting to, like the other movies, like the point you just brought up, Mauler. I mean, for instance, I noticed that um, the talk between Bruce Wayne and Wonder Woman about her having, you know, disappeared for so long and not done anything is conspicuously missing from the Snyder cut. Cut, so now it fits in better with <laughs> that horrible dumpster fire 1984. Um, is that the right one? Wonder Woman 1984? No, um, yeah, that's the right one. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. the Orwellian <clears throat> movie. Yeah, oh gosh. Um, but yeah, so uh, that scene was is not in the Snyder Cut anymore, and that's not a necessarily a reaction to uh, the Justice Cut. That was a reaction to the Wonder Woman movie that was played previously, uh, in my in my thoughts. Well, no, because I think you're right, but the problem was that, that that means it's out of continuity now with BVS, because at the end of BVS, she's like, it's been a hundred years since I've done anything, and it's like, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which, I mean, Zack Snyder directed that one too, right? Yeah, so Zack saw that Patty ignored him, and then he was like, I guess I'll just follow along, because this is the last chance I have to make anything in the superhero fucking thing, I'd rather side with her than not with her, if you know what I mean. <laughs> um, but the thing is, that's not like Joss's, like, people are like, I, I've seen the claim that like, ah, Joss is out of continuity with 84, it's like, no, 84 is out of continuity with Joss, like, that's not yeah. fair. <laughs> he didn't know she was gonna make that movie. <laughs> Nobody knew she was gonna make that movie. <laughs> um, also, I'm hello, saying, meme repository. Oh yes, hello. meme repository, welcome. Oh, hello. hello. Our technology is wonderful. Hunter. Uh, since, yes. since we've all done it and you've just arrived, why don't you give your blurb, what is your take on not only how good the Snyder Cut is, uh, but also how good it is in reference to Justice League. Say whatever you want. Motherfucking sesame seed. <laughs> <laughs> just, oh, this just, fucking no, movie. Oh, this no. fucking piece of shit. This cunting piece oh, of no. horse radishing fuck. Mom. This... <laughs> is one of this is an absolute turd of a film, an absolute <laughs> abomination. Joss Whedon, you've done some bad stuff, but buddy, you tried. You had nothing to work with, and you still tried to fucking salvage this mess of a piece of ah. Uh, I have, in all my years, never had a more unpleasant time watching a film that I have sitting through this abomination of a fucking celluloid fucking... Yeah. Oh. 
So you I, liked I it didn't now. like it. So you liked it, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> it's kind of hard to That's tell. A, it's a good price. Um, <laughs> well, in that case, it's already become clear for chat that uh, the majority of the cast, which is a minority <laughs> in the world, think Joss's cut is superior. Uh, I know, crazy times. How? <laughs> Are you all right? <laughs> he's, he's, I'm excited to see Joss's cut. Well, oh, dude. Because I know I, uh, it's like a shorter version anyway, so it's like. Dude, I'll watch that with it's you. It's half as yeah, long. I've already seen the. Yeah. Um, like, because, yeah, it's, it's a it's a bad movie, for sure. It's awful. <laughs> but yeah. it's kind of amusing. I, I uh, when we finished it for our sort of DC arc, I already said, like, it was my favorite out of all of them for, like, entertainment value. It came just above 84, which kind of. That's bizarre, right? The listings, like, my favorites <laughs> are that and 84. <laughs> like, what? But when she mm. wrapped her lasso around the RPG, I was in love. I, I had found the movie for me. <laughs> uh. Snyder Cut is a lot more um, dour and slow. <laughs> and again, to make it clear, again, they're both shit. <laughs> they're both we'll just shit. remind everybody periodically, it's fine. Yeah. So to answer Meme Repository's question about how could anyone think it's better, <laughs> I think it's because... General audiences value certain aspects much, much higher than other things. And when there's a, to them, when they see a minor improvement, um, uh, that can have an inordinate, inordinate effect on their ability to judge it and enjoy it much higher than the other aspects that were done worse that they don't care about as much. And to the, I think that the largest takeaway is that people are perceiving that the characters are done much better. Yeah, uh, and the tone is better, as I mentioned before. Well, well what's like the biggest like contention? I'm losing a planet. Is it? Is it like? Oh, oh, so, like your me, your biggest no, issues are like? Thing. I'm going to be ranting about that when we get to it because that's. Mm, um, mm. But but that's something that uh, I reckon casual audiences they will just brush off. But in terms of be, if the carry like, and this is this is true in like you know in writing, right? If you can. And I'm not saying they did this in the, the in Zack Snyder's thing, but just writing generally, if you can nail the characters in a story, that story can mm. be beloved and people will love it really, really well, even if a lot of the plot ends up being a mess, like a total mess, and even the world building fails and stuff. Also, I, I think I said it before in, in other places, uh, most people probably didn't even watch the, the the Justice Cut before that again. Like they probably watched it when it came out, and then they watched this one, and then they thought this one is better. Just to account um, for the people you'll piss off. I know that Angry Joe watched the old one right before <laughs> he said that in his review. So. Yeah, yeah it, plenty of people he did. He rewatched the Weedon cut. Watch so them back he did to six back. Six hours of Justice League. In a row. Uh, plenty of plenty of people did watch them back to back and concluded with ease that the Snyder cut was better. I just you know. The conversation will have to go on, you know, in terms of talking about the connections yeah, and the differences, so. because I, you know, like uh, the claims have been have been laid bare. Who knows what happens next? Um, I don't even know what what we should talk about first or in general. <laughs> well, what's your biggest issue? Is it the can like it's the consistency between other films and plot holes? Is that are those um, two things like the biggest problems with the Snyder Cut? Well, uh, I would say just just <laughs> torn apart by inconsistencies and conveniences. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Uh, the the stakes are finished, by the way, in this universe. Oh yeah. There's, yeah. there's no stakes well, anymore at all in Snyder Cut's universe. But that's yeah. Not going to get any more movies, I think. Right. That's the idea. Precisely. So yeah, as a film on its own, if it had any sequels, it would have fucking destroyed them. But it doesn't. Yeah. So it won't. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah, uh, we could start with um the one of the biggest I think in the movie. But everyone else can sort of. Yeah, we're gonna have a chat about it, but um, we have unlocked the ability to undo mistakes at any point for uh, our team with the Flash with no yeah. cost. <laughs> so, uh... so that's like I my roommate told me that was like also in the comics or something. I don't know. He just well, like from what I understand, there needs to be repercussions, <laughs> right? When His anyone does this in any stories, if you reverse time, it's like there's got to be a repercussion for that though, right? Because otherwise, you'd just do it forever. You'd abuse it. So what are you doing? It's like there isn't one. You're like, okay. Yeah. He Even got like Flash... really tired doing it though. It's so he weird like, because, he, really he, because he, he goes like before everything. It's like, oh, I didn't. I, I said I'd never break that rule again. It's like what, what rule? And then he just goes back in time. And does like, okay, what happened next? Oh, movie's over. So you have, you have to break okay. the rule, Barry. Just this one time, you have to break <laughs> the rule. Like, 
I was okay. like, okay, what world? What does it? Do you explode? Like, does your head fly off? Like, what happens? <laughs> yeah, like, well, do you need to eat hmm. seven pizzas after because of the calories. Like, what? what so, I mean, this is just on? like a basic one, and a lot of people are already in chat saying it's in the comics. Like, guys, I don't care if it's in the comics. <laughs> it's not this movie. God, I'm sick of it. Well, wait, meme repository is our actually... um, comic sentinel. So, what's uh... yeah? Yeah, I don't think please. there's so a here? single thing so... as a concept that's not in. The comics, right? Like, I feel like the com comics for for Marvel and DC. It's like I'm never surprised to hear some crazy thing like, "Oh, fucking Spider Man gave his girlfriend cancer by coming in her." Like, okay, <laughs> like, yeah, that's in the comics. Like, okay, oh, man, I, I'm never surprised anymore. Are you when suggesting you would watch that movie? Like, that would be. Well, we're, we're criticizing how this stuff affects the stakes, right? And uh, it affects the stakes in the movie, and if it's from the comics, it affects the stakes in the comics, too. Yeah, for sure. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe it's just been yep. this way for so long that a lot of people haven't questioned anything about it, and that's totally fine, but, like, this is something of a significant issue. And if it were in any other but, property okay, that we're yeah. okay with shitting on, like, everybody wouldn't be saying it's in the comics, even if it was. Also, Flash reverses time twice in this movie. He yep. does it with the box, with the mother box as well, and no one gave a shit there. Uh, this is the thing. Sorry. I think, well, usually what, what do you huge think? Th oh, sorry. <laughs> what? I'm just wondering. What do you think the fans of the Snyder Cut would say in defense of the time travel thing? Because I there's you a couple of defenses. It, well, <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I think some people might say that no, no, he can only reverse time for the amount of it. You know that he can. Oh, well maintain that speed which is like so that means he could only reverse time by five minutes ten minutes at most or something like that now i'm not saying excuses it but these are the excuses that i think people would come up with trying to contextualize what happens in the film and saying oh there are limitations you're just not being fair when you, you look at what actually happened and stuff well the two that i know about and the, these aren't necessarily defenses they are responses one of them is that it's in the comics and then the other one it was uh shared in the group chat we have but um the the idea that like this is his power, okay? The villains have to defeat him by overcoming that kind of limitation, and that's what makes the drama interesting, or something like that. It's just like, I, I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had the same issue with Doctor Strange, by the way. Uh, it's, it, he's unbeatable. And then, uh, yeah. what's his name? Kaecilius? He pulls himself out of re being reversed, which is not a thing you can do, by the way. <laughs> also, when did, um, when did the Flash... To is it the time uh, sorry, travel part you... of her time? Like, when he has a rule for it, he must have done it some time before that. Even he says though he said, oh, I only do like, he said I only time do gets like weird. small stuff before. Because at least, is, is that still the Zack Snyder cut? I, this is all a mush. Because he says, like, oh, I never did like this whole alien beating big boy thing. Like, I only did like small burglary thingies or whatever. <laughs> Like, he, when did no, he, when he did said he something different. He told the truth about using time travel all the time, and then they judged him for it, so he used time travel and then went back and then said what you said. Oh, oh <laughs> fuck. Stop it, Flash. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be in a position where I'm going to be running um, Devil's Advocate all the time, but I half wonder if I... Because I, I, I always want criticisms to be done at least fairly or at least account for what pe def the defenses that people will say. Because I think... Uh, uh, like a limited version of um, time travel or time reversal can be a uh, power that could work with limitations and could be employed in a story. Um, and so I'm not necessarily, I don't necessarily think that that can ruin everything as long as there's right rule, proper rules placed around it. Um, and it's done right. Because I mean, a good example of the fact that time travel can still make things difficult is when you're playing a video game and your save is essentially a time reversal thing where you lose or you, you die and you have to go back to a previous save that's like a minute or whatever behind. And you can play, in your, play yourself into a position where the last point you saved or the point that you can return time to essentially is really still a really, really hard position to resolve. And sometimes you put yourself into an, uh, an impossible decision position that anything that you do because things are so bad you can't fix and so that's the kind of thing if if oh, if the flash time drama. reversal is limited by length that it doesn't break everything there are still enough limitations that you could still work with it in a sequel sure but like it's in this mm -hmm. movie that's all we've got to work with and it's the yeah, biggest drama yes. the end of the world is just solved because he can do that and it's like oh okay you can do that i guess well uh, technically it's <laughs> only solved because he has the he's able to act within the space of time um that he was able to give himself to prevent it happening um 
so what does that mean what does that mean <laughs> it, mean, it, it means say uh, if he needed more time to well for it let me just say the whole thing that the uh the mother box needed a massive burst of electricity to allow cyborg into the unity is arbitrary garbage and just they pulled Agreed. it out of their rear end so the flash can do something and and so i'm not just i think yeah. it's garbage all right and maybe reasoning... maybe not just so he can do something but so the time travel mechanic doesn't seem like it just came out of nowhere at the very end of the movie well, they, put, <laughs> they popped it into the the resurrection scene, right? That's that's the setup, if you will. Um, yes, mm -hmm. but at the same the time, and... I would argue Zach had him circling around and doing fuck all else because he didn't want him basically dominating the whole fight. Because that's that's what you have to do with the Flash. You have to keep him busy because he would just he just win the day on his own. Yeah, Cyborg and Flash. Yeah, could have there was like that weird moment. Uh, Steppenwolf. Like <laughs> when? <laughs> Sorry. Huh? There's I. <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of talking over each other. Don't worry about it. Just uh, yeah, just keep on going. Said, just, all I was saying, Flash and Cyborg could have easily defeated Ste Steppenwolf. Yeah, the German there for a second. <laughs> Steppenwolf uh, <laughs> uh, without any problems. Oh yeah, Flash, Flash doesn't didn't need attack to him. Fucking run in, te in well, circles. Go ahead. Even when he's not running in circles, they like put weird nerfs on his abilities. Yeah. Like there's the part where the rubble's falling, and he's. He's like, ah, oh, got this one, got this one, got this one. And then another one is just falling after that point, and he yells, no! It's like, well, why didn't you get that one? Like, nothing. I don't know why you didn't get that last one, but all of a sudden he goes, no! And I think it's Cyborg that blows it up, and it's like, oh, thank you. It's like, what? You could have you done... You, like, you're so much faster. Like, this doesn't mean yes, anything. The length of time it took him yeah, to say um, no, he so... could have raced in there and saved him by the time. Yeah, hmm. like, there's... He could have he nonchalantly walked to it <laughs> like yeah. but also for people who are bringing up my comics in. by the way um i've never seen the flash be able to control time with this level of precision which is kind of a huge issue like i've seen him like run so fast that he accidentally goes through time or i've seen him like go roughly to a point he wanted but one there's usually like a butterfly effect from that so it's not something you want to do because you can stop one catastrophe but then holy fuck, suddenly an even bigger one comes as a result of you doing that. And actually, there's a quote I really like from the Flashpoint Paradox movie. Um, hmm. you, break the, you break the sound barrier, sonic boom. You break the time barrier, time boom. So in that movie, remember, he, him just going through time caused ripples from in both the past and the future uh, to just ripple forward. So that was a huge consequence of him trying to do this thing by um, going through time. Um, so time travel should have these huge throbbing consequences that make it really fucking impractical to use in any kind of, uh, meaningful way. I am. Um, oh yeah, totally agree. And yeah. there should be severe consequences. Like Just to make, make sure you're not on an island though, it. Chad, uh, there is a, what you were talking about, your, your like sort of reference to games and ideas and stuff. There is, and I forget the name of it. I'm sorry. It might be called Next. I'm not sure. Someone in chat will know. I think it's Next. There is a movie. The Nicolas starring, Cage one? Oh, starring the Nicolas, Nicolas Cage, Cage right? Where he's got a, a, like a checkpoint loader is his power, basically, but it only goes as far as five minutes, I think? Or is it 20 seconds or something? It's some limit, and um, he, you know, the, the, the drama in the movie is, can he ever be caught in a position where rewinding that much time won't save him? And it can happen, and I haven't seen the movie in fucking ages. Probably a bit floompy, but, uh, you know, yeah, I agree with you that it, it can be uh, used well, but I don't think it was used well at all in this movie. Yeah. Hmm. If he goes that fast, then his clothes shred too, and not just his shoes. So we wouldn't want that. <laughs> he late. He gets like a big nosebleed. If he goes back in time too many times, and that's embarrassing. Well, you know, yeah, we, no we, one um, likes a nosebleed. I think we talked about it at some point, uh, or I think it was with me I was talking about. But uh, just the idea that because uh, this is he said it's referenced. Uh, there's a comic that has it, but like one of the repercussions potentially is to age him up fast the longer he uses it. So. That's an easy big payoff, but of course you couldn't do that in the first movie he appears in. That's <laughs> just gonna be like, oh, oh he's that dead. didn't stop them from wasting Dark Knight Returns and Death of Superman in like the <laughs> second movie. <laughs> so true. Ooh, yeah. yeah, they could have easily. I said that before. I don't know if it wasn't EFEP or anywhere else. I forget, but they could have easily just timed it that they get all their payoff movies after Marvel finished their ones. So they could all to do all their character work while There's... Marvel is doing all their big payoffs everyone can get nice yeah. and comfy with those characters 
And when Marvel is done, you get your, your big three, four movies. Yeah. After there's nothing else to watch in the superhero I... thing, quote unquote, nothing to watch, but you can just do it then. And there's like, oh, there's another one. It's like, yeah, you sure. could. But they were expecting the superhero genre to be a fad, right? They were expecting it oh. to have like no longevity. That's well, why they had to like cram in Justice League. So that's an interesting. Is because topic, they're like, well, we got to do it now. Like, it's got no one's gonna watch superhero movies after Endgame, so like, we got to do this now. Um, and that's an interesting topic, and I don't know, I don't know how much time we should spend on this one, but it's just a sentiment I saw in two of the many reviews I watched of the film. Uh, people saying that this is the proof that the superhero genre is coming to an end and that much like uh, noir or westerns it's gonna die I don't think superhero genre is ever gonna die um, it'll well, uh, the western uh, isn't dead that's the problem with this analogy well like superhero so the concept of like a hero yeah, I don't know that's a I tough to one dead. to to kill like this superheroes are just fun fantasy sci-fi on top of just heroic stories so like I don't see it going anywhere, honestly. Um, it might not be as popular at certain points, but I don't see any other genre unseating it right now. Yeah, and let me also just say, if it becomes unpopular, that's only going to be the result of crap writing and crap moves that come out in the genre that people aren't watching. If they consistently make good stuff, people are going to like, I'm always sticking around. Like, well, the funny this thing is, is a genre I've loved my whole friggin' life in comic books and everything. The superhero, so like the MCU and, and the DCU are both big combos of sci-fi and fantasy and then different timelines, different multiverses. So like there's really no story they can't tell for the most part. Um, yeah. Westerns are quite limited compared. <laughs> like this, this is not some huge breadth compared, right? Like I, I still admit there's a, there's a bazillion stories you can tell in a Western. Uh, but... uh, gee, I don't know, Mola. What about aliens, huh? Um, you know? Wait, 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 wait. Aliens versus cowboys. Aliens versus the Snyder Cut. <laughs> <laughs> what have, you, have, we done, have we done that? There's cowboys well, and aliens. Cowboys and aliens. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that's the thing. Uh, I just, um, I just, superhero stuff has been around since. Could you, could you argue Achilles is a superhero? Could you, could you? Hmm. Well, a lot of the Hercules. gods from mythology end up becoming superheroes in these universes, yeah. like Thor, for example. And Hercules is also a hero in the in the Marvel universe, actually. Um, so it's funny. Um, it, yeah. Like it, you could actually argue superheroes go back as long as mythology, um, if you're technical about it. Like demigods could be considered the first superheroes. How about like Samson from the Bible, the guy that was like super strong as long as his hair wasn't cut, <laughs> or yeah, Jesus. See, that's a power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. Yeah, I didn't want to spend like too long on that. I just, I just find it an interesting concept that like the Snyder Cut is evidence that we're like, and the, the the current sort of situation we're in for how. Yeah, I don't see how. Yeah, I'm just like, I don't know. Give it once, once the COVID stuff basically goes away, or at least gets dampened. Uh, this probably is gonna the gears will start turning again. Uh, who knows what's gonna happen? Mm. Well, they're filming a whole bunch of the next crop of superhero movies right now, so they're not going anywhere. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, like. WandaVision just came out. People, a lot of people watched that. It was mm. all over my Twitter. So, <laughs> did like, you watch it? Yeah, it was terrible. No, I didn't. We hated it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I not very it. good. You, I can fucking, I can guarantee you will not like it. That last episode, mm. nobody fucking liked it. Like there was like one or two people out there. Uh, you, yeah. you won't. It's very, very evil. Uh, but I'll be the... right back. I got to take a phone call. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. No um, worries. And so, yeah, the uh, the surrounding content for superheroes right now is a little dry, and so the Snyder Cut was like a huge well. And um, I don't know, some people have come away say saying, like, um, this is proof that uh, Snyder needs to take control again of the DCU, and other people are saying it's, th it's the, <laughs> this, uh, the obvious uh, sort of <laughs> proof that uh, no. it's the death of superhero movies that no one, no one really cares anymore. If he got his further two films in this like behemoth trilogy they would each get longer every time right there's no way he would cut them down so the next movie would be five hours and the one after that would be six i mean I, and I, I, lois <laughs> lane would get pregnant via bruce wade and bruce wade would kill dark side with the anti-god gun and then <laughs> and lois would eventually reveal to to clark kent that oh this child we birthed was actually bruce wade's let's name him bruce kent and then bruce kent would grow up to be the new batman i'm not joking these are the yeah, leaked real... fucking story of boards are confirmed to be official <laughs> fuck so, but dude I, snyder I'm... I found out that some people consider that to be amazing. Some people are incredibly excited about that timeline. I will never watch. Who are you people? <laughs> On Metal Hello. Movie. I, won't I like do the it. fact that the 
the static guy even has the um the pregnancy test in Lois's apartment to imply <laughs> sort of like that. <laughs> A oh, little no. remnant from his uh, original draft. <laughs> <clears throat> well then, uh, w w so we did the time travel stuff. Unless there's anything else anyone wants to say on it, we can move on to like the next big significant floor because there's so many to get through. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. I don't. Know. Have we gotten to the yodeling yet? Oh, uh, <laughs> that that comes later. Maybe okay. maybe start with the significant stuff. Um, the the movie opens with Superman screaming, and that awakens the mother boxes and um i'm kind of unclear as to how this fits in with suicide squad because suicide squad takes place sometime after superman's death but this movie would have us believe that superman's resurrected like within a couple of weeks it's unclear right they're not definitive about it yeah we don't we know that they were awakened awakened quote unquote like straight away but as for summoning Steppenwolf, which by the way, I'm saying all this stuff as if I understand it. I don't. Summoning Steppenwolf, that happens at some undisclosed time after, which could be as long as, you know, months. I, I don't know if there's room to say that. I feel like there probably is. Oh, you're talking about the span of time between Superman The only reference yelling. we have is calling for the queen of the Amazons to come check it, and then she says, any changes today? Meaning she's checking it every day, I guess? Or... Yeah, so that's the wiggle room you have mm -hmm. with with that. Because uh, initially I thought that was a much larger floor than it was, but then I double checked, and the dialogue does allow for a little bit of wiggle room there. Um, I think it's hard to keep track. I, you though, know, I agree. Yeah, it is. It is because my lord, this film. <laughs> um, it's a small thing, but in regards to that opening, was anyone else? A little confused at the fact that Zack Snyder doesn't seem to understand how sound works. So Superman is yelling really loud, and it's rippling <laughs> out across the world, and it's going, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> it's like in waves, and I don't understand why. So I then mean, it goes, then it goes into the ocean as well. It's magic sound. It's super. Oh, it's magic. Sound, sound is there. wave. Magic. Sound. Well, no, but I wouldn't be that. But <laughs> yeah, it's not a. <laughs> constant I don't know how. Noise. Think of think of it. The challenge as a filmmaker is like, how are we going to visualize and make it clear that like this is what's happening? I guess. Well, you know? so that's where your problem. Sound that's where your problem begins. The idea. So you're like, how do I visualize this? And you're like, so what am I doing? And Snyder goes, okay, so. When Superman screams, his scream is heard basically all over the world, and it wakes up three mother boxes. And you're like, right, so I'm already very confused. Like, <laughs> oh, good. And if we just want to go into the physics of that, I mean, people will say, ah, oh, nitpicking, but I like doing that type of thing. The amount of pressure <laughs> that would have to have been in place at the point of origin to have enough force to send a sound wave globally would just, that would be a nuke going on. So, no, like something insanely a stronger nuke. than a nuke. Like yeah. a sound, I mean, like, seriously, yeah. a sound is a type of pressure wave. Um, I mean, and so no, that's what has to be a magic sound wave for it to be the same resonance while it actually increases in size and not lose it's, it's bullcrap but well, still well, it's like if well, you want to well, go to the physics <laughs> well here's the thing superman screaming so loudly that it destroys metropolis would be consistent with his hatred of metropolis and lack of care for everyone's well-being there but yeah. this is the dceu consistency is not it, it's not its thing okay mm -hmm. i just like that it goes servers did the math and apparently the amount um, of sound he would need to generate might actually create a black hole so that's how <laughs> loud it would no. need to be that would be great no so, so I, I, I might be like <laughs> i'm a little um, confused about something in the plot and i'm wondering if either you can help me or maybe we'll confirm that it's, it's stupid. just the movie <laughs> go right ahead um so like there's the three mother boxes they had a war way back when mm. um the the alien people brought the mother boxes to Earth to turn it into a fire planet because they like fire, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and there was it. It only t like the time it takes for the boxes to sink is like not that long, right? It's like uh, at most half a day, something like that. I don't know. Half a day? Okay, okay. It, it doesn't really That's matter how long it is because I know where you're going okay. with this, and you're right. But carry but on. yeah, the um, <laughs> yeah, there was like a whole army there already which is weird but anyway i guess they they could have shown up i don't know why they would have like told them that's what they were doing or how they would have known but my bigger contention is with the um the fact that like dark side and the other dude 
didn't even know that Earth was the planet that they tried to do before, but it's like, but they knew the boxes were there. Oh, right? I can explain that. Yeah, they forgot. Please? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, this is, this is, uh, yeah. But why were they looking I... for the boxes there if they didn't know? Because the they just called to them. Okay, so, yeah. So the Superman thing, right? woke him up, the and the boxes said, dead. "Hey, we're here. You can now take the planet." Because the Kryptonians said, even though there was thousands of years when he wasn't even here. But sure, now I come. Genuinely, so, right? I'm going to try and really quickly lay out a world map from the POV of Steppenwolf and Darkseid. Okay, so you have a hundred thousand <laughs> planets. No, a million planets. Okay, and Darkseid's like, "You can't come back in my bedroom until you get me fifty thousand of those." And Steppenwolf's like, "Oh man, okay." And then uh, <laughs> downstairs in the kitchen, um, their their mother makes mother boxes regularly every day. She's just popping them out. And uh, sometimes Steppenwolf will take them to a planet to terraform it. However, if a planet and the mother boxes on a planet call to him, which apparently can happen sometimes, you'll simply go there, collect them up, and then Unity, and then terraform. It's like two different ways of doing it. This, by the way, is, is just what I've gathered from looking at defenses online. And so it happens to be that this one's calling him. And he's like, yeah, I'll come in. I'm going to have a look. And he's like, oh, my God, this one happens to be that world. Remember that world, Dad, from ages but ago? But that was like... <laughs> but, like, the whole the whole point of there being weight to that world was that, like, oh, I lo we lost to that time. And I'm, like, really mad about it, yeah, right? Yeah, That was, like, before they knew that it had the fucking equation or no, that whatever. Was the death equation? I don't remember what it was called. They found anti -life. Anti -life equation. They found that equation yeah, and then anti -life. lost the fight. <laughs> um, <laughs> can, can, can I just so he was just well. He was just mad that that was a planet that he lost to, right? So like, well, what other what reason would there me. be for the boxes being there I'm, I'm sorry, other not than... Just lost. Not just lost to, he got like a nearly fatal wound from the god of war himself. Oh, so he loses he a lot, died. maybe. He almost died. <laughs> he lost a lot of He's just particularly mad about this one. <laughs> unlike Ch unlike Chad and Wolf in the original cut. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Jocelyn Whedon Wolf, you could call him. He, uh, he was pulled away from the fight, desperately trying to kill more people. Uh, Snyder side was... Uh, cr cr carried away Snide as he side. bled the fuck out and fainted on his own ship. <laughs> mm -hmm. But Man, yes, Darkseid is such a pussy in this film. I know, exactly, it does. It undermines the menace that Darkseid is supposed <laughs> yes, to have. Yes, it does. He, he just sees his total bucket kicked, and it's supposed to be this tough, almost impossibly, you know, yeah, invincible enemy. And at the beginning of the movie, we just see... Yeah, Arrows totally can hurt range. him, apparently. I was like, mm, okay... Yeah, they. I, I, I was actually annoyed how they did Darkseid in this because Darkseid, be. when it's done right, can be a really good villain. Uh, but this, uh... he's clearly supposed to be a brute who's really intelligent. Like thus, yeah. but he's neither of those in this fucking movie. <laughs> it's no. terrible. He's well, not a plotter or a plan, schemer. He's just. Um, I'm gonna grind your bones into dust, and that's yeah. and that's all. He, and he's all talk Del? and no. But, did, but he did find the anti-life equation the first time as well, because we see the shot where oh, yeah, the thing sure. just lights That's up. That's what I was going to say. That's what I wanted to interject it. So like, he doesn't only he forget where he lost, he also forgot where the anti-life equation is, the yeah. thing he was desperately searching for. And it's apparently bad no memory. to make a fucking sticky note. It's like, oh, let's go to this planet again. It's also strange. Yeah, because... like, Sorry, they didn't lose the coordinates to the planet at any point, did they? they like, have. why would they... <laughs> I would stick a satellite in orbit and stare down can, at this like, primitive I rock for every I day for the rest of my life. I can't explain they have, this. Yeah, they just don't. They don't have maps to anywhere. They're just flying randomly. I can explain this. They've got, they've got I, I've got a quote. There's a quote from Snyder himself. Okay, because someone has asked him mm -hmm. about this. A lot of people have. <laughs> Apparently, some people can't just enjoy a movie. They have to be like, oh, how does he remember? This? So, Zach was like... <laughs> that was his quote? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, so, so, Zach was like, what you have to understand is, he lost real bad in that fight. Like, really bad. To the point where, when he went home to Apocalypse, which I'm pretty sure he spelt wrong, because it's spelt with, like, lips lips, right? Like... Apocalypse. Yes. Yeah, Whatever. Apocalypse. P-O-K-O-L-I-A-P. He said he, yeah. he went home to Apocalypse, yeah. and you know, because this loss was so huge, he like lost a lot of the, the position he had. Like he wasn't as high up, so he was, he was a lot lower down. And so it took him like ages, we're talking all kinds of years, to get right back <laughs> up there. And you know, every single person, except Darkseid, who was in that fight, they all <laughs> died. So... No, they were... It was, they were slain. slain. <laughs> they all of the people in that fight who made it out of there. So they all of their knowledge of that planet died with them. You know they were slain. Everyone. 
and that ev that fully explains it. There's no other things needed to be explained now. That's they're there all you go. dead. You might oh, think a spacefaring, multiverse traveling system of ships might have some kind of like logistic system that can kind of keep track of planets, but it f or that, the written word they maybe? were slain. The books were slain. The machines were slain. Okay, it all makes sense. Can, can I also just highlight yeah. that in the Whedon cut, the boxes were waiting for the darkest time on Earth to activate, and in the Snyder cut, they they don't activate until Superman dies because get this they were afraid of Superman. So in all the thousands of years that passed between Darkseid getting nearly killed and uh, Superman dying, I guess the mother boxes were just afraid that in the future, some guy from Krypton would come to Earth and would be their protector. Yeah, like there's no um... accounting for why they don't call out earlier than before, like, like, like from before Superman comes to Earth. I suppose you could call that the first and foremost improvement Joss has over Snyder. Snyder says the boxes wake up because Superman died and he screamed and they heard it and they were like, aha, your protector is dead. It's time to bring in the backup, which I'll creates right major back problems. Something at the door. Yeah, no problem. Uh, that mm -hmm. creates major problems for the history of the world because it means why the fuck wouldn't the boxes have called anybody up till now? That makes no sense. However, in Joss's, it's not great. But Joss says the boxes wake up because there's a there's a huge amount of fear around Earth right now from humans. Humans are experiencing more fear right now than they ever have, and it's likely a likely explanation would be that their uh, alien defender is dead, and he's the one that saved them twice from horrible monsters that could destroy the world. So with him, I think that's a there's a line of logic there, right? If if we all had this one dude who would save us whenever some horrible cosmic threat came in, and he died on the latest one, I think we'd all be like fuck. If the, when the yeah. next one comes, we're screwed. Can I actually offer a possible pushback here? Given um, how callously Superman handles the um, uh, the whole Metropolis invasion, wouldn't the like the world be kind of fearful of him too when he's um, alive? So the problem with that is that it's the film's ideas versus the reality of the films. So like, right? Um, and I think there would be. If we hated Superman, right, let's say me and you were in that universe, we saw all the footage from Metropolis, and we talked in Discord every day about how I fucking hate that guy. Like, he's, <laughs> he's a terrible super superhero, <laughs> and blah, blah, blah. And then we see the footage of Doomsday, and we see him, like, or at least we're told, whatever, that he killed Doomsday and, and was killed doing it. I'd be like, hmm, all right, okay, apparently he was kind of... We, okay, <laughs> like it's hard to criticize that, um, but at the same time, I'd be like, even if I hate the guy, if he was stopping a, a horrible world-ending threats from getting us, I would prefer him to not having him. I guess. Yeah, that's fair. Still an asshole. So yeah, yeah. The the fact that it, they could forget where the planet is is unbelievably <laughs> dumb. Yeah, it's insane. just. Like, it's next level stuff. And there could have been a fix. Like, it doesn't take too much creative energy for them to... And, it like, it would have been big, so you'd need to justify that they could only have done it once, that all the gods harnessed their powers and then they got the power from the mother boxes or something, or they were able to use them temporarily or something like that to transport the planet to another part in the galaxy or something like that. I will, and, I will and, hand you that would be better, yes. Yeah, and just hide the planet somewhere because we're dealing with powers of gods and other things. So you can justify that level of insanity. Um, and then if they are just able to, you know, with any vein of logic to explain why it was a one-off, they could only do it once. But now, now, the planet's hidden. Where Darkseid thought it was is there, it's not. And then he spends the rest of the thousand years looking for the <laughs> stupid thing. That could have worked, and it's not too hard to, you know. But no, he just he just forgot, guys. <laughs> I mean, they've got literal gods on their side. You can't tell me they can't. They couldn't like cast like some kind of ritual to just obscure oh, the yeah. planet. Another better idea that this would have worked in continuity. Zeus was there. Zeus did the Themyscirin invisibility thing over the solar system. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, just any Damn, kind of acknowledgement. Son. You know, it's like there's a billion ways you could get around it. Like if if you wanted that to be your plot, but no, he Darkseid just forgot because now Darkseid is a friggin' idiot and can be <laughs> killed by an axe and has no menace or threat at all and is angry yeah. and uncontrolled and like Darkseid is being and, ruined. Oh my god! And um, the implication oh of of this being like unrestricted, no, uncut down over four hours kind of works against it because it's like okay, you had no excuse not to include any of this. 
yeah, you can't even absolutely. pretend like we, it was for <laughs> for pacing or time constraints. Mm -hmm. So you just like Snyder forgot. So <laughs> it's not. But also, how do the mother boxes recognize a death scream from a regular scream? Because Superman has screamed in the past. <laughs> Why did that not ripple across planet Earth? He, he was like more hurt boxes? than usual. Well, <laughs> so also, the obvious question: also... What if he died via his head getting chopped off? What happens? Yeah. Can I don't know. Point out? It's also, screams also, forever. Also, also, isn't isn't he like like covered in like kryptonite when he screams? Why can't he do a power yell when he's covered in kryptonite? Don't know. You <laughs> think you think know. he wouldn't be able to do a power yell at that point? But hey. Yeah, I just really. Maybe that's why he it all never, the way through. I noticed this because of the the beam meme repository post because there's greed everywhere. It's like, how can he do a power yell when he's like weakened? Can I point out? Um, no. So. You you had a Green Lantern in this battle, Monkey Green Lantern, uh -huh. the worst, the worst <laughs> Green Lantern ever, and we can get yep. to that shortly. But the question here's the thing: so the Green Lantern Corps exists in this universe; they've existed for thousands of years. Don't you think that if they gave a shit, that they would have like come to Earth? Um, you know, probably because their one of their warriors fell there. It's like so these mother boxes, we can't have them all coexisting on the same planet. We're gonna take these things. And we're going to move them to separate sectors of the galaxy, basically. Fuck, move them to Oa. The the guardians would be like you, you could have an army of oh, Green yeah. Lanterns guarding these things, and, yeah, but they don't. They're useless. It would be impossible to invade Oa, basically. And they did very yeah, very difficult. So dirty in this they didn't movie. Do a good job with them. <laughs> and then they like forgot so, where one of them was. It needs to be said, right? Green Lantern, in Snyder's version, fires three lasers and then gets killed. <laughs> so, he's, he, wait, 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 wait. He gets killed okay. because a bug flies into him and knocks him to the ground and then uh, Darkseid finishes him off. In Whedon's version, <laughs> he flies up, hits someone with a hammer that he creates with his imagination because that's the cool thing about Green Lanterns. And then we cut to him later, and he's already on the floor getting executed, meaning we don't know how he died, but he was defeated by Steppenwolf. Which of those two mm. do you think is superior? Oh, and also Lexers. there's a second Green Lantern that's just <laughs> dead. I I don't know, I just, I feel mm. like that's already two points for Joss, just saying. Yeah. Green Lantern's is really is, fucking cool, guys. Is there a second Green Lantern as well that we see die? I think that that's, that's a oh, thing, Oh, in right? the, um, the Nightmare Future Flash thing, I think? The nightmare. That's Kilowog, by the way. They they I, they just killed Kilowog just in the future Flash just just randomly. Thanks, guy, that iconic yeah. character. Because Greenland is like one of the one of the few ones I know of, and I was like, oh, like imagination, that's that's cool. And I saw a Green Lantern, and I was like, oh shit, it's gonna do like the hammer things, like pew pew pew. <laughs> it's like oh, oh okay. Do the lasers? The I can't think of anything labor. Like uh, yeah, a laser. Like ugh, it's like one division. Yeah. Um, sorry, what were Before you we say? move too far away from Darkseid, can we talk about his plan? Because I'm a little confused <laughs> as to whether he wants to turn all these planets to dust, or whether he wants to terraform them and rule over them, because um, he says both. Yeah, I don't know if... I was confused them... when they were talking about the free will thing, because I thought at one okay, point wait, that well, they were going to mind control people, but I don't know if that so was actually the plan. When you engage the Unity, it turns... Uh, the current planet into his home world, which is apparently a very dusty yeah. planet, which, which is what you could argue he's me he means when he says turn to dust. And secondly, it'll, it'll turn everybody on there into parademons. Mm -hmm. And so he controls oh, okay. parademons. So it is kind of like mind control thing. So, so does that mean that they were unable okay, cool. to create any parademons for a few thousand years? Well, he was, he was doing it to a bunch of other planets, right? So they, so they had other mother boxes. Well, I, that's what it, yeah, he would, this, so this is the really, it, it, it all falls apart. Like I said, Mother Darkseid is making her mother boxes in the kitchen, right? And when they discover, oh my god, Earth is is the, the anti-life equation, right? And this is, I'm sorry, this film is so bad. So that <laughs> is the key to taking over all life in the multiverse, right? That is the just, oh, that is, that's top tier. That's like Excalibur times, uh, the Infinity Gauntlet, Two. that's just, oh, oof, yeah. we're winning. And so, you've got the ability to teleport, you've got a huge army of parademons, you've got mother boxes, why not just teleport to a distant area in Earth that no one's at, and just do another unity? Yeah. 
That's what I was thinking for the first battle. I'm well, like... yeah, so he could have done it for the first one too, but he's really still... Yeah. Like, Shad, were you, uh, did you survive watching the battle scene? Because... I don't know. Like, <laughs> so I was too distracted by Darkseid being a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> they literally have four I, factions. I, I just they... say, like, when Darkseid is done right, he's this unassailable, always composed, insanely powerful villain who's and he's got his arms behind his back and he's got his like uni beam things and and like the Justice League are barely holding on to keeping up with this guy and is not even breaking a sweat. That's how Darkseid is usually done. And then when they actually get Darkseid to break his composure, you know, like, whole oh, crap, stuff is happening because mm -hmm. he is so powerful, it takes such extremity to get him to that point. And it's usually He's only the final Superman. boss. Yeah, who can <laughs> even approach it. And in this, he's getting his absolute rear. Oh, just... It's really so he wants to. He wants to destroy all life and terraform these planets so he can rule over them. But who's going to be here, and why would you want to rule over? Well, I guess it's all parademons. It's um, he likes the parademons. It's the classic. But just... Dare I say, it's like the base. It's the first motivation you come up with for a bad guy. Like he just wants to control everything. Like okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he wants to. Con he wants to turn everything to dust and then control it. Like why? He really likes like, it. Like when you want to take over like a city and like you know. A war, you don't destroy the entire thing because you want to control the city, right? Am I crazy? I mean, like, okay, like if you're trying to conquer something, what do you destroy all of it? Am I missing something? So oh, how I do you lose point. any battles? Oh, you have like millions and trillions of para demons by now, don't you? I just is so <laughs> we have the boom tubes like everywhere even in the end battle when the unity is about to be like completed and Darkseid's just looking at them and he's like annoyed even then i'm like dude pile in uh, pile in right now pile <laughs> yeah in. just go through <laughs> shoot your go, 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 go. omega beams do, do, mm -hmm. um and yeah and just... it's just like nothing about it works in any way shape or form um a lot of the criticisms of it apply to joss's vision as well but less apply as far as i can tell from uh going through them all the dark side stuff getting removed um, makes it a lot more clean. And there's no, oh, I accidentally forgot the most incredible thing that I will ever know about in my entire life. Also, this is the place where I almost died. This is the place, the only place that's ever defeated me. Mm -hmm. They've got my, they've got my mother's boxes that are my very mother's precious. <laughs> and then you, dr you drive away, and then you're like, oh fuck, what was the name of that planet? One of them goes, oh. Fuck, uh, uh, Girth? <laughs> Girth. I remember. Smurf? So, Smurf, no. that was probably it. Oh, right down. Right down. It's, it's, it's funny because um, you contrast this with Lord of the Rings, and um, at least in the <laughs> cut when, when Aragorn takes the Palantir and shows Sauron like the sword, and it's like, this is the sword that, you know, severed your fingers and separated you from the ring. And so, like, Sauron has a better memory of the exact sword the hilt of the sword that <laughs> defeated him than Darkseid does of the fucking planet that has the mother boxes and the anti-life equation where he was almost killed. It's so funny because that's all unnecessary additional shit, basically. Like, you don't... The anti-life equation stakes aren't needed in this movie whatsoever. We don't need it. It's no, not, they're not! Not at all. Um, yeah, don't And matter. yet, you have this sequence where Sep Steppenwolf is like, oh my god, what is the mother box showing me? <gasps> this is the planet. And he hits his thing down. And as viewers, you're all like, what? what is... Wait, oh what yeah, is the, this? the symbols from earlier, I guess? And then he's like, yeah, I dude. have found the planet. And you're like, what the... What? <laughs> what do you mean you found the... I'm so confused. <laughs> like, what's happening? It's more important now. <laughs> I, I wonder, did that... Would it make up... What, what if... Jesus Christ. What, what, was that sensical for comic view comic people who knew about this? Like, does the anti life equation look like this in comics? No, nope. like a big okay. No, nope. well, go. <laughs> like to my knowledge, he like I had never read a comic um, that he had actually found the anti life equation. Uh, Final Crisis, this. he finally did, and uh, oh, basically did he? Was, oh, okay. yeah. Um, and basically, like anyone who hears it instantly, it, basically, it, he is the only will in. He, he almost becomes the only will in the multiverse. Because anyone who hears it immediately just um, be becomes another um, subservient yeah. to his will, basically. Um, and uh, the the life because so like anti life refers to like when you have no free will, uh, it is you are no longer living. While well, the life equation is the source of 
free will. And I think it's like I think it's something to do with the source and the uh, um, and all like there's, like there's a lot of complicated stuff to do with well, DC see, cosmic mythology, but they don't go into was, any of that here. Yeah, what you just said was yeah, infinitely I, more I, interesting assuming... because with no context, it's a a movie you're going into it thinking the guy who makes these movies is very edgy. Okay, what's like the most important thing the villains after? Oh, you know the anti life equation. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> that sounds really it's lame. Like, it's like the opposite of life. Yeah, man. It's like the Whoa. other thing. It's like against life. Yeah. <laughs> Which is defined as free will. Um, but so, they don't like go into anything like how can mathematics like uh, define life and death? Like there's so much here that they have not established. So you just mm -hmm. hear anti-life equation. It's just like, wait, what the fuck is that meant well, to be? And you wait, see all the we, we, we missed a few steps here. And you're like, what the fuck? I know you... that he cares about it a lot. Does he take a photo it's of the very symbols important to and then put it into like a thing and then it's like you get coins and then you eat them and then you get the <laughs> anti- I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming he didn't find it on Earth in the comics. Uh, there was this he did not. Mystery he did not. And and there's this thing in the DC universe, I forget what it's called, but it's this like this wall made of corpses on the very edge the, of the, the universe. The source wall was made it's of dead gods. Wall. Yeah, and like, I thought he was staring at the source wall to try and decode it there. Um, well, but anyway. Well, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure that anyone uh, in the comics, like most people who solve the anti-life equation become part of the source wall because it's like a power no one should have. So that's like an instant, like you get this, you die, but then uh, Darkseid overcame that somehow. I don't know, I haven't read... I've read um, Final Crisis, but I need to read like the stories that lead up to that just to fully understand how he got it. Because Final Crisis in and of itself is kind of convoluted as fuck. But do you want to, um, <laughs> yeah. do you want to but go over? I a guess little... my point is the fact that it's just on Earth. It's tattooed underneath the, for some reason. It's just yeah. It's like again, it's really anticlimactic. It's like oh, okay, there's the anti. Like it's just been uh, okay, sure. Um, do you want to tell him about what you told me about the mother boxes as well, like what they were and what they are? Okay, so here's the thing. Turning the mother boxes into these doomsday devices, these terraforming things, is like making a tricorder a doomsday weapon. Like, these things are not meant to be these big terraforming monstrosities. Mm. They're basically just supposed to be living computers that are tapped into the source. They, they have certain abilities, but they've never been used as doomsday weapons as far as I'm concerned, or at least nothing that I've been able to find. Like, I did some research to make sure I hadn't missed something huge, but no, whenever I look it up, it's just like, yeah, yeah, it can do this, it can heal people, it can, uh, you know, it can bring up knowledge and, and stuff. Like it's basically a living computer. And the thing is, it's do it's not even apocalyptic. It's a new. It's this is new Genesis technology. They don't even bring up yeah. new Genesis <laughs> in this. This is we just they just took the edgiest parts of this <laughs> much larger mythology that Jack Kirby created and just vomited it onto the screen as this edgy, grimdark, fucking bullshit. Ugh. It's I don't know. It, it's just they they needed to have the infinity stones thing i guess or it felt that what way. was it there's like there's like boxes and transformers i didn't even see those movies what i'm the confused box. about is like <laughs> boxes. there's like uh so cyborg's dad uh or whoever I, that's who it was yeah who uh used the laser on the box mm -hmm. yep yes and he wasn't trying to destroy it he was trying to make it superheated so that they would see the abnormality on a satellite with thermal imaging. Yes. Even though where it wound up going was like their fire base that they had just created with the first two boxes <laughs> where it's like this, they, they had this gigantic like fire force field already. It's like, it's I don't like know. a dome. Seems like well, you probably see that from thermal imaging like, well, like in, this, in the, um, this is supposed to be a completely abandoned area why is there like this gigantic they, neighborhood of fire right now don't they, <laughs> they um they they scan for like unique systems in joss's vision right because they don't have that plot line so they they say like we're gonna look for you. we're scanning all of his satellites for like a unique signature from the boxes to discover the place and then they have their character scenes and then he's like oh we found it you know that sort of thing um because mm. because yeah uh I'm not convinced that Silas killing himself was originally intended to be um, that he was putting a tracker on the box. I'm more convinced that originally he was supposed to be trying to destroy it and that it failed because he, mm -hmm. he was hoping it would work and it didn't. And then as time went on, Zach was probably like, oh man, it kind of fucks his sacrifice up, doesn't it? When it's like, oh, he was just wrong and he killed himself. It's like, uh... Maybe yeah, if to make, make it... it a bit more like noble... 
It's well, like I actually sacrificed myself. Yeah, and and but the idea that Silas is somehow fully aware that this laser will apply such heat to it that it couldn't. First of all, three point five million Kelvin. Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they have any clue what they're dealing with with that. Do you do you know the little glass container that Steppenwolf punches through? It's like. That was containing 3.5 million Kelvin. Was like, yeah. With, with, okay. with thinner impressive. glass and the bat crab, by the way. <laughs> well, I'm just thinking, like, um, couldn't he have activated the laser from outside the glass cage? Wait, sorry, what did you say? I mean, that would make sense from, like, a safety standard <laughs> in this <laughs> building that like, has a lot of scientists operate in you wait, know. wait sorry you said would, uh, uh, shouldn't it prevent it from activating with anybody like in the room is it no no no, no. i'm saying sh it shouldn't it just be possible for uh cyborg's dad to put the cube in there and then activate the laser from outside the cage like oh well, out, the, the logic the was that i'm just was... trying to remember how he activated it the, he's got I think a little he got controller. In, put the thing on the yeah he, the, he goes the to leave pedestal. he sees steppenwolf and then he backs yeah. up like the yeah. idea is yeah, he's yeah. too late i'm i'm mostly okay with that but did he think... use like a smartphone? Like, what did he do from inside to activate he, it? He I has a little remember. controller he picked up. It was very quick. Yeah. Oh, um, like a wireless. I guess so. Also, yeah. Um, okay. Seven Wolf immediately picks up that mother box, so he's able to withstand something that's got that kind of heat on it, but he can't withstand Superman's heat vision. True. Oh well. Um, yeah, he does just kind of grab it, doesn't I would, he? I would. I would. I would now like to introduce. Uh, something of a, of a large criticism. I can't remember who here <laughs> knows about this one. I know Meme knows about it. Um, mm -hmm. I guess well, I'll just do it the way I did it with Meme. But like, so we know that um, Cyborg cares quite a bit about his dad, right? Mm -hmm. you, you could all agree with that. He's He yeah. likes his dad. He's, he's on yep. good terms with him. Bit of a thumbs up, let's say. Seems like it, yeah. Um, one of the problems people like to highlight with this film is in terms of the final climax with the uh, weaponry needed to get past the dome as well as just nuking all of like the parademons. Cyborg could have used his abilities with missiles to do it. It's saving the world, right? So it's not going to be like a big worry that, yeah. oh no, the USA has a few less rockets or whatever. It's like, dude, you know, the world's about to end. He's stealing he from can... Russia as well. Yeah, yeah, he's stealing from anywhere. Um, we know he can do that because his dad gave us a very long explanation of uh, the <laughs> limits that Cyborg <laughs> has. Now, these, uh -huh. these powers Cyborg has are incredible. And there's so much we can extrapolate in terms of the issues it causes throughout the entire movie. But I'm aiming for one right now. I'm I'm hoping anybody who doesn't know where I'm going, the second they realize it, I'm just I'm just gonna wait for them to say it. But uh <laughs> we, we discover the cyborg has the ability to essentially control almost everything. They show us like a submarine, um like a phone network, a pylon, and, and scanning through all these different things that apparently he has full control of like the entire network of Earth and it's all at, at range. He can just do whatever he wants to everything. His dad says we as like a, a people are fully influenced by almost like everything technology, and so if he controls that and they control us, then he controls us. Like, and that says, you know, you, the challenge for you is going to be about choosing what to do as a hero. I find that all very fascinating. I think you can make a really good movie out of it. I don't think they do a very good job in this movie. But, right, he has full access and control to machinery. <laughs> as then can uh, basically reverse things exploding no no like, no 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 they can I, I mean I already even more fun than, even more basic than that if it, are you saying it, that he could have piloted um batman's ship no 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 before? even <laughs> more basic no 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 even more destructive <laughs> to the story. robots the yeah new... correct wait a laser is technology <laughs> is it not i think a laser is technology uh, yeah yeah hmm Hmm. Oh, I'd say a door is technology uh, as well. Oh my god. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> he just yeah, he could have prevented that probably. Uh, but he's not as fast as the flash. He's, he's like still guys, using what, dial up. Guys, so. what if the laser <laughs> Yeah, what if the laser didn't have a network connection and it wasn't connected to the internet? You don't you don't even need one from the looks it's not of the it. internet. I mean, it's just good. all Sorry. electrical grids. He can control the, yeah, the dad was able to control yeah. it wirelessly, right? Otherwise he wouldn't have been able to do it from inside it, right? I think. I would have to see that scene again to. Just oh, he remember has exactly basically he just started. he's connected to basically everything. Um, obviously not like grass, but any, anything yeah. electrical for sure. I don't even think because like, with with how many security cameras he was looking at at the beginning, it's like it doesn't seem like it needs to be on Wi-Fi. Like not every <laughs> camera is connected to Wi-Fi. Maybe more now. Plus, he re rewinds the tape recorder. Before. 
So, um, not only could he have switched it off to save his dad, which he absolutely would have done, but he also could have switched it back on when Steppenwolf stands in front of it. <laughs> he would have killed True. him. <laughs> and Steppenwolf is stepping is, is in front of this thing crotch first, by the way, so he could have given him the most severe case of crotch rot this sign of Alpha Centauri. Just going to point that out. And as someone or at least given him testicular cancer. He did fix the yes. tape recorder without even touching it. Like, he's... He's, as, as Ray Fisher said, he's essentially Dr. Manhattan. So um, that only makes it worse. Makes it a lot worse. Yeah, I like, because it's one of the biggest payoffs in the movie. He's a living mother box, basically. I like how he felt bad for that woman at the beginning and made it seem like she won the ATM lottery. But it's like... <laughs> I don't know. The IRS is probably gonna fuck her over. So like, true. <laughs> as so soon as the true. next tax yeah. season happens, like she's yep. she's not gonna get away with that. Like, <laughs> nope. She's going to jail. So <laughs> you did, just he put her there. did he materialize money, or did that money come from somewhere else? He he. It's I, digital I guess money. He like it's... took a penny from everyone else's well, bank account. Or I, was, something. I was about I, I was about to say even I... if he moved, so if he created money, it's going to be trackable, and if he moved money, it's going to be trackable. Oh yeah, like it's always the IRS. Like, the, are, yeah. There's like, a record going of it in it. her account. Otherwise, it's not in her account. <laughs> and the fact is, like she won a lottery, and they're gonna like there's no proof of her entering it. So they're gonna be like, where'd this money come from? And if she doesn't report it, she could get in serious trouble. Yeah, and there's no such thing as a ATM lottery <laughs> from your bank. She's yeah, gonna tell one too. friend the next day, like, I just I went to judge deposit my money and and I won through the bank so machine. No and they're friend. gonna be like, uh, police. <laughs> Hello. Uh, yeah, Cyborg could mine screwed. so much Bitcoin and just wire that to it. <laughs> um, so what I agree. I agree the whole thing about um, uh, the laser thing. Uh, I I reckon people's attempted defense would be, and I'm not saying it's good, but this is what their defense would be, is that, man, he was just, he's still learning his powers, okay? And he wasn't, he, he, was, he, was, he, was, he wasn't even on, on, on the ball that he could have, he was able to do it, and he was too slow to realize. I would, I would understand that. you, but I would actually argue that in the reverse. I would say he's so passionate, he would, like, possibly... Do something harsh to the laser, like destroy Possibly, it. like re reach out instinctively to stop the laser. Yeah, like I, I would argue his emotional. St it's like uh, what's his name, Star Lord in Infinity War. Like you'd be like, "Fuck that laser." Okay. <laughs> so he, you oh. know how like like when he does things in his hacker mind, there's like this weird visualization, or maybe it was just like a metaphor when it was like you you, the, you control the world's financial the systems and you get the golden bear mm -hmm. and the oh. weird fight so like <laughs> in that, i think when when his dad was getting lasered i think he was hacking into it and then like inside his head you see this like big this big panel that he that was blocking him and it says prove you're not a robot and there was like one of those check boxes but he couldn't get past it and i think that's probably what happened it was, like, that that it was, yeah. picture has a like, stop it sign was, in it. just click on all the pictures with bicycles but he was like oh, i don't know what, what's happening i'm a robot which of these images have traffic lights in them and it's like some of them kind of half have them what am i supposed to do <laughs> oh, yeah. oh god so i just tried, point but, out but it, oh, he got stuck yeah, I, will, I just want to point out, right, that um, Fairly Odd Parents has a more mature and grounded approach to ta uh, to just poofing money into existence than Zack Snyder's Justice League because Timmy Turner can't. There's a rule in the because of course you have rules as to what wishes you can can and cannot make in that show, and one of them is that you can't just wish for more money because that money has to come from somewhere, meaning that if you wished for money, you would be stealing from someone, and stealing is against the rules. So, Cyborg giving woman to... So the consequences of, of proofing money into existence is better handled in fucking fairly odd parents than <laughs> Wait, it is in well, Zack he, Snyder's Justice League. But when he wishes for a giant chocolate milkshake, does that chocolate milkshake have to come from other chocolate milkshakes, or are you stealing? <laughs> no, no, no. You can just magic that. I don't. <laughs> Look, I think it's like you can't <laughs> add on. money into the circulation on, while Cap, chocolate milkshake is okay. less complicated. Jesus. Also, I want to point out that um, in the center cut, Cyborg says, "I speak to intelligence." This one saying she can't fly because of a software issue, referring to the uh, the ship, yeah. big ship that Batman is working on, but I can fix it with a little time. That doesn't require an internet connection. It's in the Whedon cut where um, 
he requires an internet connection to be able to like access electronics. Yeah, in um, you actually see him starting up to fix it in Snyder's cut. He's just standing somewhere, and he just starts like doing thing. Like he's like blah, 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 and screens come up, and it's just like yeah, he can just do whatever he wants whenever he wants. He's uh, he's really overpowered, and so we talked about how Flash can essentially destroy the stakes. Someone else can too. But Mahler, Mahler, listen. Yeah. Flash, Flash fell on Wonder Woman's boobs in this one <laughs> shot. That means that that movie is worse than this. Well, Southwell, the Russian family, you know. The, Did that the, happen? That, true. Well, he. Yes. It's, it's not. It's, it's fucking like PG thirteen <laughs> or whatever. It's, you don't see anything. It's the same joke as in Age of Ultron, where someone falls on on like their Black head Widow. on their boobs area, and then they're like, "Oh my god, that's so awkward." And then they go, "Yep, yeah, that is so awkward," and then they move on. It's it's a really fine. shit joke. I don't know why. <laughs> it's just one of those things. You're just like, did, was it a studio? Was it Joss being like, oh no, nah, people will love it. But you can <laughs> yeah, notice yeah. why a, a casual audience would notice one issue far more easily than the other issue. Oh, um, well, I mean, Transformers was super successful, right? It, the audiences mm -hmm. have all kinds of thoughts and feelings I'll never understand. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You're an interesting but in Bumblebee, which I would consider the best of the live action ones because it has some really solid character work in it, um, that made the least money. So what do we know about Kino, you know? Mm. But when oh. it comes to characters like Cyborg, everyone this the consensus seems to be, oh my gosh, they did, you know, they did right by him in this movie. He's incredible. But when you But I feel like so many of the characters in this movie are the same in that they're like, oh, I'm just so like, I didn't ask to have this responsibility. I didn't ask to be born. Like Cyborg is given another chance at life and he's doing the mopey Frankenstein thing, I've, which to be yeah. fair is the same as the Justice League, uh, the Justice League that is. But I don't find him relatable as a character at all. Well, like, I, I don't understand. The problem is we needed a movie for him. We didn't not. This is so yeah. rushed. Yeah. They just made Justice League too quick. And so mm -hmm. I think most people, when they see this cut, they're like, no, I actually like, <laughs> we actually get a bit of a backstory to this character is what my impression is. That's what I've heard anyway. I mean, it's it's really but, rushed. Yeah, but he's they're not like, getting his own movie. <laughs> they, they establish really quickly through flashbacks as well, which is a little painful to me sometimes, like in terms of just, oh man, we just got to get this done, don't we? Because we got to catch up. Um, it's just like, yeah, he was a star athlete. Uh, his dad wasn't always there for him because he was busy with his work and then they get into an accident and then he kind of hates his dad because he feels as though if he were there the accident may not have happened and also that he worked really hard to bring him back to life but he's now uh, it's hard to swallow the monster part because you're thinking in your head like death or awesome cyborg body you're like um <laughs> yeah, what would you take <laughs> and yeah and so you i guess you needed more we needed that relationship's timeline and i honestly think if we had a cyborg movie prior to this it may have made it work excluding all of the fucking logical bullshit but like the, those two's relationship that could have been a whole movie um and they tried yeah it. or like i don't know if the you could you could make like a fucking special and throw it on hbo max if you're going this route anyway doesn't and, even have to be successful yeah and i was gonna yeah. you, you could go as far as like initially it's not as awesome as he is in this movie like maybe at first he actually like it's kind of a painful and limited experience and he almost wants to die and his dad won't let him you know yeah you, they could have worked with it much better to make it too dark though more <laughs> traumatic for him like what if he couldn't have any like he can't feel anything when he touches something and uh and it's like his uh dead because he's lost so much physical sensation and it's really traumatic for him to adjust to that could have worked um but we're not given that we're like we're just kind of showing you know because being alive you know with all his powers i admit it's like that's that's pretty cool well he, he, can, yeah. did he, is he able to taste still he's can he eat a burger i know he can in teen <laughs> titans can he make oh, himself a penis oh. <laughs> of course he can he has to be able to a Dad. long dong of the cyborg <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, what, what, again. wouldn't wouldn't Cyborg be able to uh, like activate um, like vibrators remotely? How many <laughs> settings does Cyborg have? <laughs> Dude, he can't, he can't control when he's scared. What is what, like he can't control if he's horny? He just runs around with oh, a yeah. Cyborg erupts. <laughs> he, he launched a fucking <laughs> rocket at Superman, and he didn't. He couldn't even control that. Just Where did he get the replacement <laughs> rocket? Like, he has oh. to replace that at some point, right? I can, I can explain that. <laughs> they needed to piss Superman off. 
There you go. Yeah, that was stupid. That was really It's my stupid. auto defense system. <laughs> that never okay. comes up better just by moon cut. <clears throat> Yeah, Joss actually. Uh, see, so this is the thing. That's that's an example, right? When he, when you saw Joss yeah. on its own, it was like, oh man, that was shit. His auto defense system, which had come up prior in the film, it shot at Superman. We're sitting there like, nah, it's not very satisfying, but fine, I guess. And then <laughs> Snyder's reveals the truth, which is that's what Joss had to work with. So Joss tried to add mm. a scene to at least set it up and then pay it off. Snyder was just like, nah, fuck it. It's the auto defense. <laughs> <laughs> like, but Superman's not a threat. It's like he was scatting us. That's good enough. I he guess. was like angry. I could see his well, eyes. He was chill. He was mad. looking at his, his statue and shit. It was only he was only angry once they'd fired the rocket. He was really good. Oh, by know. the way, this is actually leading into another criticism. <laughs> so to be honest with you, the more you interpret him as angry, the more it adds to another criticism. I think most people here <laughs> already have, which is what the fuck, Superman. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is like his natural state. He forgot yes. who he is. So, like, it, it, if if he wasn't influenced by like a loving family or something, like he was, he would yeah. just be an asshole. <laughs> like, yeah, it's not like Jason this, Bourne where he's confused and just trying not to get killed. Yeah. This is this is his default setting. <laughs> is yeah. destroy everything. And he's one dead lowest away from being a force. And let we cannot put enough emphasis on this. Worse than Hitler. Bit. Yeah, he kills. He, he tries funny. to kill all life on Earth as dark side guys. Once Lois dies, um, I gotta, I gotta it's head like, out pretty soon. There's uh, groceries that got delivered to my door. I'm gonna give them, uh, get them put away, and uh, start watching some movies that I gotta oh. go through. But thanks for having me on. Um, well, is I there guess, anything uh, else you wanted to say quickly before we go about the movie? Agenda? Yeah, yeah. Some final comments of note, I go guess. Uh, I love. The uh, the the editing for the musical score, where every single time Wonder Woman showed up on screen, it, like it was such a punchline. It was so funny, and it was like yeah. as the movie kept going, it be became more and more frequent. It was just like even the point where like Steppenwolf's head gets cut off. It's like it's just it didn't stop. It was so funny. And then I, I love, love I love the uh, that Joker got marketed to shit. <laughs> and not only does he not say we live in a society in the film, but he shows up in a dream. And that, that was his whole thing in the movie. And it's just like, oh, he just showed up for a scene that didn't happen, I guess. Good old nightmare. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then they gave Flash a CG mustache at the end, which was weird because I thought, I don't know. <laughs> anyway. It's like poetry. Yeah. It rhymes. Yeah. Exactly. All yeah. right. Thanks for having me on. That was fun. I'll catch, catch you later, you later. dude. Yeah, catch around, Bye, everybody. See you, See you later. Uh, watch my Kimba Bye. review if yes. you're listening. Bye -bye. Do it. Oh, yeah. Bye bye. Oh yeah. Everyone do that. Everyone. Definitely. Very yeah. good. Do it bye twice. Bye. See ya. And unfortunately, I'm gonna have to head off in about ten minutes too. But I can still hang around for a little bit. You able to return um, after that? Dunzo. Maybe. I, I don't know. It depends on how the day goes because unfortunately some unexpected work did just pop up yesterday that mm -hmm. I'm going to have to jump onto. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Um, um, to add on to what you were saying, Meme, about how he becomes Hitler basically because uh, Lois dies, it reminds me of um, it reminds me of this, uh, this other like, like um, it's not Brightburn that I'm thinking of. Fuck, I was, I was just... <laughs> Um, Shit. Homelander? Um, not Homelander. It was, um, fuck, I lost my train of thought. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. It Alfred. <laughs> sure, it's Alfred. Yeah. It's Alfred. Reminds yeah. me of Alfred. Yeah. It's totally a thing that Alfred would do. This movie's really fucking bad. Yes. Um, <laughs> no, you. I mean, well, I was going to say, because we kind of touched on it there, uh, just the, the Superman thing. So. It's, uh, it's 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 very worrying that um he does all of that at a base level and it's only once he's given time that he's like oh yeah I guess I do kind of care that human <laughs> beings don't oh, get killed. Grey Worm, Grey Worm is what I was thinking of from Game of Thrones. Turns into an asshole just because they killed uh, Masande. Yeah. Oh yeah, true. Um, oh yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, so for anybody who's confused, what we're presented is that when Lois is dead or gets killed or whatever, uh Superman decides, you know what, Darkseid's got a point. Yeah, really bad. <laughs> you... And also, Lois Wait, dies in the back cave. Movie? Sorry, that happened in this movie. Yeah, Lois the, um... dies in Dark the future. Flash, up, yeah, puts his hand on Superman's shoulder. Superman is oh, now Darkseid's right. minion. 
Yeah, right. So, so there's oh it could be that Dark Side does a some kind of mind control or whatever, but the problem with that is that the movie doesn't share any context in that regard. It just makes it seem as though if Lois dies, Superman gets so upset that he becomes evil. That he becomes Hitler. Yeah. Now, Super Hitler. This only happened in, what, the Injustice series of comic books in the video game where Superman goes evil. Um, am I correct on that one? Uh, yeah, though in that one because... he also had Metropolis nuked, and even then I would argue he becomes cartoonishly evil because um, he, like, but he doesn't just become authoritarian. He's, like, he kills he kills heroes. He starts killing he heroes really casually, and there's a point where Billy Batson finally stands up to him and he ice breaths his mouth shut so that he can't say Shazam. Um, and then he melts his brain with his heat vision, meaning that he just kills a child. So it's just like, even in that, I consider him way too evil, considering yeah, what I, I... And I, I've never liked that notion that, you know, if it was just I, I, Superman going evil, because it's so, so contrary to his character. But with, you know, Injustice, that was like a what-if scenario. It wasn't the main timeline or anything. It's like, oh, they're just having fun with that one over there. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, so... The fact that they're introducing this idea into main kind of continuity really annoys me because it's so contrary to his character. And it, and it makes him like, ah, oh. so all your goodness was just, you know, intrinsic on your relationship with this woman. You don't actually have any true standards independently of that. It's just yeah, and and we see when he wakes up that his default state is murder everything with laser beams. <laughs> As if a small wouldn't. little thing about the scene where he you know comes back, he's fighting them all right, and Wonder Woman goes to do her bracer super boom thing, whatever you want to call <laughs> that, her power move, her boss move. Yep. And he grabs ding, ding. her hands before she can do it, as if he knows that's what she's about to do. And that just reads to me like someone who knows what her power <laughs> is and what she's about to do with it, because she's just putting her arms together. And he, like, grabs them <laughs> to stop them, and it's like, oh, he prevented the boom from happening, but how does he know the boom's going to happen if he doesn't remember uh, who they are? That's a good point, That's actually. True. Yeah. Well, people would say he's working off base instinctual memory um, because he reacts aggressively towards Batman when he sees him and stuff. I like how he he walks to him like the Terminator, like he just does not have a mind outside of murder. You just have that blank expression, because at least in the Joss cut, he's just like, oh, I know you. And there's actual, like, thoughts behind those eyes, while in this one, he's just got that blank stare of murder time. Yeah, like, in Snyder's, he wants to murder, but he wants to super murder Batman. In Joss's cut, he's like... Uh, attacked and is confused and then is like, you, you're the one that wanted me dead and now you're dragging me out of the grave. I fucking hate you. Like, that seems to be, like, an attempt at trying to mend this because, I'm sorry, how do you fix that scene? Any ideas? Very, very I, hard. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Literally, like, it would have to be some sort of pet cemetery type curse. It would have yeah. to be something that you would have to, um... Like, I don't know, there's some the weird... Box. That's a change from the Whedon yeah, version as like, well. They like... drop the whole idea that, like, oh, we shouldn't bring him back because he might yep. come back different. Yeah. Well, so there's like, two points um... for Whedon. Uh, one being that they push back on it, which oh. they should, and the second point being a lot of references to how his brain is all fucky. Uh, as yeah. much as people say Pet Cemetery is like a cringe line, it's like, guys, it's good, though, for giving context to what the, the, the film's trying to tell us about the current state of Superman. Like... There, there are comp there, there's horrible things that may have happened as a result of bringing him back through the mother box and Lois is able to calm his mind. Maybe in a future movie you could add more to it. Like he's, the portions of himself aren't the way they used to be. I don't know. I feel like this it's movie just, is it, the time to do that and they just the, didn't. I, I would just say like the issue of Lois being the one that kind of resets Superman and makes him alright. It's bad in both cuts. It's worse in Snyder Cut. Do we want to explain why? Um, oh yeah, because he's just randomly there as opposed to actually being called in. Well, I was gonna, I was gonna say, I'm not sure which wouldn't. What, what, how are you tackling that? Go ahead. Like, which, which, what, what, what well, way? So again, I would say like uh, a way to fix the scene is there's some sort of pet cemetery monkey's paw type drawback to uh, using the mother box to awake Superman, and there's some secondary step that they have to do after they reanimate his body to get him back to normal. Okay, they have to like somehow detain him. They've got. I don't know, they've got a kryptonite jail cell that they can use to fucking uh, 
uh, detain him while they try to set him straight. Um, but in both versions of the movie, he's uh, he like goes back to normal because he sees Lois Lane. And so um, you have in one cut where Batman is, um, I guess, being somewhat cautious, at least has a semblance of a plan, even though he doesn't use kryptonite, which should have been their plan A to begin with. But that's beside the point. Um, and he's like, we'll have Lois uh, on her way here, you know, just in case something bad happens. Whereas in Snyder Cut, really, they had no plan at all. And um, if it weren't for Lois showing up at that exact time, they all would have been toast. And on that point, I have seen a tweet, I think one of you guys might have sent me it, where they said, it's like <laughs> super awesome that Martian Manhunter was the one that got Lois to turn up in that place. When, if you watch the movie, it's the reverse. Martian Manhunter is telling her to move on and go back to work, meaning stop fucking <laughs> going to that grave site every day, well, the statue every day, and stop being journalism girl again. And so, she's visiting that place one last time, and it's the day that <laughs> Superman is resurrected. <laughs> pain. Absolute pain. And, and she's walking away as it happens, like she almost misses him as well. Yep. Can we also just mention that that Martha Manhunter scene <laughs> is way worse Martha than the Man scene Hunter. between between Martha, actual Martha, and Lois in Justice League? Can we just say that? Oh that, well, like, yeah. So it's another yeah, point for Joss, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Yeah, Martha Manhunter makes it so. Oh, there's no actual character interaction between Martha Kent, Superman's mother, Superman's grieving mother, and Lois Lane. No, it's Lois Lane with a guy. Pretending to be Superman's mother. <laughs> a yeah, guy that, it kind by of... the way, well, like we've only known him as uh, as Swanwick, um, and then like we've never actually gotten much development with that character or Martian Manhunter. But there's plenty that we at least know about Martha in comparison to to him. I like to think that Martha I... was Martian Manhunter the whole time. Rage Superman. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, Fringy had been saying this all along that he's going to be Martian Manhunter and it's going to cause all sorts of problems. Like, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? I kind of yeah. thought they would never do that because <laughs> it would cause so many problems, but they did. They did it. Oh, yeah. Snyder. That, uh, Martian Manhunter appearing annoys the hell out of me because of all those reasons. Uh, it's just... Uh... Yeah. And again, in jail, in the Justice League animated show, the first time we see um, Martian Manhunter, apparently he'd been standing guard on Mars this entire time, so that's the explanation. And when those invaders he was standing guard against got loose and went to Earth to terraform Earth, his immediate instinct was, fuck, I gotta go to war Earth to warn them. And the only reason he took so long is because he immediately got captured when he got down there. So, um, what, what, what is uh, this Martian Manhunter's response to a terraforming alien force? Oh, yeah, yeah let me... Let, let me just remind you all of what this guy can do. Super Martian yeah, strength, speed, stamina, metabolism. Hang on, hang on. Metabolism and durability. Super Martian vision, which has Martian vision, heat vision, electromagnetic spectrum vision, microscopic oh. vision, x-ray vision, night vision. I'm only halfway through. Genius <laughs> level intellect, shape-shifting, invisibility, intangibility, regeneration, extended lo longevity, flight, Martian nine senses, telekinesis, telepathy, pain inducement, and astral projection. Guys, do any of those powers sound like they would have been incredibly useful in any of the potentially world-ending events between Man of Steel and BBS or Suicide Squad? When you said pain inducement, do you mean he, like, makes you feel pain with his mind or something? Pain Presumably because he's telepathic, so he could, like, make you feel pain. Like, could he give Zod uh, a major migraine and he's just like, oh, that hurts a lot, and you're like, yeah, stop being evil. Probably, yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the the way they balance Martian Manhunter usually is that his weakness is way more common because he's weak to fire. Either it's it's either psychological or physical, depending on the interaction. I prefer it to be physical because that way you have this you you know he makes him a bit more of a glass cannon because fire, man, that is like so fucking common. You can make yeah. that with a box of matches, you know. Yeah. So the fact that Martian Manhunter has been around and has decided to not help out at all up to this point. Is like they've already character assassinated Martian Manhunter, and he's barely had any scenes. <laughs> he's had two scenes. They've already implicitly character assassinated Martian Manhunter from the very beginning of Man of Steel. Some people have called me the Martian Manhunter. Well, not literally from the very who... beginning of Man of Steel. I mean, like from the beginning of the DCEU, with starting with Man of Steel. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was just they were trying to shoehorn in a cameo without even thinking of the consequences. Um, it's done. Yeah, and apparently this wasn't. By the way, guys, this was not Snyder's vision. He saw a fan theory on Vero apparently, and was just like, "Hmm, I like that theory. I'm gonna, I'm gonna slot it into my film and just see, you know, because I, I, I want to respect the fans' wishes." <laughs> The original 2017 recordings and cuts would not have had uh, uh, Swanwick and then Martian Manhunter, Martha. That wouldn't have happened. That was a new recording. And it's added in because fuck it. It would be really cool. Because he's flying by the seat of his pants. And so all this talk of like, oh, his true initial artistic vision that he had the whole time is complete horseshit. He's Which like, means... Go ahead. No, it's just that I, I'm so sick of this particular, <laughs> you know, ethos around the movie that, oh, this is what he always wanted to do and just wasn't able. Like, guys, he's make, he's making so many changes up at the last minute because so, he wants it to be as different from the other one as he can. And all these different factors going into it. It's not his pure, undiluted original vision. It's nonsense. And I've got I've got another point to drive home. So. Mahler, you pointed out that what uh, Martha Manhunter was telling Lois to do was to move on, and that's that motivates Lois to visit the memorial one last time, right? Which means that the original cut was there's no scene with Martha Manhunter, meaning that Lois is just on her regular morning routine. We don't know when she's going to stop doing it, um, as set up earlier in the film. Which means that the reshoot actually made the movie worse. Wait, how they reshot sorry, a scene to follow. You're saying it's worse because having Martian Manhunter. So, there... so but... the idea was uh, um, originally you have they set up Lois. This is her morning routine. She visits yeah. the, the memorial every morning, right? Then they shoot the Martian Manhunter scene. That's like one of the the new uh, scenes, right? The newly shot scenes. Cool. And what that does is this is it basically gives that um, that scene where Lois shows up uh, and Superman comes back. That is, uh, that's basically saying, yeah, this would have been the last chance that they would have had of Lois uh, showing up here. You know, it, it, it makes it incredibly more lucky that th oh, that well, happened on so this morning. The Martha scene existed originally, where Martha told her that, so she would have been oh. turning up for the last time regardless. What's added on is the exiting of the apartment and turning into Swanwick and then turning into Martian Manhunter. Oh, sorry, Wait, that's reverse. what they added? Yeah. The point. So oh. the point is okay. that Martha was Martha. And then when he was fucking around with everything, he was like, what if Martha was Martian Manhunter just so I can have a scene with Martian Manhunter in it? <laughs> because there is okay. no fucking reason Martian Manhunter would have done what he did. If anything, he nearly fucked everything up. Like, Sorry, so I was under the impression that like the Martha scene in there was also a reshoot. Sorry. No, I... So yeah, the scene where she talks to Lois is honestly... I, I think when we were watching it, uh, we acknowledged that we had talked over it and that it probably was a good scene. And to be honest with you, it's a solid scene. Like, yeah. but then they ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do. Hey guys, I'm unfortunately gonna have to bow out. Uh, you a son pleasure. of a bitch! How could you do that? How could you do that it, to us? Hey, I, I wish I didn't have to. It was been a pleasure as usual. <laughs> have fun tearing this garbage. <laughs> of course, there's a lot. Man. There's a lot to go into. Uh, well, thank you so much for uh, hanging out. Hey, yeah, we'll catch you around. I'm pleasure. glad you enjoyed the movies. I did enjoy it. <laughs> I, 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 that's the thing. Um, some of the the more noticeable things I was able to get a bit a decent amount of. Oh yeah, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, oh wow, there is so much broken in it, uh, especially when you dive into the details. So have fun, guys. I will see you around. Yes. See you. Bye. Bye. See you. Toodaloo. Now your title now... is fake news. Everyone that's in the call is part of the EFAP League. Yes, and yes. Again, oh, right, yeah. <laughs> it's in the description, so I figured it was good uh, enough. The Justice Rags, League. Rags couldn't make it today. He's on a vacation, and uh, Bringy doesn't have that, that excuse. He was supposed to be a two fucking hours ago. <laughs> 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 but it's all right. We'll see, survive without him. Though I will say, sad news for the... I, I, I can't remember if I told you guys or not. I told Metal and, and chat I was about to find out, but this is going to be a short man. Um, I only have another two hours before we have to end the stream. Um, so it's probably going to be Good spent God. doing as much talk as we can about the uh, well, the cut, the both cuts. Um, but it's okay, we still got two hours. <laughs> we can still <laughs> it's, it's a good thing that, that the... Uh, clock. 
If there's a ticking clock, that means it's good writing. Yeah, now everything's it's, more tense. It's, it's a good thing like, that Kara made capital O <laughs> Flash instead of Fringy, because that would have been incredibly ironic otherwise. Yeah. The Flash is known for being late for that. That's only 1 a.m. for me. I could do some streaming myself. <gasps> Oh my god. Yeah, oh my am. goodness. You weirdo. Just shut up. Yeah. So um, I feel like uh, we've already blown enough holes in the um, Snyder Cut is better narrative. As well, is. I was going to say, like... yeah, I feel like it, it wasn't necessarily structured to do it that way, but I feel like we've made a pretty strong case so far. Chat, how are you feeling uh, about the whole Snyder versus Justice uh, out of curiosity? Post your oh, honesty. I don't care if you're mean to us. It's okay. I'm just curious. It's a kind of conversation. You know, just, we're all chill. Just having a chat. Um, both terrible. I hope we all agree on that. Maybe they don't. At that point, we just need to talk more about how everything sucks. <laughs> like <in podcasts. laughs> One of them is Mola has betrayed us. Take Mola's, over the EFET metal. <laughs> Mola stopping the stream as soon as the clocks go back. It's got nothing to do with the clocks going back. There's not some kind of British magic that has to take place. And British magic. <laughs> I don't think my clocks both. go back to the night. Talk about Darkseid not going through the portal. Oh, I think we did that right. Oh yeah, the end. Um, not using Omega Beams, not sending his power yeah. even through, not... You know, he just kind of stares, and the Justice League just kind of stares. And it's just kind of yeah, like, hey, Superman could have, like, zipped in there and, like, ripped his head off, potentially. I don't know how strong Darkseid is. It's very hard to tell. Uh, he can kick Superman's ass, first... usually. Yeah, this, this usually, still... you mean outside of this movie? There's still... Uh, you know, I, the scales are kind of fucked right now. <clears throat> There's still plenty of... Uh, oh, yeah. Snyder's Fuck is definitely worse. better, so... Apparently we've not done our job, but that is okay. Uh, mm. I don't expect us to make a, a full convincing argument. It's, hard, it's sometimes hard to remember all of the arguments for that, but... Um, true, true. Oh, and what's funny is that I'm running the movies in the background, and uh, Justice League is here. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. <laughs> Justice League ends with Superman walking to the camera with his red and blue suit under his clothes, as it should be. <laughs> instead of a fucking lame black suit that... They don't even give a reason for him to use the black suit in he this movie. Does. It's just there for comics fan service. Yeah, yep. I thought maybe they'd try to make it more meaningful, but no. It's just a metaphor, bro. <laughs> don't you get it? Fuck the Snyder Cut. A complete breakdown of my ass. This is part one. Uh, maybe it is. Maybe it is, Austin. Maybe Ooh. we're already planning to do another uh, Snyder Cut <laughs> stream, all right? <laughs> this is the initial... I've seen um I've seen Brown Table High Top and Cosmonauts videos and they're all horrible. <laughs> like they're all horrible. <laughs> yeah, they... I started I started Brown Tables and I, I cringed into oblivion. It's it was I, I got better his though, but Look, we are with the Snyder Cut, we are gonna milk the sucker dry. There's yeah. gonna be so this is Stop. a gold mine. We have stumbled upon a gold mine of content because Listening... this movie is it's Listen fucking to... horrible, dude. It's like chunky. that's something that's something that this this fucking horrible has this devoted of a fan base that has this many people saying, "Oh, it's actually really great." Is mind-boggling to me. Depressing. That yeah. anyone even remotely compared it favorably to Lord of the Rings causes me <laughs> physical pain. Like, you know what? Let's go. Hey. Let's go over it. Let's let's do let's do rankings. Okay. So Wait, whoa, whoa, what, what? That's like a thing for the end. <laughs> oh, I mean. I mean well, we could also rank it just based on the fact that we've actually seen it, but sure. It's just, I mean, it's just me. We could, we could do it. In a, in a just ranking. do it like right in the middle. I don't know. <laughs> what is? What, I'm wanna... sure there's more to talk about. Mahler, give us a new. Uh, a oh, new I'm the topic aspect. controller. That sounds, sounds yeah. some kind of is. You got no kind of ism. Stuff. I've only seen it the once. Um, there's loads of fucking luck throughout the entire plot, and this is applicable to both films, because I'm not necessarily gunning to just spend the stream talking about how Jossus is better or any shit like that. It's like, no, they both suck. Um, the timing on, like, loads of different things with loads of different people is really annoying, so... One easy example is, um, Aquaman is told by... This change is dependent on the cut, but it's still a problem. So, Willem Dafoe is like, yo... Aquaman, there's these people stealing our people, and the mother box might be in danger. And Aquaman's like, I don't care, because I don't care about anything, because I'm, oh, I'm so cool. And he drinks his bottle, and you're like, all right, yeah. <laughs> and then, <laughs> later on, he's like, you know, I might mosey on over to the mother box, I guess. He's like, oh my god, my mirror's about to die. I'm literally a split second, like, <laughs> it was any later, and she would have been dead. It's just like, wow. <laughs> um, Boo, Aquaman. Well, the funny part as well is that the, the Snyder Cut totally shits all over Aquaman. Like, I don't understand at all how 
like anybody would have liked this if they had made the film Aquaman because oof like the idea that they they argue that King Orm the guy who is obsessed with like becoming the king full king and, and leading the world to the point of possibly taking over earth doesn't care that the item in his kingdom that can destroy earth has been taken like um yeah, no, I don't agree. Big, um, it's like, oh, he's dealing with rebels. It's like, what are you dealing with rebels? Like, what, what, <laughs> what, what are you talking about? And um, that just ties into how they needed to get man, Amazonians, and Atlanteans out of the fucking story. They, we can't be having them. So and this, this is what I essentially concluded when thinking about it. You got the Atlanteans don't do it because they're dealing with petty shit. The Amazonians <laughs> don't do it because they're too stupid to leave the island. They don't know how. Instead, they shoot arrows at man and hope that he notices. And then man Burns. has no man, has, man has no clue it's what's going on. And so, when you guys think about the theme of stronger united, we have the race of man is completely <laughs> ignorant to the fight. The race of Amazonians are too stupid to like use a boat. And then the Atlanteans are too petty <laughs> to even consider this war. It's like, what a great representation. It's like, well, no, you don't understand. It's the, it's kind of good, right? Because like the, the, this, those civilizations should be co-oping with each other. It's like, well, and it, it, wouldn't it be better if they actually were? It's like, no, 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 because it's the representatives that do. You know, we got the Amazonian, the Atlantean, and Batman's like the world of man. You know, is strong united. <laughs> 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 I feel like it shits on itself hardcore with that. And, you know, again, applies to both cuts. I kind of hate it. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I thought of something that, you know, this might come as a shock to some people, but a, a line of comedy in the Joss Whedon version actually improves the film slightly. I know, call me crazy. But there's the scene where Batman first meets Aquaman. In this version, uh, forgive me if I get the line not exactly correct, but Aquaman says something like, uh, the strongest go alone. And then it just is left at that. But in the Whedon version, he goes, the strongest go alone. We're strongest alone, right? And he goes, I'm pretty sure that's that's the opposite of how it goes. That's that's not the saying at all. Mm -hmm. and it's like, aha, funny line. But you can tell Just Whedon heard that line and goes, wait, that's the opposite of, that's not how that works. Who well, would so ever say that? If you remember in our, if, in our coverage, Aquaman says that, and then Rags is like, what? No, it's the other way around. And like, as he says that, Ben Affleck goes, it's yeah. the opposite of what? And it's just like, hey, that's nice. <laughs> it's a bit yeah. of, it's, a, it's like the closest thing you get to like, oh, that's the, that was an interaction, I guess. Like, Aquaman's kind of an idiot and an asshole, because what, who the fuck says that? <laughs> but, yeah. you know, the response pretty good. And then you find out in the original cut that that wasn't there. He just, it, it's so awkward. He says, ever heard the saying, strong men are stronger alone? Then he goes, Batman, uh, Superman died while fighting next to me. And he goes, my point exactly. Like, what? <laughs> okay, why did, <laughs> it's like Batman wasn't even listening to him. And then, the... <laughs> and then, and, and then there's like Cyborg bailing out of the Bat Crab and in the Joss cut, Flash goes, hey, did he just bail? And and in the fucking Snyder cut, he's just, that's just what he does. Like, there's no <laughs> awareness of the fact this is a very strange thing to do just after Matt. While everyone's still hanging on for dear life on this fucking war machine. <laughs> um, I could have sworn, yeah, like it came across as weird, even in the Joss version. <laughs> and Flash saying that, at least you're like, oh, well, at least the characters feel the same way we do. Like... That was odd. And it's like, oh, he went to get the box. Okay. But in the Snyder Cut, it's just like, he went to get the box. And you're like, all right, but you could have <laughs> left a note. Uh, I uh, in this a song, you're a Snyder man. Butcher these characters tonight. Oh my god, Superman it's, it's becomes the Hitler. And Lois Lane ain't all right. Huh. All those names. Ignore me. You gotta, you gotta do something to keep your brain from melting, right? It's yeah. so weird to have to compare these two as well, because they're just so awful. I was gonna say, like, as far as I'm concerned, Joss, like, blows Snyder's out of the water, but at the same time, you zoom out of the scale, and they're both right next to each other. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a whopping three versus a two, or, or something, something like, like that. that yeah. It, it, yeah. I probably can see that it's a two, yeah? There's enough that breaks the will. It could even be a one. I'm not actually sure yet. That's something we'd have to Ooh. probably go mm. over. Um... Reconstructing matter at will at distance. I don't know, man. <laughs> That's, uh, I feel like we're in trouble. We're in lots of trouble for, for what that means. Uh, and of course, the 
time travel stuff. Uh, I think you could try and fix that if you made a sequel to this. You're like you have to yeah, apply some limits yeah. immediately that also don't fuck with the previous movie. I mean, you could just put it into your story, pretty much. Like things <laughs> like sh suddenly changed, like things not the same, and Flash like only one, and that didn't happen. Like what was happening? Well, um, everyone if... has cancer now. It's, oh He's... no! <laughs> well, what if the film opened with whatever you were doing for his character and stuff? But you know, in in and around it, he coughs up a little bit of blood, and you're like, wait, what? And then he gets checked yeah. out. And, you know, damage was done to his system in some way, shape, or form, but it was the first time he probably did a significant one, and that's why it didn't hurt him too much. But maybe he, he's confused as to why that's the case until he does it for a second time in a casual sort of setting with some normal crime, and then stops the criminal from having shot, you know, a civilian or whatever, and then saves them, and then he coughs up a lot more blood, and he's like, oh, shit. And, uh, yeah, can't do that too many times. Yeah, and then you've, you've, you've fixed it. You've... you've... <laughs> Because I just think it's really unsatisfying when um, you have a character that essentially just has an option to save the entire world at no cost to himself, and he chooses to do that, and it's considered one of the greatest payoffs in the history of anything ever. Like, mm. the videos I've seen praising that scene kind of blow my mind a little bit, because I don't get why that's an effective scene beyond the CGI. I'm like, yeah, it looks pretty cool. And it's like, oh, it's so meaningful for his character. It doubles back on what he, his father told him, remember? Where he's like, I just want you, you know, you're one of the best of the best, Barry. And <clears throat> Barry's like, you know, you, you, were, you were right, Dad. One of the best of the best. Like, that's not... Um, no, you're not. That's not anything. That's two sentences, and they're the same one. <laughs> like, what's and that? plus, the fact that this is happening is all his fault, because Cyborg was more than ready yep. for, to receive his blue goo, and he just didn't. <laughs> And so I'm left very confused because it, it, it just chat for reference, right? Remove all of the splendor, all of the effects and everything and just sit flash in a room with a button that says, if you want the world to end, press this. And he goes, I'm not going to press it. I'm not, <laughs> not going to press it. And everyone claps. Like, okay. Well, good, good job. Not pressing that button. And that's what I would yeah. say is the what's happening underneath the scene. Uh, in a script sense, while on top, <clears throat> it's this incredible sequence where the world is reforming as he steps onto each piece. By the way, how does that work? Um, <laughs> I didn't want to question the time stuff too much because I know people are going to be like, this is this is cringy, why are you going into so much detail about these things? It's just magical bullshit. And I was like, I don't know, I just... He rewound it to the exact amount of time he needed. Did he have control over that or was that just luck? And then the steps he's taking seem to be recovering Earth faster than the main recovery of Earth, if you know what I mean. Also, um, when he's uh, talking, doesn't it seem like um, it's like he's moving in slow motion, but he's able to talk essentially at normal speed? I, f I don't understand how any of it works. I don't. This is part of the problem, right? It's not just that... I don't care that one of my heroes, my superheroes, decides not everyone should die. I'm like, yeah, that's... You know, because someone might be like, what do you mean? These happens all the time. It's like, no, 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 what usually happens is the superhero decides my life is worth everyone else. Uh, my life's worth giving up for everyone else. That's usually what the stakes are. This time, yeah. it was everyone is should live, yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I, don't, I thought it was the default so why state. Doesn't why doesn't Flash just go back to the events of BVS and grab the spear off Superman and stab Doomsday at superhuman speed? Um, thing is, as we said earlier, Flash destroys everything already. It's mm -hmm. kind of if ever there's a, you know a gorilla that's supercharged by whatever he's, he's smashing through things. Like Flash could probably gorilla kill girl. him. Yes, yeah, so, like Flash has to throw you know a steel box at him really fast. <laughs> just goes, ah, it's just like his organs are everywhere and Flash is like oof that's uh down he goes and so yeah the Flash the Flash breaks everything in a lot of other ways too not even just with the time travel because he he touches things and interacts with objects while he's going at the at his it's... max speed or close to it and it's fine it doesn't do any damage to him so he could just vapor like he could vaporize people by running through him and he just never does me, that though. like you have Darkseid and Steppenwolf and then this army of parademons from 100,000 worlds that have all been converted. It's like, oh, so all you need to do is have them pouring in because they are desperate to un use unity, right? 
And who can mm -hmm. take them out? Well, you have Batman knocking out maybe all of the technical defenses, and then uh, uh, trying to organize the team in a Captain America type of way. Flash, his main job is to keep stopping all of the parademons, because they're super duper fast. Like, um, I... Oh, that's interesting. Um, if Flash is too, too soon in Bruce's flashback, that would mean he can't control it. Or it can't control it definitively, right? It would be wonky? Well, it's implied, but then he does it really fucking precisely in this film, which gives me pause for migraine. He just got worse. <laughs> he, he just got worse at traveling through time as time went by. Um, but yeah, mm. think of the action scenes you can have with like ten parademons per second coming through some kind of portal where the Flash has to beat them all in different ways while super fast. Just you can keep when you're bouncing around the different characters doing different things you have him dealing with that and then you also have him realizing that there are other things happening he has to take care of in different areas like to overwhelm and challenge flash you have to basically like create really difficult stakes for him to deal with but at the same time you yeah. need other things going on because the team have got to matter because the problem with both films is flash can just dominate he probably should have but at least in joss's cut he's shown to be doing that He's shown to be saving people, shown to be attacking things. In Snyder's, he goes in a circle for ages, and everyone thinks that's better. In, in, in Snyder's, Ugh. he uh, runs up a staircase and runs down and runs back up to motivate people, as opposed to just Absurd, escorting man. them out. Fucking just just them out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, they don't even bring up the calorie thing again. Like, you would imagine that, oh, his, his speed becomes more limited the less he could, you know, the less food he has on hand at any given time. So that's how you slow him down to a reasonable degree because, you know, he needs to be in, like, peak physical state because, um, obviously, you would burn through everything like a motherfucker if you were going that fast. But they just bring it up as a throwaway and it never comes back in a meaningful way and they never come up with any meaningful way to challenge him. Like, you look at Flash's villains, like, they're specifically designed to counter his speed in a creative way. While this is just like, yeah, a bunch of bug people, a bunch of uh, warlords that don't really have anything that would make uh, anything a challenge for a speedster, and they don't have any limitations for his abilities that are uh, even introduced in any meaningful way. So he's just like, a, he's just a garbage character in this. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and and what what Joss tried to do with him in his cut is not good either because they're like oh well he's just really nervous and he doesn't know what he's doing and he's scared and that's his sort of way of excusing all the things that he probably should do yeah it's not good either I didn't like it the first time I watched it but no. it is you look I don't back know I want to say like, marginally better that's the thing. you look back and you're like oh okay. <clears throat> Right, because if you had full control, that's lame. But if you don't have full control, and you need to justify why the Flash isn't dominating. You're like, what if he's green? What if he doesn't really do much fighting at all? He may have looked confident in that camera footage, but let's just say that he pushed the guy over, and that's all he knows how to do is push people. Very, he's very new to all of this. He doesn't like to fight people. And they show him get freaked out by um, <laughs> uh, the comment of uh, Steppenwolf makes about how he's like, why does everyone keep saying they have family? And the Flash <laughs> is like, oh my god. So um, that's what I mean. They, it's, it's, uh, it's not something that anyone really likes. But um, can you actually make a criticism of it that's more than that? <laughs> Daddy Steppenwolf. You will love him. <laughs> <laughs> you will Mother. love him. We gotta see Steppenwolf's ass, guys. That is an automatic superiority <laughs> to It is a little bit lame. Cut. We didn't see the new Steppenwolf's ass. I was expecting it to be all spiny and spiky. Um, yeah, and the thing is, he does strip for Darkseid, so it was a missed opportunity. <laughs> is so, uh, Steppenwolf better, or worse, or about the same in Zack Snyder's Justice League? Hmm. I guess like there's a little bit more of a motivation for him than he has in Justice. I don't know that uh, that we could say that that's necessarily true, because the motive difference they're kind of just different. They're not necessarily better or worse or more detailed. Like in Joss's, yeah. he is a uh, exiled, powerful entity, and he's been waiting for his chance to regain it. He has to unite these three boxes, take over Earth, and at the same time rise to godhood something that's what he wants in this one he's uh he wants to impress dad 
So he has to take the, <laughs> the... And you might be like, oh, wow, that's not really fair what you just did. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm conceding that they're... Like, I don't know which one's better out of those two. But yeah. I can tell you which one's more entertaining and more fun to be around. Oh, fucking, yeah. Someone in chat is saying... Why does everyone just... keep telling me that? Someone in chat said, in Joss's, he is a giant mama's boy. But he's a daddy's boy in this one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't understand. Why is that better? Yeah, or, and then, boy. well, it just seems very transparent to me that it's like, oh, well, here's the villain from Joss's version. I'm going to make him a minion to an even more evil and bigger villain. But then you're just passing the buck because Darkseid's motivations Oof. and his actions are also bad. You know, like he's just shifting it up a rung. It's not really improving much of anything, in my right. opinion. It's like a lateral move at best. Well, I'm, I'm assuming we'd all agree that when you combo up Steppenwolf in Joss versus Steppenwolf and Darkseid from Snyder, that's where the Snyder one definitely loses. Because, like, everything to do with Darkseid is terrible. Yeah. And you have to actually account for the fact that Steppenwolf forgot about the planet, too. <laughs> yep. Which is, again, a huge flaw that Joss's doesn't have. And I have to believe that Joss was like... Maybe we cut that. <laughs> Maybe we cut the whole anti-life thing. And also, how Chadley was um, Joss's Steppenwolf in the flashback. I mean, that was a man right there. Oh, yeah. He had to be dragged back onto his ship to concede defeat. While Snyder was just, while Snyder's dark side was just like, oh, I'll just go. Oh, I'm, dead <laughs> I'm dying. Oh, no. <laughs> See, this is it's just the sort of thing where you realize that Justice League was a disaster because Joss was brought on at the eleventh hour to work on a film that was going to be a complete disaster. And I don't know, man, for for how bad um, Zack Snyder's Justice League turned out to be, I have to say, I, I'm looking at Justice <laughs> League, and I just have to say, this was a valiant effort on his part. To um, his jokes have been to... a hell of a lot better. <laughs> the ones that he added, I mean. But uh, there's yes. loads of evidence of him trying to fix stuff, and some of it, I'm oh like, Oh my man. god. Oh my god. I oh. have found the holy grail. <laughs> I'm terrified of what's happening. Da, 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 da. <laughs> what? Look at it! <laughs> <laughs> it is spiny! It is spiny! He doesn't oh. have any buns. Oh God. There's no crack. <laughs> See, and this is another reason, like, Justice League Steppenwolf is superior. He has a fine ass. He does. A fine, fine rear end. It's quite he perky. Looks, <laughs> it just looks like skeletal from behind. It's kind of mm. gross. Um, <laughs> it's guys. It's not a meme. It's a it's it's a three D rendering. It's yeah. All right. It's on screen now. <laughs> look at it. <laughs> look at it. <laughs> I want all of you to look at it. Those, no, uh, don't make me. Those bonus fingers as well. It's just like yeah. <laughs> hey, hey. One of them's on his wrist. This Steppenwolf, he can count to fourteen with his hands. Okay. Oh. Unstoppable. Ooh. Yeah, gnarly. Um, mm -hmm. Still, like I said, the main plot lines are in both of them are awful. Uh, but the funny part is that Joss Whedon scene that he added with uh, Batman in the beginning of his, the I don't even know why he did what he did. The bug exploded and splattered three boxes on the wall. Like, what? 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 Like, what? <laughs> yeah, that was... Uh, what were was, you thinking was with that? a lazy way of setting that up, for sure. It was, um... I, I, I don't I, even... I actually I still want don't... to know how it was... was it... I just want to know how his mind got there. As I mean, yeah. I guess his, it's just the only alternative that he could somehow come up with for uh, Superman lets out these giant sonic screams that, uh, or supersonic screams that awaken the mother boxes. Like he needs to find a different sort of inciting incident for the mother boxes awakening or whatever. I suppose but... the problem you want to solve is Batman needs to find out that something is coming. But the problem, see, because for me, it was yeah. like he could have just been assembling the team anyway. Um, yeah, because in Batman v Superman, he's like just a feeling. We yeah, and so that's actually a part that Joss fails at that Snyder doesn't. Um, Snyder had him assembling the team regardless of the threat that's coming, which is what he should be doing. Uh, Joss had him only assembling the team once he knew a threat was coming for some reason. Yeah, I agree with that for sure. Well, see, that's just proof that that Zack Snyder's Justice League is is better now. So <laughs> we're done. That's, that, <laughs> there's one thing that it did better. That, that means it's better. That's something to bring up. Um, I've definitely talked to him about this, but so 
we find out uh, in the opening, of course, that the boxes wake up and they call in Steppenwolf. And he jumps in through the uh, little portal onto uh, Themyscira. And so that tells us as an audience, we're like, oh, so he can just jump to the boxes. Pretty OP, by the way. And so it's just mm -hmm. like, damn, all right. Uh, side note, imagine the first box he went to, the first one that called in was Silas's. And so he just got that one for free <laughs> because nobody was defending it. And then yeah. <laughs> he got the next two with ease because they barely defended too. Like the film fucking is over if he gets Silas's <laughs> box first. Um, but lucky for us, it was the Amazonian one. And so, as like again, visually as an audience member, we, we, we can just be like, so he's just going to teleport to the other two eventually. That just seems to be how it works. It's just essentially on a timer. But the film is is like they kind of activate and call him. At different times, depending on different things, I don't know what, like, like why these things happen. But the film wanted to give us an explanation. It was like only one of them called to him; the other two have to either be woken up or or found. And so the second one is oh, found. because they smell and they have to track down the scent. Well, yeah. So it, Joss's <laughs> they version say that. and 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 well, really both weird. versions, yeah. It's like the they they generate a sort of aura that the the bugs can follow. But uh, Zach is like, no, 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 no. I'm gonna I'm gonna do something better than that. Okay, so. He knows the Atlanteans have it, and so he starts capturing Atlanteans and interrogating them. And so we get the scene where Willem Dafoe basically tells uh, Aquaman that. He's like, dude, weird shit's happening. We've defended the Mother Box for like a billion years, but now some of our gods are disappearing, and the Mother Box is possibly like, you know, weak. That scene sets up, well, three things, I guess. One, he doesn't want to be king or whatever, which we already knew. Two, that people are getting taken and something is happening with them, but you can infer interrogation obviously pretty easily from the scene we get later with the interrogating the people. And then three, that uh, the mother box needs defending. We went over how the stupid with the mother box, him, he just happens to go there just when Mira's about to die and all that shit. Imagine he turned up and everyone was just dead and it was gone. He'd be like, oh, <laughs> damn. <laughs> um, <laughs> more importantly, we are, we're we told that uh, Atlanteans are getting kidnapped and interrogated, right? And then later on, we're shown that the Atlanteans are pulled out and then thrown about. And then he picks one up and he's like, yo, where's the mother box? And the Atlanteans are like, I would never tell a disgusting creature such as you. Ah! And he gets thrown. <laughs> and then he's like, I will die before revealing any such secrets that he puts a little bug on him that gets him oh, where the box is. Oh, I forgot is. about mm -hmm. that. Now, yeah, the, the interrogation spider. It takes so long to do that uh. scene, and all it told us was what we got told by Willem Dafoe. It's, it's, and, and the scene makes itself redundant, when if you had a machine that gets you the answers out of someone's fucking brain, why would you ask so many questions in the first place? Yeah, just throw that thing on his face. And so yeah. I, was like, I was watching, I was like, oh, we could have cut this whole fucking scene. Like, why didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of that. But also, I find it really funny that he throws him, he cracks his head on the rock, <laughs> Blood is everywhere, but somehow he's still alive. But then he puts the little mind-reading spider on him, and he believes that this guy, even though he just had major brain trauma, like everything <laughs> in there is super reliable information. He comes out all goopy, and there's like an me. image of some 4chan like <laughs> thing, and he's just he's just like I don't know. So I, I was I was just browsing bad. Like why are you scanning through my brain? <laughs> it's, it's just for me. It's just a dinosaur in World War II killing Nazis or whatever. <laughs> like, nothing makes sense. Like, hey, actually, I, I have a question. Um, this is another contradiction between <laughs> this cut of Justice League and uh, and Aquaman, right? Um, don't they establish in Aquaman that only, like, royalty are able to uh, breathe, um, like, out of water? Oh, yeah, it fucks with Aquaman. You um you have to at least be mixed, right? Mixed or royal, and that's yeah. Aquaman's mixed, mm -hmm. and then the mixing others are royal. the races. Yeah. But these uh, <laughs> these Atlantean soldiers can just be dragged out of the water, and uh, they're still breathing fine. Mm -hmm. They fucked mm. that up too. They fucked up a lot with Aquaman. Even uh, Mira's accent it was from British to American. <laughs> so someone in the comments, and I've seen this sentiment a couple times so far, said, "You're bringing science into magic. The movie does that." This whole universe does that. They have something magical like kryptonite with Superman and they try to explain it where they show it under a microscope and they go, oh, it's destroying the cells. Or like the little spider he had didn't seem like magic. That seemed like technology, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, unless you're going to do the Arthur C. Clarke quote, but you know what I'm saying. The movie tries to combine the science and the magic. It tries to give a rational explanation for things and it always or most often does a really awful job of that. 
So it's not like we're repeat. trying to project logic onto something that's just magic. Just go with it, man. Yeah, yeah. Repeat after me. Internal consistency will always be important. Internal consistency does not care about the fact that it's not real. What matters is that it is real within that universe and follows a set of rules. Please do not use this argument again, you fucks. Um, I don't understand. The emotion in the Snyder Cut is far more <laughs> effective than the cynically made Justice League. I actually, I have a question about the uh, the thing with internal consistency in regarding um, movie silencers. This was, I know this is off topic, but I was thinking about the other day. Um, you know how movie silencers, they're always going like, pew, you know, they're, they're very, very quiet. Mm -hmm. um, is that okay as long as it's internally consistent, even though it's not realistic at all? Well, um, I think the the criticism would be that we're led to believe that this is our world for all intents and purposes. Yeah, that's, so that things, comes under yeah. the whole, it has to be stated that it's a different technology or it's explained mm -hmm. to be a new technology. You can't rely on our understanding of guns and those particular makes and models and then go, oh, but they don't work the way that you know them to work. It's like, it's like the, Makes sense to me. the train safety yeah. on Spider-Man 2. I brought it up this time. Look at that. Hey, well, why do you guys keep bringing up Spider-Man yeah, 2? Yeah, so Stop bringing up Spider-Man 2. Go know, back to my bring bad. up Last Jedi every podcast. I, po I apologize. Back to Subway the Spider-Man 2 is a movie. I'll do something else. Subway Station scene of John McToo. <laughs> Who's a John McToo? <laughs> John McToo. John Mc... <laughs> um, John Wick Donald. John... Yeah. Uh, farm? Uh, the... Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the whole, uh, he's Dr. Manhattan thing as well, because it's just, uh, as the images fly by on my screen, I'm like, Joss made it so that, um, at the very least, as much as he would be powerful by the end of the movie, Cyborg had to get there, he was developing, his suit was, like, floompy flampy, like, he didn't know what was happening, he said he, uh, learned to fly, like, for overnight, because it's, they're all developing and upgrading on their own sort of thing, he's, a uh, mother box incarnate doesn't know quite how to control it yet it's like to me that just seems like the most basic normal thing you would do instead of making him go from zero to one just instant superpower um mm. but if you're going to do that then the story would surely be about this overwhelming sense of knowledge and control over everything and like what do you do with that and the film actually explicitly states that that's the case and then does nothing with it crazy mm. a little bit of a shame <laughs> yeah, um, I can't believe he has a mind reading spider. That's uh, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. In relation to the bloat, because that's what I would use as a, a thingy for that. When we were watching the Snyder Cut, that it opens with the tower and it's panned up, and we see Silas coming down with the two bugs holding him. They drag him across the uh, little bridge, and then they take him up and over and down through the the grating to the, all the other people are interrogating. Drop him, and I think we get a close shot of him just being like, "Oh my god, this is terrible." And then next scene. I think Rags was like, oh, well, that was needed. <laughs> like, we, we couldn't have figured out that, that when they took him, that they took him. Like, what the fuck was the point? It's, um, it's really fun to watch the movies and compare how much Joss just chopped that didn't fucking matter at all. Like, it, so many extended scenes. One of, my, one of the fun comparisons is the, uh, the shooting of the Arrow of Artemis. Um, <laughs> Joss cuts to her. Oh, yeah. Joss cuts to it, lighting it, and then firing it. Snyder has this whole ceremony of ceremony, his fucking box like, out. Uh... And opening Guys, it up. you're in a rush. There is a world-ending threat <laughs> happening. Just speed it no. along. No. What, do, do you think they have thing? super speed? Do you think there's three people in the team that have super <laughs> speed? You're crazy. Um, by the way, I just wanted to uh, quickly say, yeah, the um, your, your answer to the uh, um, Hollywood silencers uh, thing may, makes sense to me. Um, all right. Um, how about we talk about uh, something that got me in a ton of shit on Twitter recently? Go for it. Um, oh, good God! So Superman is brought back to life in Zack Snyder's Justice League. There's a point where uh, you know it, it plays out mostly the same way in this as it did in Justice League. There's a point where he um, he's about to kill the Flash. He's about to like heat vision him to death, and uh, there's like a couple of armed Humvees that are close by, you know, military Humvees. And um, some National Guard soldiers are shooting at Superman with these turrets. And uh, Superman goes over and uses his heat vision on these two Humvees and um, blows the two of them up. So I think that it's reasonable to infer that the um, at least one of the gunners 
in the Humvees is dead because we see him get off the Humvee and he's standing literally right next to it as it explodes. And that's going to fuck you up. Um, people try to insist, no, no, no. We see him in the shot when Batman arrives. He's like behind the first Humvee. No, it's not because uh, that guy has a, um, a, a rifle slung around him. And But the point is, Superman doesn't give a fuck after it. Um, well, yeah, what you were describing, whether yeah. or not a life was taken, that's more of a law uh, discussion. That's not really yeah. my concern, whether or not he should be punished under the law for X amount of time. I'm more concerned with the character of Superman having lasered <laughs> to the precisely. point of he could easily have killed all those people and he wouldn't have given a fuck, and he never talks about it and no one ever addresses it with him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. When he wakes up with amnesia, his his base state is evil instead of confused and scared or something. You know what I mean? It's very strange. You would um, think it, he'd be very. You think he'd try to run away or something if there are people trying to shoot at him. If he, you know, came back to life and wasn't sure what was going on. Well, it, it's just uh, it's funny because you see, you've got um, Winter Soldier, you've got Bucky in the MCU. And uh, he was brainwashed into doing the things that he did that were all bad. And mm -hmm. once he uh, got his mind cleared up and everything, <clears throat> now he's um, trying to atone for his sins that he did when he wasn't even, like, lucid. He's just uh, ashamed that it was his hands that shed blood, right? Meanwhile, you've got Superman, who um, is kind of in a similar situation. We can grant, oh, he wasn't in his right mind. But I would still say that's, um, that's not an excuse for him... Uh, Basically, just not giving a fuck afterwards about he almost killed people. Yeah, and then he's back to normal like a scene later. I that's uh, just so garbage. I hate it. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's... and if you wanted Ooh. like if your job was to try and repair it, you have to like you need that scene where he's still zombie clock, and then Lois. You have to the dialogue's gonna have to be so good. This is a tough scene to write. And as the scene goes on, and he gets more and more of himself back, he eventually starts to get really guilty suddenly. And you're like, wait, what? And he's like, those people, those soldiers. Oh my god. And then, like, Lois is like, you didn't know. You couldn't have known. And then, and then, yeah. he's, and then he could, like, look up and be like, I have to be better. And you just, like, already tried your best to be like, we have to recover, we have to... But I think uh, <laughs> yeah, with, with Joss, the, the, he had to redo uh, exposition in the cornfield, because it's a different plot line. And you have to actually like bring it back. So like, I don't know. They had the time. Uh, I guess suppose you could have tried <laughs> to cut something else out. But yeah. Uh, hello, Free. Yeah. How do you do? Oh, I have Fringled. Hello. My my alarm didn't go off. Mine so. didn't either, right? It's it's great yeah. technology. Worthless Australians. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Uh, but yeah. So what 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 I miss? What what do we what do we mean? What are we um, even talking about? <laughs> Well, first we re we've revealed to chat that uh, we think the Joss cut is superior, and we've just been going through loads of scene comparisons. Yeah. Um, they've not <laughs> taken it as badly as I might have expected, but a lot of people absolutely disagree, and I, I don't know. You're wrong. It's, it's okay, guys, you're wrong. You're wrong, all right? I'm sorry that you built your personality around the release of this film, um, but yeah, it's, it's it really it's really awful. Um, it's kind of surprising that a film that's twice as long as the theatrical cut is somehow worse. And not even, like, by a narrow margin. Like, it's it's definitely worse. What a, what a strange journey it's been. Like, the DCEU. We <laughs> yeah, got, yeah. like, this... How many films... Are, so there are, like, eight or nine films, in the, and they're all somewhere between two and three. Like, we're trying to distinguish between, like, a point one decimal place between each of these films in terms of what doesn't work. It's fascinating. Um, it's incredible. Yeah. I saw someone in chat asking if this is the worst DCEU film, and I'm going to just say, no, I still think 84 is worse. However, I will say, as sort of a combination between entertainment value and craftsmanship, I would... I would prefer to watch Wonder Woman eighty four. Um, I think this, is the, one I would least, this yeah. is the one I would least want to watch again. Yeah, like this yes. is yep. in terms of my entertainment yeah. value. This mm -hmm. is my least favorite. Um, whereas Justice League is my favorite. <laughs> in terms of oh yeah, value. like Justice League. Like I don't say this lightly. I don't say this like casually. Because you got to emphasize. I got to emphasize. I hate this universe. I hate everything about <laughs> it except for some of the <laughs> casting choices. Um, Justice League, a lot of it, thanks to the Snyder Cut, is slowly turning into this bizarre guilty pleasure for me because it's so <laughs> endearing to see humanity in these characters again. And it's fascinating to see where 
Joss zagged where Snyder did a huge zig in the opposite direction and yeah. just trying to repair this mess. It is an absolutely um, um, captivating experience once you have that full context of how much he had to fix. Okay, so now then I actually have to to um, push back a little bit against you here, Meme Repository. This is me playing mm -hmm. devil's advocate, okay? So... Mm -hmm. Um, we're all about consistency here and not just about yes. whether or not you you like things more. And yes, we do like that these characters are are more likable in Justice in Justice League, but can't you make the argument that they are more consistent with how they're characterized in Zack Snyder's Justice League with nope, you the can't, previous nope. films? Go ahead. Nope. All right, go ahead and give me the, the, fight. the reasoning. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not sure. If no, you it's guys not. It's not a fight. This. I'm. I'm. I'm literally. <laughs> I. I literally am just asking yeah. a question. It's a prompt. It's a conversation prompt. I'm not arguing this fucking point. I am not going um, to bat for yeah, this movie. Sure. <laughs> have we have we already um, talked about Wonder Woman in terms of uh in terms of what what her deal is here? No, what? Go for it. We, we haven't done the lack of character. We, we actually the haven't done the, character. the bank scene. Wonder so Woman is kind of like the most significant. Wait, is that? Hold on. Uh, the so <laughs> Wonder Woman. Go for yeah. it. Basically, yeah, just go for it. Uh, Wonder Woman is the most significant character in the DCEU. She's had like the most screen time, which is hilarious. Um, but what what is what has her journey been? So, in as we as we learned in in her first story, she uh, got recruited to a the the first side that she encountered in World War One, a very morally gray war, and uh, gleefully killed a bunch of uh, German eighteen year old German conscripts. <laughs> um, and then she realized that she believed in love and shot a laser through her brother. And then we jump ahead a bit. Uh, she's been very active in the world. And um, what, but the main thing that we see is that in 1984, she is going out of her way to not kill people. I don't think she, I don't think a single person dies in that film. Um, yeah, she, she goes out of her way not to kill people. And then we jump forward to Justice League where she bursts into a room filled with children and like a bunch of terrorists start shooting at her, and she starts punching them so hard that their their skulls crack, and like all of their bones break in front of these kids. And she's so negligent that she punches one of these people towards the children and has to swoop <laughs> over there to grab him and then throw him into the wall. And then there's blood all over the wall. I was gonna say um, head first, and <clears throat> splattering his brains on the wall. <laughs> yeah, um, and it's it's kind of funny. She bursts through the she bursts through the room and she's, like all of the debris flies <laughs> towards them. And then you know the 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 icing on the cake when she blasts the dude on the other side of the room. And Joss Whedon was wise enough to cut cut away uh, yes <laughs> cut away from the massive explosion that sent tons of debris raining down on the police officers on the other side. <laughs> Now someone said, "Eh, I kind of like brutal Wonder Woman." Um, it, you may like that. That's cool with me, but it's a little bit weird for this hero to blast debris onto a bunch of cops on the other side of the wall. But no like reason. negligence. Don't like they the canonized my joke. They canonized my joke. Yep. I was joking don't. when I said they're all dead. <laughs> God damn it! Don't don't forget that they um. Like all the, the people inside are going to be breathing in all kinds of particles and shit that won't be good for their lungs. Well, so yeah, there's the, the that's this three. So what Fringy said, damage to the cops. What you said, damage to the children from the debris. And three, the property damage, the unnecessary property damage yeah. to public required. So building. unnecessary to use your strongest fucking move on and a by random the way, you terrorist guy. It's like what? Are that? The Just fuck is it? Him, punch him in a dick or something. I don't know. The fuckers in chat who are in the real world would be like, hey, what woman blew open a bag or whatever? And it's like, that's oh, chill, it was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> remember, 84 isn't canon to this movie. Um, Patty Jenkins said that we all ignore Justice League, so it is canon to Zack Snyder's Justice League. Yeah, I mean, this movie... We have no reason to believe it isn't canon, other than I... the fact that it doesn't make I sense. Love... I love 84 this... isn't canon. Yes, it is. Stop I, lying to yourselves. Well, yeah, it's Zack not Snyder <laughs> worked with Patty Jenkins for Wonder Woman 84. What, yeah, Patty yeah. Jenkins said that. <laughs> it's, also, yeah. I was just going to say quickly, that... it's not canon yeah. in the same way that Rise of Skywalker isn't canon. It's like, well, it is. I'm sorry. It is. That's the it problem. It absolutely is. Like, we also, wouldn't talk I... about it being so bad if it wasn't <laughs> canon. Also, yeah. I love the, the just the dissonance between 
her brutally killing those guys and their their brain matter is splattered all over the walls and then the girl's like can i be like you <laughs> and then she's like you can be You're whatever little... you want just like those terrorists were being whatever they wanted <laughs> you, little you know those terrorists <laughs> those terrorists they were stronger united hashtag the <laughs> that, and that was the that was the beginning of the yodeling my ears. <laughs> there is no objective canon on a philosophical basis. You, what? What? The, what? <laughs> what does it mean? I'm confused. I'm, look, strictly, it's, it's not a. Jesus Christ. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, it's it. Um, I mean, to be fair, uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League isn't canon to this universe, so you know, uh, it's well, not, guys. Th this is the thing, you <laughs> guys. I don't know if you realize, on. but uh, if you want the universe to have more continuity, you need to canonize Joss and decanonize <laughs> Snyder. That's like the which is what our uh, Warner Brothers are already doing. They are moving on. They are yeah. gone. They're flying away from this. <laughs> yeah. They they got Doctor Fate, which is really cool. They're doing all these other movies. Suicide Squad actually looks pretty good. They're just moving on. They you got know, Starro. Um, someone oh. wrote something up there in chat that I, I kind of like, like just as a as a it's just a thought. It's not like a huge floor or anything, but. You know when she killed Ares, and he does a he does a big death scream, and then the mother boxes activate, and Wonder Woman finds out <laughs> that she's <laughs> like, you, you, you laugh, but like it would make some sense. He's the one that nearly killed Darkseid. Yeah, it would make so, more sense than Superman. Yeah, it would make more sense. That's what I reckon. Oh my good god! <laughs> uh, I, it it kind of seems to me like they're just throwing crap at the wall to see what what sticks because it's like they uh they all they just want each movie to exist in its own separate canon and they're just trying to see okay which one's going to be a hit this time and then this will be the start of the new new dceu it's like because uh, they tried green lantern and that failed and then man of steel and that, that did better than green lantern so it's like okay we'll we'll build off of this one but now it seems like they're trying to find a new movie to build off of um and just erase everything else that came before it yeah, they're a, they're a shambles right now, because you can't ignore the success of Aquaman, and so it's like, well, of course there'll be an Aquaman 2, and it's like, well, what if we reset in this universe, What? how does that tie in? It's like, I don't fucking care, make Aquaman 2. And you're like, oh. Do Shazam like, Oh, everybody likes Shazam, so I guess we should do that again. It's like, oh, mm. we got, like, James Gunn. <laughs> that's already... probably gonna be really good. Well, that's the thing, they've got, um, uh, they're probably gonna want to generate another Justice League, but alongside that... The Suicide Squad second attempt is happening, and if that's super successful, I wonder if they need to focus on tying, like, we need to get them connected sort of thing. Well, like... um, from what I've read, the Flash movie is going to reset the DCEU. It's going to be like, <clears throat> I think they're going to use that film as their excuse to keep the stuff they want and delete the stuff that they don't like. Um, that's uh... someone, someone in chat saying, Steppenwolf slaughtering the Amazons alone makes it better than Joss' version. It's the same in both versions. Uh, no, he slaughters them, and I, in fact, Hippolytus is more retarded because she no, no, no. fucking nukes her own temple with the soldiers inside. I was gonna dicks. correct you there, Southpaw. Uh, the Amazonian queen has a higher kill count than Steppenwolf in Snyder's version. <laughs> 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 She's a fucking My moron. Blade is still trying slick to with the blood of your sisters. Trying to trap slash drown someone in a stone cage that has a teleport ability. Good job. You, you just all, they, all the. The Amazon's jumping on uh, Steppenwolf with his spike armor. <laughs> yeah, they'll probably I will hit. say they avoided the spikes. One of the more enjoyable little moments in the Snyder cut for me was when Steppenwolf grabbed the horse and threw it. <laughs> he, the way he picked it up was really goofy. You, and he it, really did it like it amused that horse. me quite a bit. Yeah, Steppenwolf is a big old goof factory. <laughs> you... I I wish you were more goofy because I just that's where I'd be like. <laughs> Justice League just plays into the nonsense. Like, Why does uh, everyone keep saying that? <laughs> Remember when we were like, we we were criticizing uh, how stupid the Amazon's uh, security was. Like, so what's your plan? Where are you planning on taking that mother box, right? And it was yeah. funny watching that for the EFAP movies on uh, Justice League before we recorded our uh, Snyder Cut reaction. And then we watched that scene. It's like. Guys, it's the same scene. It has the exact same issues. 
<laughs> I was I was quite surprised how many scenes <clears throat> were in both. Um the whole bank heist with Wonder Woman, I was sure that was a uh, Joss edition because it only really accomplishes that hey she saves people and she's Wonder Woman doing Wonder Woman stuff but then it's the same scene except longer and worse <laughs> I, think that, I think that's kind of the thing you discover throughout the whole film it's like fundamentally it's the same film like it, it hits a lot of the same beats except worse because again Joss was wise enough to cut out the dark side forgot the location of the anti-life equation or the part where Superman tries to kill soldiers. Yep. Yep. Well, um, if you remember, the closest they get to it is the laser deflects off of Cyborg's shield thing into police oh, cars right. or something. So it's like yeah. there's a, there's a lesser connection there, but you could still argue that Superman should have some moment of like, oh my goodness, like that whole whatever. What happened have I there. done? Yeah, it would. Mm -hmm. suck. But at the same time. Um, there's more of an effort in Joss's cut to argue that Superman was literally like not quite him, and then he was him because yeah. he got his memories back. While in the other one, well, I think, yeah, um, like it was coming back partially. Like I said, the pet cemetery line and uh, Bruce saying, if you guys remember, Bruce says, uh, the world needs you, and then it shows Superman's face, like he, he like looks down, and he's like, oh shit, like, like realizing who he is and what's happening. It's like, oh my god, just that alone like thank you for that one fucking look and you know what people say is like but that's a jelly lip face and you're like guys i need you to focus uh, <laughs> i need you to focus. I, I miss jelly lip superman i miss, I miss yes, so jelly I. lip superman you know it what? Was I funny. Would... yeah one reason i feel like people are definitely thinking this is better because so many of those uh superficial <laughs> like there's still problems but those superficial <laughs> things like the jelly lip and the color grading, honestly, I think the color grading is worse in the Snyder Cut. I'm going to say it. Can I, yeah. I think two, two, there's two like, comments. for example, I gotta, I'll give you a quick wait, example. On, on, of the I got to highlight because they're going to gotta fly off my screen. Uh, first one is, good God, you guys can't be satisfied with anything. So that's interesting. <laughs> second, second one is, I love how they spent the last hours defending a known pervert. What? what? Guys, this has nothing to do with Joss Whedon as a yeah. person. This is about the quality of his art. Fucking separate the art from the artist. You guys really need to God. chill. Now I'm not sure. I'm not sure if anybody's <laughs> done it uh, here, like in the chat. But I am super disappointed in the fact that, like, there have been people who, when there have been people just talking about the fact that they don't like the film, that then throw in those people's faces that Zack <clears throat> Snyder's daughter died. It's really fucking concerning that people would so willingly be doing that. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. And, and of course, just be like, why would you want to talk about any pluses in the film that was made by a pervert? You're like, I, 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 I didn't even, I thought we were just talking about the stories. I, I didn't we were know talking the... about the movie. Yeah, yeah we're, we're not talking about like Zach, about Joss Whedon being such a good person. It's like, well, he tried to do a better job with this movie, or it tried, he tried to uh, salvage something from this movie, which he did. Yeah. And he's I'm going to do the opposite he's now. Sorted. Like, I, I, I think Zack Snyder, like, from what I've seen and from what how people seem to talk about him, I can believe that Zack Snyder is a nice guy, great to have, Seems great to way. be around. Yeah, yeah, you could grab a beer with him. He makes awful art, and I make that separation between the art and the artist when I talk about him, just in the reverse direction. So we have to be consistent with this, guys. Come on. Um, and yeah, we I, I thought we all agreed on that, though, right? Like, art from the artist. Yeah. And the, nah, the I don't like... really. I believe zero percent in death of the author. So. <laughs> no, <laughs> I've evolved as a critic. Um, and the whole Come like back. you guys don't love anything thing always gets me because I'm just like, first of all, it wouldn't even matter if that were true. It's just our arguments that matter. And secondly, mm. you really think like we got the bad taste vibe when we did like the Snyder cut? Like Jesus Christ, the opening hour of this stream was Shad, YMS, and, uh, well, I guess all of us, just, just going over basically, like, all of the ways it absolutely destroys itself significantly, and there was, like, six different ones. Like, most movies don't even have one of those, or I say most, uh, no, screw that, a lot of movies have them, but, like, most movies that we talk about that we consider to be, like, a five or above, they don't have a world and plot and just, just universally story-destroying element. I have also, several of them. <clears throat> also, something can be a 5 out of 10 on a consistency scale and still be really enjoyable. Regardless. I mean, yeah. Dude, people out there are gushing over the Snyder Cut. and <laughs> They enjoyed the shit out of it. 
Which but then is, you had um, certain people who were like, no, I, I didn't enjoy it, but look, it's it's like the creative vision, all right? And that 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 matters more than anything else. I mean, it's part of yeah. it's what the, it's the job we're supposed to perform is to talk about how much sense these films made uh, when well, shoved against each other. Uh, like, if chat wants to know how much we all liked it, we've already said that uh, we thoroughly enjoyed Wonder Woman eighty four, but we also think it's the worst in the DCEU. Yeah. So, so mm -hmm. it, it's funny. Like, you've got this comment here where it's like, "Have you seen Jurassic Park recently? It's pretty devoid of logic and has too many contrivances to work if you're watching it with a so called objective lens. The whole setup is rigged. Why would you ask paleontologists to give a seal of approval to your dino park? Like, that's a terrible question because. Uh, if you have a dinosaur park, yeah, you would want paleontologists to approve your park. Mm. Um, they have never seen the li the living dinosaurs. No one has. So would you rather get a random Joe Schmo off the street or a guy that's studied dinosaurs his whole life? Um, they can't be authorized sources to decide whether the park is safe. I don't remember if that's like why they were pulled in exactly. The real seal of approval would be the security levels, which have to keep dangerous creatures behind, closed behind bars, blah, blah, blah. Um, also, Hammond breaks the law by taking two people to an island full of dangerous animals, but doesn't tell them what they're about to see. Weird how his lawyer friend didn't tell him that. And I'm just thinking, like, I don't know if that is actually illegal to do what Hammond did. Uh, he, I think he basically told Grant and uh, Ellie, uh, like, the, sort of the, uh, the circumstances, but he left certain details up to be, like, a surprise. And so I'm just, I'm, I'm looking at this, and it's like, why are you bringing this up exactly because first off these arguments are terrible secondly so what if they were valid against jurassic park then i would go yeah jurassic park is well, not as well written as i if, thought it was um, if all of you guys said oh we're watching jurassic park do you want to come and i'm like oh i can't make it today and then i come back the next day and you all go "Ooh, jurassic park <laughs> is not good dude i'd be like all right yeah maybe oh, maybe okay. i uh i haven't seen yeah. it in a while <clears throat> i mean i remember a lot about it that i think is good but it could be faulty memory at this point or just not uh, quite as absorbed. I'm more than willing to accept that any of the things that I've watched uh, as late as like many years ago for for, uh, for a recent time or whatever that could could be much worse than I remember, or could be much better than I remember. Mm. What's so funny? My about favorite this character person? in Jurassic Park is the hand that presses down on the raptor's tail when it's about to fall over when it enters the kitchen. That that guy, MVP. <laughs> um, I, I was just seeing the video on stream of Superman lasering the fucking Humvees. Yep. <laughs> I'm sorry, that, Dude. that gunner that jumped off, he's dead. I am so he's sorry, absolutely, but he's, you he's see absolutely you see dead. Batman Fireball, just, man. Batman just sneaks from behind the Humvee, like, I'm in this scene now. Hello. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> what? Um, do you remember there was a thought, I can't remember if it was anyone here who's, who said it, uh, it was one of the calls we were in, but it was like, maybe Batman didn't show up. Uh, when he probably should have. Basically, like, what the fuck is Batman doing? Everyone arrives and he's just not here. Like, Cyborg didn't help him get here. He did. He seemed to take ten years to get here. It's like, what's going on? And then there was this thought, maybe Batman is staying away because he knows that he might trigger Superman. And it's like, oh, that's that's like an idea, but then he just turns up anyway, so... It's yeah. like, it doesn't really work. <laughs> oh, and, that um, meme. I'm guessing that it's already been mentioned, right, that the scene works a lot better in Justice League because Batman got Lois Lane there, whereas the only reason Lois is here this time is because she was getting coffee nearby yeah. at the right moment in the morning. Yeah, Had she been, like, five out. minutes earlier or five minutes later, I guess Superman would have just killed everyone. Well, there are many instances of that in this yeah. film where it's like, if you were a minute later, <laughs> this whole film couldn't have happened. You would have lost. Mara, for example. Yeah, Mara would have had her head decapitated. She would have had her head chopped off. And these things are if major. It was one second late. Yep. Like, 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 Lois turning up prevents possibly the entire Justice League being executed at the <laughs> end of the world. <laughs> it's like, thank you, Lois. Yeah. You had a strong Nobody effect. Nobody can stop him. Because he's so powerful. <laughs> like, they didn't even stand a chance. Stupid fucking hyper gauntlets that Alfred made for him yesterday. <laughs> they just stopped, <laughs> like... It's oh, amazing. yeah. Like, I forgot fuck? about that. Like, in, in the Snyder Cut and... Sorry, in the Justice, the Justice League Cut and BVS, does Alfred make tech for him? Yeah, yeah, he, he he seems to have some interest in it. He, we, the first time we see Alfred, I think he's testing out the uh, voice mod modifier. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. yep. uh, right. I'm, and I quite like the idea that Alfred is engineering a lot of the, the tech that Batman uses. It's, yeah, it's a right. very active role. The problem I have, of course, 
is what an insanely useful piece of technology to have been invented so close in proximity to what it was <laughs> yeah. needed. It's like, wow. <laughs> oh, for sure. And what did Joss do? He had Superman hit Bruce instead. Also, yeah. um, it, 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 did, it really did remind me of the uh, the scene in Mando where they, re they reveal that um, Mandalorian's armor, uh, Din Djarin's armor, whatever, can um, deflect lightsabers. Wow. It's really handy. It, it seems a little um, unbelievable. Kind of that Superman's heat vision uh, doesn't just break through Batman's gauntlets. Oh well, you see, Southpaw, it does, but it doesn't for both of them. Mm. <laughs> like one of like them, how one just holds on infinitely longer than the other one. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> uh, it's always like, oh, so he's a he's a he's a butler and a, an incredible engineer. Okay, it's like, he, why why is that impossible? You could be both of those things. Yeah, that doesn't <laughs> seem too impossible. <laughs> Especially if you fucking, you're looking after Batman. Like, I don't know. But why? I don't see why that, because people saying like, oh, it's comboing up Alfred and Lucius Fox. Like, you could do that. You could have them be the same Why not? Character. Um, yeah, especially in a world where you have so many other characters to take care of in one fucking movie. Or two, I guess you could say. I actually like Jeremy Irons. one good Alfred. line, which was, this is Alfred, I work for him. That was, I, that gave me a tiny little giggle something wait when was that oh that was like a joke they made when they first arrived in the back cave and they all meet alfred um so bruce introduces him as hi this is so this is alfred i work for him um so it's just a little little funny bantery moment you know could have used more of those um but you Didn't, know something um, aquaman described alfred as badass i was like hey mm -hmm. mm. there you go we like stuff <laughs> no we don't yeah, there we Shut go up. we balance the scales yeah, now back to the one shitting on it. <laughs> um, one of Cosmonauts' criticisms of Joss's cut uh, that I just that applies to both of them is how long they take to actually start saving people in the uh, the tower portion of the film. Remember, they arrive and they oh see people being interrogated Flash. and they, they don't do anything. Um, in Joss's, well, that's the thing. You can say in Joss's cut that Flash is too scared to save everybody, and as much as you can. I don't, this is the complicated thing about this discussion that I, I'm not sure where I stand on this. A lot of people complain about that, like, significantly. They're like, that's ridiculous, that's stupid, I hate that. And I'm like, um... It's that, so that's who he is, apparently? And we have nothing to contradict it. So what, what, like, what's... Can we really complain that much about it? I don't know. Um, and of course, we know it was Joss's attempt to nerf uh, the Flash. Like I said, I don't like it either, but like I don't know that could we go beyond that as a criticism? Because um, I, th I think I can't remember which, which one of you I was talking to about this, but like Superman, uh, sorry, Spider Man is really really OP. Um, and so oh, yeah. if you're going to make a load of movies with him, you're probably going to want him a little like kind of shit in his first few, so that lower level threats can actually have high stakes. Mm -hmm. Um. And I don't mean shit in terms of he's got lower strength for no reason. I just mean he's he's just not he's gonna fail in ways that a kid would. They just don't know. They're not street smart enough, or they don't anticipate things the same way an adult does. All that sort of thing. And so making the Flash a little skit because by the end of the film, Flash is fucking knocking the shit out of the aliens. He's gotten over his his fear, so it's up to the next writer to try and you know apply limits and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But like, yeah, the only argument I, I'm assuming people are gonna be using is, well, that's not what Flash should be, and I just be like. All right. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Did with you that. all love how he just runs around the staircase giving moral support as the humans slowly trudge their way up the tower? <laughs> yeah. What a useful use of your powers. Good job, Flash. <laughs> High five. I like that part where he, he grabs all the debris that's falling down and he sees another one falling down and instead of just grabbing it, he screams no. Like he, and he doesn't grab any of the people as well. Her. Yeah. yeah, just doing anything. I mean, as we see at the end of the movie, when there's an explosion, everything slows down. You can just rewind time. Why would you never, you know? Oh, got to break the rule. It's like, it's, what's the point of having that rule? You're, you're always going to do it back. when you need it, so it's not really oh. a rule at all. God, guys, uh, HBO Max announced. Oh, wait, hold on. No, I'm sorry. That's uh, no, that's a, that is a, that is fake. a fake. That is, that is a troll fake, account. Yeah. That is a troll. Yeah, <laughs> I saw you that fell for well. the bait. <laughs> 
very 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 briefly i did yes <laughs> it, it, the, the, the the clue is uh hbo map is not a real thing <laughs> <laughs> i like the idea that there's a hbo uh, map and it's just HBO like a map, map to hbo <laughs> you know what though thank you thank you hbo map for trolling the snyderverse i, I the, the, the snyder fans thank you just give give them hope please Someone said, I think he means rule like a law of physics. What? No, he does not. What do you mean? No, 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 no. Because no. obviously he did it fine. He didn't have to break any laws of physics. I mean, that's... So, oh, it's though, a personal it, 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 rule he has for some reason. I'm not really sure why. Well, yeah, I was going to say, that's still bad though, right? If he was saying it in reference to the idea, like, I shouldn't really rewind time just because you shouldn't really rewind time. I'd just be like, that's not anything, Barry. <laughs> that's, you have to do better than that. If, like, damn, you know? Because we, I think we brought this up earlier, but it was just like, uh, did, did Barry ever tell any of them about this, do you think? Like, I rewound uh, time and saved not. all of your lives, by the way, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, no biggie, we can get me yeah. translator. <laughs> uh. It'd be... It'd be really weird if he didn't. I feel, I feel like that. It's it's really hard when we first watch this movie to try and organize your thoughts on it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Because it was mm. like four hours of just pure concentrated agony. <laughs> <laughs> and you just try and think about where to. St Dude, like, you said what? that as it said, part six, something darker. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's one of the things too. Oh, um, the, the 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 film's aspect ratio was incredibly annoying, and it's tr it's very obvious the scenes where it was shot in four by three, which yeah, are not many of them. Right now, and the scenes where ah uh, yeah, look at that headspace. Look at that headspace mm, over mm, there. Mm, mm, Gorgeous. Mm, head it's almost mm. like the film wasn't shot to look like this. Yeah. Oh, but you can see more of the area above the characters you love. <laughs> and isn't that yeah, amazing? That's... We can look I, I, at the sky, because that's more interesting. Because I remember when I, when I was, like, you can see it in um, the shots, like, with Darkseid and uh, Desaad and, and any basically any CGI shots and the nightmare sequence. Everything's framed correctly. Like, there isn't all this empty space above everybody's heads. But then when you look at like, <coughs> oh shit, um, there's just empty space inside I'm their heads. <laughs> um, yeah. <coughs> Fuck. <We're right laughs> Bad there. time. Bad time to get. Oh god. All right, there we go. Now I'm better. <laughs> breathe, breathe, breathe. A lot of empty space above their heads. It's just really annoying. And it's funny because the only reason this was done was because it's meant to be cool and edgy and like Seven Samurai. It's the only reason he did this. Well, I I my like I'm going to give him a bit more credit than that. I think he just likes the show. <coughs> That's what, like he decided that not at the beginning because you can find quotes of him when he was still attached to the project early on that he said he intended it to be 185. So 1 1.85 to 1 which is very, very close to 16 by 9. It's like the little little tiny black bars on the top, right? And then he decided later, like, ah, I kind of like, you know, the bigger square look, so I'm just going to do that. Like, gonna... it's not it's not pretentious. It's uh... just, it's, it doesn't really add nah, anything. I'm gonna no, give no, 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 because there's nothing inherently pretentious about the shape of the screen. No, 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 no. Is square. <laughs> no, there isn't. You, it, no, well, there hang isn't. on, wait, wait, wait. You wouldn't argue that it's inherently pretentious. You would argue it's, in, it's pretentious in regard to society and culture, which it is. Yeah. No, I don't think it's inherently pretentious to I shoot didn't your say film it was. in a box here. Yeah, I it's don't think it's pretentious in the context of our culture to have a film <laughs> in, in a four box by three. ratio. Are you sure about no, that? I, <laughs> yeah, I don't think... was shot in a box. Are you sure about no, that? No, I don't, I don't think that's... Pretentious. I don't think that when will eyes a lot. Release a hey, justice is gray edition. Like I yeah, don't. Well, think wait, 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 wait. So, so, so to clarify, right? It's not. I wouldn't call it automatic. Um, for example, the one that everyone's going to bring up is Lighthouse. Lighthouse makes a really strong use of the square. Like it, it's it, oh for sure. So many of the shots yeah. are properly like framed. Like it, the film, I imagine, is much more of a uh, consistent consumption with a square rather than a widescreen. I was very impressed and was watching it with so many of the shots where I was just like, oh shit, they made that work really well with the 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 limits they have, sort of thing. As well as adding yeah. to the claustrophobia of the whole like experience. However, 
I see no fucking reason for the uh, Snyder Cut to be a square at all. Oh, and then... I agree. Oh, look, all I'm saying is I don't think it inherently means, as pretentious, you know, implies that he thought it made this film more artsy or more intelligent than really? it actually is. It's just with I the think black and white liked... as well. I. I don't know because well when you watch mm. this film the color correction is so desaturated it just I get the vibe that this is just what he thinks looks cool not that he thinks it makes it more intelligent or more high art than it would be otherwise he I just mean, thinks it looks good This is the same guy who has all of the the like the deeper biblical references as well as like other literature references then does like the gods come from He is pretentious do not get me wrong I'm just gods saying gods come from above then I don't like his choose. His choice is stupid and incompetent because a lot of the shots weren't framed to be that way. I don't. I don't know. I just. I don't see. All right. Well, so to clarify, you think he made the decision because he thought it looked cool, rather than he thought it would make his film look more like it made by a clever person or an artsy person. Yeah. Yeah, I'm more willing to err on the side of uh, he was trying to oh, make... Yeah. Well, so this was the thing I, I meant to say when we started this conversation. I don't believe necessarily it's either of those beyond. I think he's desperately trying to move his movie away from Whedon's as much as possible to prove that it is an entirely <laughs> different film. Which, how many people oh, I have agree you, with that. How many people have you guys that. seen say that? Where they're like, oh my god, these films are like entirely different. And it's like, they're yeah, not, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're really not actually like if we're going to be one because this is the thing in some ways they actually really are but then in the most significant meaningful ways like oh well no way no they are kind of just the same film though like yes it's oh i agree with that i think i think a lot of the decisions where he wanted to make it visually distinct from justice putting, League. so yeah. even though even though the theatrical cut is in the as is very very close to the aspect ratio he intended all along he decided to change it because he was like, oh, I, you know, I kind of like the square and I want it to be different. Four um, by three, black, black and white, white four hours long, to me, are yeah. all choices Absolutely. to push it as far away from Whedon as possible. Yeah. No, I, and I, let, I and let's not forget how this that. looks for ultra-wide monitor users. Jesus Christ, it's half the screen is black <laughs> bars. Oh, there yeah. was another, there's another mistake. So this is a very specific thing. But so if you watch the film on HBO Max, on any screen that's taller than 16 by 9, like I have a MacBook laptop that's 16 by 10, right? So it's slightly taller. Now, if you watch it on that, it doesn't actually go to the top of the screen. Hold on, just I have an image. There you go. It doesn't actually fill the entire screen because whoever, whatever file is being streamed on the platform is actually 16 by 9 with black bars on the sides instead of just native 4 by 3. So it doesn't even uh, fill the entire screen. Lol. <laughs> oh Whoops. god. Like that's what it looked like when I watched it on my oh, screen. Oh, that's it didn't horrendous. Need... Yeah, it's an amateur mistake. It's something that amateur filmmakers it's something I made with my first short film. I instead of cropping the actual video, I put black bars in the timeline. And it's a rookie oh. move. I don't know Look who at... did this or why. It's very <laughs> strange though. <laughs> <laughs> well, Disney Plus is the same issue where um, if, they ha if they have widescreen content, it doesn't actually fill up the ultra wide like it's meant to. It just like turns into a little rectangle. Glib uh. said 4 by 3 IMAX filmed in 35mm, not 70mm. Idiot, he's an idiot. <laughs> okay. okay. Idiot, he's an idiot. Okay. okay. Glib. Okay. Capital Glib O is being wrong. Glib. Damn. Wait, what about me? Uh, I'm not 100% clear. I think I scrolled up too far now. Fucking hell. <laughs> he says capital O is being wrongo. Yeah. For okay. what? About Tell the, me how I'm wrong. Everything. I'm sure you'll post it again, and then I can read it out to you about IMAX is 65 millimeters usually. Okay. I did not talk uh, about the film format. I'm just saying... What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, you were saying that not it's sure. really weird to put that black <laughs> bond in the video <laughs> file. Yeah. Which is True. And that's what it is, because <laughs> otherwise it would fill up the entire screen. It would go to the top of the screen. Someone just posted Chris Stuckman likes it. Okay. <laughs> of course Chris Stuckman likes um, it. Uh, Chris Stuckman is not an authority, I'm sorry to hey, say. Hey, leave old Chris alone. He liked Rise of Skywalker vaguely, I think. Vaguely. I <laughs>
Quib, I'm saying me the while I, um, mistake is that the file that's streamed on HBO Max is actually 16 by 9. It's not 4 by 3 or else it would fill the entire screen. That's the amateur mistake. The point is that it should fill the entire... It, it should fill to the top of the screen on whatever size screen it's on. Yeah, the bars that uh, Cap is talking about are the top and bottom, not left and right. Yes. Um, it, it's like, yeah, reduced a little bit. It's... Uh... Amusing, but maybe 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 Glib is responding to that. I can't quite tell. He said the movie was. I don't know. It's it's not a three. big point. So <laughs> I know it's retarded. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um. So uh yeah then um the 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 parts of the film that I think that uh y you'd have to change if anyone was to make any cut of it is kind of just being like shit man. Nobody's got any character in it. Like, Cyborg's the one that gets a decent amount of scenes and focus, which, by the way, a lot of people keep referencing that as why Whedon's is absolutely the worst. I'm just sitting here like, man, Cyborg is so much better off without all those scenes. <laughs> <laughs> so many payoffs yep. and development and then aspects and actions he could do that make him so frustrated as a person to watch. And... But he's not as powerful in Whedon's cut. I mean, some people are gonna listen to that and just be like, "Are you serious right now?" And it's like, so suck <laughs> to Manhattan. This, the whole, uh, you know, I'm a monster, but uh, I have to learn that not only am I not alone with my fa my parents having died, and not only am I not broken with having lost my body, uh, I am also gonna do the right thing and 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 potentially sacrifice myself to stop the unity. It's like, how could you not appreciate the shit out of that arc? It's like, oh, it's all the connective pieces. They're all terrible. Unfortunately, <laughs> and we here over at Ifaponia uh, don't tend to celebrate an idea if it's all floompy in execution. We're usually like, "Oh man, yeah. I can see what you were trying to do," and um, yeah, it's it's been done a million times before. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm saying go for it if you want to do the whole like discovering a you know new new lease on life, Frankenstein trying to get his heart back in order, blah blah blah. I um. We went over it earlier as well, but like the other aspect I think is a problem is that they never really give us any reason to think that he would have a harsh existence. He seems to be relatively happy. They didn't even do the obvious of him like having headaches or um, he gets angry because he can't fucking deal with the amount of information that's passing through him at all times. Like just anything. Yeah. Or random nose blood. Yeah, you could always do that. <laughs> that's like how that's a cheat code to show that somebody's not doing well. <laughs> It's pretty, it's pretty good. It's, it's it's like a writing tool. It's just it's just really solid. Like um, but it can mean your brain is bleeding when you you know you're oh, watching no. a film that's gonna be sad or tragic, and the character has a dog. You're like, oh no, no 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> but never a cat. You don't you don't see that as often. Or yeah, they don't typically kill cats. You're right. Yeah. Well, remember how so Wonder Woman can't make tea. Yeah, uh, she's only had a hundred years to practice. <laughs> that is kind of strange, actually. I suppose you could argue it's just the fact that the British guy's gonna know how to do it better, I guess. Like, she seems to have uh, a idea. To but boot. she lives in the- she didn't, oh wait, no, she lives in France or whatever. Wait, no, she lives in the UK London. sometimes too, She was in she? London uh, in the, the beginning, beginning of this film, yeah. was the stream. Well, she's she's only recently moved terrorists. here and recently been learning about tea, alright? Ah, right, I get you. Tea? Do, do they don't of... have tea on Themyscira? I feel like, you know, they would have, like, um... What else are they, um... they drinking? Yeah. Yeah. Mountain Dew. It's kind of so funny that Themyscira is meant to be presented as really nice, but I wouldn't want to live there. No, like, well. there's no air conditioning, there's no heaters, <laughs> there's no electricity. I can't watch TV, I can't do anything except, wow. like, feed cows and stuff. Sounds like Germany. <laughs> you consumer. Hey, we don't yeah, want to live look, life right. to the fullest. I would fullest. rather consume than, and plus, they, I mean, the that it's for, it's for Amazon to suck. Like, oh, we're a supreme fighting force with bow and arrow and swords, <laughs> and dude, the German like, World War One Germans killed them <laughs> pretty yeah. easily. Yeah, and and just imagine if it was World War Two, like soldiers. <laughs> Someone on that beach, game over, and now it's like 2020. Yeah, I was gonna say, a modern, got, like, modern just soldier coming onto that beach with, uh, just like, you know, your standard sort of rifle and having cover. 
Man, he's going to take out yeah. a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's why it's funny that they're presented as... Though, admittedly, the Atlanteans proved even more incompetent. Like, how how do you fail at... How, how is Steppenwolf better at moving through water than you guys? That's, like, your thing. That's all you do. <laughs> well, because Does totally Steppenwolf so need to breathe, actually? Heart. Like, well, how can he just exist under there without any consequences? Well, <laughs> but, imagine... but he roars. But he roars underwater. Yeah, <laughs> imagine Steppenwolf, like, he can't jump out of the water until he sinks all the way to the bottom so he can propel himself up, and so he's just slowly sinking, and it's pretty deep, <laughs> and he's just waiting, because he, he can breathe underwater or whatever, I guess, and he's just like, hmm, 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 come on. He, he, he's like, he, he beds his legs down, he's about to go, and he's like, everyone at the same time, okay? Three, two, <laughs> it's gonna, oh, it's gonna surprise you, I swear to god, three, two, it's gonna be so funny. <laughs> he can make it look epic as fuck. So he's actually baiting Mera into making the water bubbles just so he can breathe again, so he can take another <laughs> yeah. yeah, she does it, and he's like, oh no, you got me. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> Sucking my juice out. <laughs> Tosses. That's such a Why weird moment. So long, he like, he just fucks everyone up in that scene, and when he gets to her, the person who actually affected him, by the way, she knocked him down, so he's got more reason to knock her out, grabs her by the throat, and he's like, um, he says, what does he say? Something like there's no use in fighting or something? Or, or the... Can't escape, I think it's he says. No some, some, some generic villain line, yeah. Yeah, like, or oh, your soul will be mine. <laughs> Standard. <laughs> your soul is mine. I will eat your family. And you're like, oh. Yeah, I like that line hmm. too. There's a whole book of them. Um, someone you can rely on for these pieces of dialogue is the uh, the villain in Ant-Man. He's the, uh, I forget his name, Yellow Jacket. <laughs> oh, uh, Yellow Jacket. Yeah, Yellow Jacket. I will destroy everything you love. <sighs> <laughs> You're Sorry. insulting to me, Scott. Your, Your entire existence. existence is insulting. To me. <laughs> He's got some of the funniest actually... shit dialogue in the MCU. So... And, and he has actually more of an excuse than than, than Steppenwolf does, because at least his brain is going gloomy. Like it's not much, yeah. but it's like it's more than Steppenwolf's genericness, because he's just evil for no reason. <laughs> Well, Steppenwolf is one of them, like, we don't, he, he talks to Desaad, and Desaad's like, you gotta get 50,000 more w worlds, which is, I, I don't think the film realizes how many planets that, <laughs> that is. <laughs> so a lot of planets. That's half of all the planets that Darkseid has that... ever conquered. That's gonna take him, like, thousand years. Here's your mistake, Green, okay? Earth is special. It had defenders on Remember, the uh, big thing that destroyed Darkseid and his whole army was that the planet he attacked actually tried to stop him. They were like, hey, don't. As opposed to all the other planets, They just I did. Guess. Well, there was just, so, you, uh, if you guys played Dyson Sphere program, they're mostly empty. Nobody on these planets. Yeah. Yeah. So you land a Steppenwolf, and you're like, oh, where's some other boxes? And they're like, we're over here, man. Nobody's here. I don't know. It's, yeah, it's not really that interesting. <laughs> Chill here for a bit. All right, Unity. Like, it detonates, the whole planet changes, and then Desaad is like, did you did you do it? And he's like, yeah, I did it. And he's like, all right, scratch one. Uh, so one, call, call 49,999 yeah. to go. And I imagine just Steppenwolf's life has been boring as fuck, and he's just been like, oh, what am I ever... Remember, he was at more than 50,000, because that's how many he has left. So he's probably at yeah, something like 100. And then he got all the way down to 50. Then he comes to this planet, and he's like, what the fuck? There's all these, like, fish people, and weird <laughs> yeah. medieval people. Oh, suddenly a horrible super pe person lasering my horns off? What? The oh my god, this is... I don't like this. I'm out. Darkseid, help! Rem <laughs> Please! Remember, he keeps his special cream inside those horns, too, as we, oh, as no. we saw. Special red a cream. Special cream. That's for my hands, they get so cream. dry all the time. Yeah. To be fair, most planets are empty. I'm not joking. Like, <laughs> like this, this is... He, he could have conquered, like, all the other planets in the solar system, and and, and the moons as well, because we have moons that would be planets if they were not orbiting around another planet, so he could... Those would be well, worlds. He yes. could, he, he I could guess conquer I'm them. curious, like, what is... What exactly is the objective in just turning planets to dust? Like, why are they doing that? Uh, very good question. Why would you not? Yeah, but <laughs> but parademons are not going to be on the empty planets. Power up demons. Mola, do Power you like any demons. movie? Uh, Batman and Robin. Fucking epic. Yeah. We love shit. Batman and Robin here. Yeah. Why make... do people keep saying that? Do you like anything? Do you not like anything? Or is that... Oh, people don't respond you're allowed negatively to, to that. I was about to say, you're, <laughs> you're, you're allowed, allowed to, to like everything. That's cool. If you don't like everything, you're a bad person. 
Ah, Guys, like right. half of my, like most of my favorite stories, I, if I were to break them down, probably aren't that well written. We make a distinction here between the quality of writing and how much we, how much enjoyment we get out of them. Those are two yep. separate conversations. Well, Neto trilogy, fucking hell yes, uh -huh. fantastic. Fuck yes. That yeah. is some good. There's, there's no need for rat. us to like list all of our favorite things. It's like this. This is why we always find it bizarre. Because <laughs> from their POV, it's like you really do hate everything. From our POV. We're like, we're in this because of how much we love storytelling and loads of movies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so we're like, wait, what? Uh, for instance, we love the Snyder Cut. <laughs> wait oh, a minute. Getting pushed back on that. Oh, no. You, you, you have made a powerful enemy today. My I God. will find you. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it, you bitch. I, uh, well, that was what I was going to say, by the way. As much as Ant-Man and the Wasp villain... Uh, we've been over this before. His his dialogue's terrible. People justify by saying the yellow jacket uh, goop makes you kind of nuts. It fucks with your brain, and that's why he was saying those those tismy things. Um, meanwhile, the the villains in the DCU say the same stuff, but they don't have brain tisms. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, when you say shit like that. So all... Yeah, we all assume they have to have brain. My my favorite is when they're like. What do you mean it doesn't make sense for uh, Zod to, like, kill everybody on the planet? He's a soldier without a war. He's got to kill someone. <laughs> uh, oh, my What God. do you think wars are fought for, friend? What do you think they're fought for? To kill. <laughs> so, yeah, could happen any day. Like, tomorrow, governor's like, man, we want to just fucking kill people. Just fucking do war. Let's do it. Let's go. Do war. <laughs> do war. <laughs> Let's do war, fellas. Call Army Boy number three on Shortcut 7. Tell Mr. him do war. Mr. Freeze from Batman and Robin is a bigger threat than Steppenwolf. True. <laughs> yep. Dude, I would love Superman to be like, I'm a big fan of justice. And then Mr. Freeze goes, cool. And then shoots cool. him. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Justice is served cold. <laughs> 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 the Ice Age. Yeah. Oh, what a legend! We need him back. He uh, needs to, we need a se we need a Batman and Robin sequel as a solo Mr. multiverse. Movie. That he could yeah. show up in Batman's movie. Doctor <laughs> <laughs> Freeze was behind oh, it dude, all. <laughs> if if Joss had made a deal to like have another Flash sequence where he, and he just fucks with the multiverse and he brings in Arnie, Mister Freeze, like that. <laughs> Uh, and he joins them. He's like, nah, I had my whole arc on Batman arc. and Robin. I'm a good man. I'm gonna join you guys. He's <laughs> like, what's your power? It's like, I shoot things and they, make, like, they die. <laughs> like, it's just my whole thing, but with coldness. It's pretty fucked up, actually. Well, in Batman and Robin, they survive. They have to be thawed out in 11 minutes, I think, is the... Uh... Yes. Is that based on anything in real life? Like, can you be frozen for an amount of time and live? No, I, uh, I was gonna say. I feel like that's I feel like thing. that's just a Futurama thing. <laughs> it's like because well, well, the issue like is like if ice crystals will form in your cells, and those are gonna tear your. That's gonna tear you apart on a um, well, microscopic yeah, level. That's how um like rocks and metal and different things can get torn apart, right? When you freeze water, it's like it becomes bigger, and so it fuck it can like break things open and stuff. Um, yeah. Like if, it, uh, bottles of water, yeah, you why, freeze um, them, and then the tops can pop off, and you're just like, oh shit. Yeah, it's why flash freezing meat is much better for it than, like, slow freezing it, because the ice crystals will not have the same amount of time to form, and thus they will not, like, just completely uh, turn it to shreds. Um, fun fact. Why, when you make your sci-fi shit, you have to call it, you know, omni-freeze. Like, what's that? And you're like, yeah. oh, it just means you get frozen and not die. <laughs> like, sweet. Yeah. Hyper sleep. Yep. Quantum freeze. Anti-freeze. You guys remember when Superman was like a split second away from executing the Flash and a, a fucking brave soldier put his life on the line to prevent Superman from executing a superhero? Yeah, what a legend. Yeah, man. If I was the Flash, I'd be like, thank you so fucking much. I don't even know who you are, but <laughs> oh my god, you saved me. And that soldier was probably like, and all in a day's work, buddy, with one of his arms lasered off. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't even save the soldier. He tries to give us no, 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 no. They don't it's just a nub. They don't, they, <laughs> hey, listen, they don't, show, they don't show his body. That means that he's fine. No. 
the the camera like well, expands so that you just can't see the arm nub. <laughs> it's just to the side. Yeah. No, well, I mean, as yep. as we learn, right? Those those three buildings that Superman crashed that ship into were probably empty. I mean, we didn't see anybody in them, so. Oh, we needed that, it. yeah. Like, uh, what, what he was like, Superman, didn't you, like, laser those guys? And he's like, those guys were probably holographic. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? <laughs> they were probably a figment of my imagination, you know? I was pretty delirious. I just woke up. Like, uh, you know, I don't know what's real. He's gotta take the BBS. I would like the DCEU to be a fever dream in canon. That would be yeah. nice. <laughs> you gotta, um... Yeah, like, Batman just wakes up. <laughs> oh, oh, God. What, what did we do? Dream. What have we done? <laughs> I would argue, Superman uh, comes in, is everything alright, Bruce? We gotta, we gotta take BVS to the next level. You know those awkward lines where they just go, it's no population in this area or whatever. Batman's looking at all like the flesh and corpse of different soldiers while several of them are crying and screaming and he's like, oh my god. <laughs> and then he looks at Superman, Superman looks at him and he just goes, uh, th th there's no population in this area. <laughs> it's like, what? No, they're clearly their bodies like, were nope. abandoned. This, this place is abandoned, there's no By one here. life. I can see that there's people here, Batman. He's like, there's no one here. There's no one here. It's it's all <laughs> it's all here. an illusion. And then he just like I don't know gets a stack of cards and does weird tricks with them. See, <laughs> this isn't reality. Nothing that you're seeing is real. Like, oh my god, the world's about to explode! Ring, ring. And the government goes, "It's okay. It's abandoned." The <laughs> <laughs> world is abandoned. <laughs> it's okay. It's barely habitable. It's. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> Seriously, uh, Eddie... somebody just typed out Zack Snyder's Justice League greater, greater, greater than Endgame. It's not that. It's not that transparent. I don't. Hmm. I'm not sure which one I put above Endgame the other. Yesterday, so I don't, I don't know yet. <laughs> I don't know. They what both I think. fuck with time, so it's kind of hard to pick the loser. You know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I would much it's... rather watch Endgame than watch hey, Zack Snyder's Justice League. <laughs> maybe so, I get a lot of a, I get a lot of subjective joy from Endgame, even when I think, yes. even though when I think about it, I get a massive headache about how it yeah. doesn't make sense. Snyder, he doesn't have anything going for him. Fucking, I'm a big fan of justice. Gives me more joy than anything that Zack Snyder has excreted onto the screen with these characters. I, I'm a big fan the of characters. Of his is line. a stretch. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, maybe uh, maybe Fortnite. Yeah, I know, I know. That's that's categorized in cringe, though. <laughs> like Thor playing Fortnite isn't actually like this is the thing. If I was to break down Endgame, I I don't know that I can. I that that section would just be strictly like, oh god, this was just horrible to fucking watch. But I don't know. I can't say anything beyond that, and I don't know if I can count that as criticism at that point. Like, is it out of character for Thor to be playing a video game? It's like. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know. I just wish he never did, because, again, watching Endgame, like, ten years from now or whatever, you would be like, oh my god, remember Fortnite? Ew. Ew. I mean, it was ew in the cinema. I remember being like, oh, oh, why did you do that? Yeah. And just, just like when, have... when Hulk was saying dab, it's like, oh my god, stop mm. it. Hey, Jay defends that dab, actually. Well, I just watched it yesterday, so I, that dab is not, no, I don't, that movie's not that funny. Jay will either. fight you on it. Much. Bringy vs. Jay, the dawn of dabbing. Dawn of yeah, dabbing. Well, this, I... There is a lot wrong with Endgame, like, make no mistake. Like I said, I rewatched it yesterday. A lot was wrong with it. Well, <laughs> that maybe film. maybe that will make people feel better, the, the ones who were listening to us, like, oh god, like Marvel shows, like, no, Endgame's awful, okay? Yeah. Awful. <laughs> um, but I would much rather watch Endgame because, like, Endgame does have characters and well, yeah. fun moments. It's stuff. not really fair to compare yeah. them in that sense because to have characters is a big benefit to a story. Yeah. I think. So many people <laughs> agree. Something that, uh, something that I think so. Justice League doesn't have. Do you like how Superman only has five lines in the Snyder Cut? Or, well, not literally five lines, but it feels like. Like, the amount of dialogue like he had is so it. minimum. Yeah. Um, actually, some of the reviews I watched that were very positive about the Snyder Cut uh, would have the criticism sort of section, and many of them mentioned, like, what the fuck? Where was Superman in this movie? Like, he was marketed. Like, yes, he was. Yeah. He's less in this Barely than in Justice enough. League. And, of course, you could be like, well, I hate him in Justice League because he was too wholesome. And I'd be like, all right. <laughs> oh, um, Okay. <laughs> I, I like the part where they ADR'd in the line, Hey, is this guy giving you any problems? Boom! Go Superman! Yes! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Save the building! Wow, Superman <laughs> being in trick and actually earning his reputation as a great hero that's a really nice guy 
sh that's that's just we can't have that. Oh look, mm. the scene on screen right now. Batman was hurt when he was punched by Superman. What are the odds? Oh of my that? goodness! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is. I think this is the the best addition from Joss, as far as I'm concerned. This scene. Um, oh, definitely. There's a whole bunch for Wonder Woman and Batman. In fact, it turns Wonder Woman from nothing to something, and it turns Batman from uh, thin to thicker, but not, like, amazing. Because Batman in the <laughs> Snyder Cut is, I would like to make a team because that's what Clark would have wanted, and that's what we should do as superheroes. And at the end he goes, I did it. Yeah. <laughs> it's not really much yeah. of anything. <laughs> Um, in this one, he admits to the idea that he's willing to take it so far that he would be willing to die for Superman to come back. Like, that's how much he believes he's good for the wills. Like, oh, damn, that's quite some progress since uh, BVS. And there's plenty to show in terms of e events that would make him think that. Um, I think, Imagine you know, if it was all written well from the start. <laughs> then it oh, would be super well that's informed. what we all get very sad about. Um, those clips that you uh, you threw in, meme, for the the EFAP movies. Just Batman and Superman talking about each other with respect for the things that they do. It's like, man, yeah. wouldn't that be neat? That would be neat. Be very They're all neat. cringe. Put it away. No yeah. cringe stuff. You know, <laughs> that was my best friend, and you just killed him. Oh, fuck you, Lex Luthor. Yeah. But we're never gonna get that now. Mm -mm -mm. Yep. Do you guys remember <clears throat> yeah, when Aquaman in Joss's vision is smashing the ball and it's like and you're, you're sort of sitting there like man all right you know and you, you might even smirk because you're like what the fuck and then you go to, <laughs> to, to snyder's and it's like some weird indie song <laughs> it's like, it yeah doesn't match at all it's like, like two minutes to get him into odd. the water yeah <laughs> and it zooms I, in I thought fucking the music face. cues all around were pretty shit in the snyder cut yeah it's a case of uh whether or not the songs themselves are any good, they are used in places that are so fucking disjointed. You're just like, what the hell? Um, I don't know. Yeah, kind of like are. the yodeling. Well, it, there's yeah, it's, it's that's a, insane, man. It's a pattern, it's I, not a point. There's loads of soundtrack choices that are fucking bizarre. Well, like the techno music in Flash's introduction, yep. the heavy metal that just is supposed to be the team coming together, but we didn't really get that motif <laughs> anywhere else in the film. I... Well, what is happening with that soundtrack? That's again uh, yeah. a problem thematically, by the way, what you just said about like, like, why is everybody a part of this team? It's like Wonder Woman, do the right thing. Batman, do the right thing. Superman, do the right thing. Cyborg. Um, do the right thing, I, I guess. The Flash, you wanted to have friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And like, Aquaman, I guess. Uh, he was told to yeah. by Willem Dafoe. <laughs> I don't know. Which is, which is amusing, right? Because the Avengers see, you see, Avengers was wise to have the team sort of fracture in the middle of the film and oh, then yes. come back together at the end. It's a they, really uh, good way to just have that payoff. Yeah, and and Loki's villain role in that film was to stew the resentment. He wants them to break apart, to be less bonded, and that like realizing that, and then Fury using Coulson's death to be like, oh man, yep. Coulson, uh, you you collect trading cards of Cap. You, you're, you're a hero to him and stuff. It's all this invigorating stuff, and then obviously Iron Man regularly showing he doesn't care about Coulson. He wants him to go away, but when he's dead, he's like furious, and it's because yeah. yep. that's Tony. That's, that's his whole thing. He doesn't show his emotions typically, but he'll uh, he'll definitely feel them. And so it's like, don't um, I'm pretty sure Iron Man just fucks off. He's like, I'm gonna go get my better suit, and uh, Cap's already <laughs> finding a way to get to New York without like being sanctioned. And isn't Fury just like, yep, it worked. They're all going. Yep. yep. Avengers is slightly guy better than the Snyder Cut. His name is Phil Coulson. <laughs> Avengers is a good movie, and it's upsetting to me that people are just disregarding that fact because they want to shit on Joss Whedon now. I'll tell you what, man. It felt yep. weird for a moment there that I was like citing like why events take place based on character actions that have <laughs> histories. Yeah. Like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Chill the fuck out of that, bro. Fucking basic. concept. Yeah. Yeah, like, you look at the scene where they go to the tower... And as, when they're first doing something kind of as a group, and you're like, why though? And it's like, well, they kind of just, like, Bruce found him, was just kind of like, let's just go. It's like, yeah, I guess. 
It's not like very they wanted that Avengers money, but they completely missed the fundamental point about why Avengers was so successful, and that is like you have individual fan bases from each of these universes, and you allowed these um characters to grow um in their own right and then you get to put them in a blender together and see what happens when these fully developed characters bounce off of each other no one in this film is developed before this film and they're not really developed in the film either so you don't get it either way yeah we we don't yeah. we don't have any conflict we don't have any meaningful conflict in this film because none of these characters are very different from one another which is funny because they tried to inject conflict into justice league between like Aquaman and Cyborg and stuff, and and they tried, but it's hard to when there's so little time, yeah, to fix it. And when the characters coming in are already so flat, whereas like Iron Man was soup was already pretty well developed by that point. Captain America Wait. was like a pretty clear. Well, oh, Mola believes fuck? movies are objectively good or bad, yet yet loves the writing and Attack of the Clones. That's not uh, true. <laughs> Didn't I shit all over Bro. Attack of the Clones? You did. <laughs> you did. Camino Saber Dart, man. I, I feel like I have a memory of me shitting on it and attacking it with someone on the stream defending it. I, I no, you know. love it, Mahler. Right, you love well, Attack of the Clones. You think that that's a great, well-written movie. Okay. Like, guys, again, like ver like slash dislike is not the same as good slash bad. We make this distinction all the time. What is so hard to understand I about this? I think what's happening mm. is what's happening on the boys' stream. We've got new people in here. Uh. <laughs> Sometimes I completely fucking forget that there are, there's the possibility of someone surfing the internet and... I would have thought we wouldn't have that many new people because they would get put off straight away. They'd be like, wait, you think the Joss cuts, but fuck you guys. You'd be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Like, we love it Batwoman is, here. Though. We don't think it's very well written. <laughs> yeah, Bat Batwoman is swell. And Batman and Robin. Mola likes Batwoman, but also says it's a bad team. No, it's a fucking masterpiece. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> That's what we should all strive to be. Is it something as good I as mean, Batwoman? We've said before. We, uh, um, we need to catch up on that. Both uh, Ryan Wilder and Kate Kane are further characterized than Captain Marvel and Ray. Um, they're both just really awful people. That's the problem. Uh, yeah, that that'll that'll do it. <laughs> you know, just have them be terrible people. Yeah, that will cause some problems. But um, we never really got a blurb from uh, from you, Fringy. We've had everybody deliver their sort of like overall thoughts oh. of the situation, and then the quality right. of Snyder Cut, and then compared to Whedon. So if you want to do a little speech on, uh, right. uh, so what? So just the 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 broad summary of this film. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. <sighs> this film <laughs> this film frustrates me so much. Everything <laughs> about it, I hate. There's so much that I find annoying about the film itself and also the context in which it was made. Um, but fundamentally, what exactly is Zack Snyder's Justice League? <laughs> it's honestly, it's so close. I don't like to say that there is such a thing as a bad idea, but like, God damn, I don't know why you would do this. Why you would want to make like a Justice League film where all of the characters are flat and miserable and everything is awful and there's no optimism, and there's no hope, or anything like that at all. It's just a really sad, dour, miserable experience. It's a little annoying that for some reason with this film, everybody has totally disregarded the arguments that they made for like, MCU Spider-Man sucks. He's not like the comics. Meanwhile, Batman's nothing like he's supposed to be, and Superman's nothing like he's supposed to be. And nobody really cares. Because it's, you know, this is like a new direction. This is a new vision. This is a new take on the characters. And you know what? That's fine. That's totally fine. That's okay. You could do a different vision for your Batman and your Superman. That's fine. It's totally fine. It's shit. That's the big problem with this fucking movie. It's awful. Four hours. And it's what, you know, before we started this DCEU arc, I never knew. I never thought that we would be coming out saying that like justice league is the best one and that this is actually worse at the beginning i just assumed that it was a foregone conclusion that this film would be better but it's worse and you know uh maybe maybe the moral of uh zack snyder's justice league is that you got to find the silver lining you got you got to find like the little 
you gotta find the good in the bad. And the good that I found in this is that I can't trust any of my perspectives on films before I watch them. Because goddamn, you watch a movie, you don't watch it for a couple of years, and then you come back, and then you find out that it's awful, and way <laughs> worse than you ever could have imagined. <laughs> what a fun... I, I hope that there are no more films in this universe. I want them to just move on. I don't want Dark Side coming back. I don't want the nightmare sequence. I don't want this just side of it. it. I want Full it to stop. just move on. Move on. Reset. Do it all over again. Which they're not going to do. But hey, like I would still take if they just do whatever it looks like they're going to do now. Where they just like move on and try and reset and forget it. That's what I want. I don't want any more of this. I hate it, personally. I really don't like that we have a Batman who kills people and is an asshole and a Superman who isn't optimistic and hopeful. Um, and one I don't give a shit about any... Well, I mean, that's... Yeah, but that, <laughs> <laughs> well, I say that, but it's like, you think about all the missed... Pot- oh, yeah. I think I think that's um, what's the most disappointing thing about uh, this film. We have... This was the first chance that they had to do a live-action justice film. And... Um, you blew it you had it all and you blew it <laughs> that's how i feel about it oh yeah it's just you you can't do it again like you can't get the this again this opportunity it's gone and you look at it and you think like man Endgame is really bad but like isn't it cool that we at least got this you know, that we got this, this spectacle or this like moment of having all these things happen. And we're never going to get it now with uh, DC. We're never going to have like all of these characters coming together to fight a big bad. It's done. Um, that's super disappointing. But, uh, you know, I, I, I guess uh, I don't, and I don't know how much I care about the whole idea of like, well, fans let, made this happen. It's like, oh, I, I wish it was a better film. I wish it was a better film <laughs> yeah, that it happened for. Don't we all? Yeah. Um it's it's really bad. That's that's all I'm trying to say. Yeah. And I the think thing if, is if they we... had so much less to prove than Marvel as well, like this is like yep. this should have been a slam dunk. Hmm. Yep, you had everything. You didn't have to make your cinematic universe without Spider Man <laughs> or without the X Men or without Fantastic Four. You didn't, you didn't, you had everything. You had everything that you needed. Um, and you had the fact that you, you've already been shown a formula that you can follow and get decent results. And you can soak up the audience. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. You, I mean, you know the mistakes that they made and you can do it better. If I ask my dad, has he seen the movie where Aquaman and Iron Man fuck up, you know, uh, Homelander? He'd be like, I'm not sure. Yeah, as opposed to, wait, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, it just, because it's just like a lot of the n- normal people... It, I could see plenty of people watching Justice League and being like, is Iron Man in this one? And you're like, no. I honestly <laughs> think the reason why Aquaman was so successful is because people thought it was a Marvel movie. <clears throat> I mean, I've never really truly understood how Aquaman did what it did. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that movie's hilarious, though. Uh, EFAP movies for that. When the DC arc slows the fuck down, because <laughs> holy shit, like <laughs> it's it's a weird sort yeah, of climax, is isn't it? Because like the whole reason we started the DC arc is because I was like, oh, the Snyder Cut will come out. Wouldn't it be fun to not only talk about all the DC films like extensively, but to to see how they rank with how we tend to sort of place films these days, compare it to the MCU, compare it to each of the individual films as they come out. And the fun, fun bonus, I think as as we started it, I was like, Rags has seen, like, none of them. So it was like, oh, yeah. which, by the way, for those who are like, oh, where's Rags? Uh, we're likely going to do uh, Meme Fab next week will come out, um, because everyone's going to be doing the Easter stuff. And then the week after that, we ve- may very well have another Snyder Cut stream, but we're going to check out some people's reviews. And Rags will be back, and he will be able Good to tell you God. what he thinks. And I'm pretty sure Rags would be a lot more curt about how... Snyder Cut is really bad, even more so than Fringy, I think, so. That's probably, probably what he yeah. thinks. Good lord. Um, Pain. Three female Pain. relatives of mine went to see Aquaman from Momoa only. Wow. Never yeah, even seen probably... a DC film. I just didn't realize that was, you know, such a thing. Like, I get Neither that it's a thing, I. but that much of a thing. Hey, Jason Momoa's in it. Wouldn't that be nice to watch this film? <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that either. I guess so. 
Um, I wonder if he's getting a big old pack. I, I wonder how many people are like, man, Amber Heard's in this one. I really got to see it. Well, they're filming uh, Aquaman 2 now, right? This year, yeah. There was a there was someone that tried to compare us covering the Snyder Cut to uh, Johnny, uh, sorry, Amber Heard uh, covering um, a movie like with Johnny Depp in it. Reviewed by Johnny. It's Depp. like I'm like, so here's the thing, you you're like you are referencing Amber Heard in, in a negative light, but um, Zack Snyder's the one that just gave Amber Heard more work. How's that? How does that make you feel? <laughs> He certainly put her in more of the film. Of... I don't know if all of that was recorded. Oh no, wait, no, he because the the nightmare stuff was new. So the yeah, nightmare did give him sequence, one of it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. She didn't have to be in the nightmare sequence. True. No? And even if you desperately, for the sake of continuity, had to show it because she's there in the you know the actual, you could have just had it. She wasn't in that particular scene. She was she was really far back. She was picking up some stuff off the floor. Okay. Don't need to see her. But yeah, he uh, he popped her in. I've not seen many people talk about that at all, uh, despite no, the fact that... it's kind of weird, isn't it, right? Yeah, because like, when Aquaman 2 comes out, people are going to just start shitting on it again. Because well, they'll probably it's not... boycott it, uh, I'd yeah. imagine. A lot of people But anyway. you're not going to boycott this because, again, you cultivated your personality around it, so it'd be real awkward to uh, abandon <laughs> it. Wow. You know, it'd be real awkward uh... to abandon this one. Hey, look, all right, I don't know. It's just kind of amusing, that's all. That it's just sort of forgotten about. Because it would be really awkward. You. When did we decide that Zack Snyder was this visionary filmmaker? If the world makes made sense a few years ago, we were shitting on him, and rightfully <laughs> yeah. so. Honestly, Why are we demanding happy. this? You know the um the room analogy I, I make. Not the room, the movie. The room is in. There's a big room with everybody in it who talks about the thing, and then everybody who fucking hated it left the room because they don't care. While the people who love it stayed. Yep. I think as this drummed up more and more, sort of just just I don't know. Just, surrounding controversy slash discussion more and more people were walking back into that room but one by one and they were met with a room filled with people saying it's amazing and so you kind right. of just sort of go um hmm I, you know yeah, I, guess I guess i'm kind of feeling it yeah i'm kind of feeling it honestly and uh you know when you get told this is a guy who got extra years the 70 million extra monies filmed new things to like strengthen it got to have his own vision back and then you watch it i think if you have your phone and you look at it when you get yeah. bored and then you look back when the story happens, you might be convinced that, yeah, you know what, this is working out. This is, I'm, what a, I'm yeah. thinking this film's pretty good, actually. And what then, a rousing praise. the reverse happens with Justice League. Whenever anyone mentions it, it's like, ugh, ugh. And by the way, rightfully so, but that should be applicable to Snyder <laughs> too. So I don't understand what the yeah. fuck happened. It's, it's like a... Um, a collective sort of just like it, it is good though isn't it and you're like i don't know let's talk about all of the story beats and how the, all of them are broken it's like yeah but i liked it you're like oh it's no. longer this so of course chestnut. it's gonna be better right it's like well i thought that too but then yeah. i saw it <laughs> well it's what we said and then there's the, um... the there's the narrative that like oh there's the artist and then there's the studio and the people financing mm. it that are always against them that narrative is really strong for people and i would like for someone to or like for Dude. those people to come to the realization eventually that, you know, the artist can be wrong and their vision can be stupid. Well, this reminds me very much of, uh, I think, I think Bioware is the best example of this. A lot of people are like, oh, EA sucks. It's Bioware. And then the more you learn, the more you're like, oh, Bioware has been making some really bad decisions <laughs> as a company. Because of course, it's not always the fault. Like, you know, it's, it's funny, right? It, just put yourself in the position of the financier for IE, you know, a game like Anthem where it's like, Okay, you've had seven years and like a hundred million dollars. What do you have to show for it? Well, you know, we got like a little flying demo and uh, we, we got some like early proofs. It's like, nah, no, nah, no, nah, you got it. All right, you got to release it. We got to like pull the trigger on this. And it's kind <laughs> of the same here, right? You've you've made these films. People are not responding well to them. And so it's, it's twofold. Not only are people not responding well to them, but they're also performing poorly at the box office. Something's got to give if you want to keep making like these films. And as Anne also... <laughs> To be charitable to them, are we going to seriously suggest that nobody who is like a studio exec or a producer has any opinion on film at all? Like they don't even yeah. realize that there's nothing in their head that says there's something wrong with this film. Like, actually, um, I just can't put my finger on it. One of the things YMS said sort of near the <laughs> beginning was he, one of the topics he really wanted to talk about was uh, the concept of creative vision. And he was like, we know that Zack filmed a Green Lantern scene and he was forced to remove it from the Snyder Cut. And so therefore the Snyder Cut is not his vision, like definitionally. Mm -hmm. 
And so he's like, so when is it okay? Where's the line? How does that work? And then, of course, why don't we apply that for Joss, right? Because creative vision seems to only apply when you come from scratch rather than taking someone else's thing and making it your own. Apparently, you're not allowed to do that and have a creative vision. And then, why can't three people making something have a creative vision together and then one person uh, also have that? And you might be like, well, they can. It's like, okay, what about five? What about ten? Then it's like, what if 15 board members decided, hey, I think Superman should say, I'm coming to save you guys because you're my friends. <laughs> yeah, you know, that sort of shit. <laughs> and then one guy goes, no, he should say, piss. You're just like, oh, that's... I don't even know what that is. <laughs> it's like, well, is the uh, you get to the point where you're like, wait, so what are we valuing now? And, and creative vision to me just seems like a, a weird smokescreen where it's like the focus should probably be on uh, hoping for good writing, right? Because there was a narrative for ages that it should be the writer director gets full control, <clears throat> and then we had Ryan Johnson fuck that up, and so we're like, all right, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to think about this again now. What do we actually want? <laughs> we want good writing. That's what we want. When you find out yeah. the movie you think is really well written had like seventeen writers on it, does that mean it's bad now? Mm. It's it'd more just be surprising. Yeah, so. <laughs> and that's the thing. I completely agree. And I, uh, if someone was like, "Do you want to watch a sequel?" Let's say Spider Man uh, No Way Home. Is this what it's called, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So if you want. said either it can be written by two people or seventeen people, I'd be like, I two, please. Probably two. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> two. Um, but, uh, you know, if it turned out in those two universes, the 17 writers one was actually really good because you had, like, three mains and then four people working on, like, all the dialogue every day with the main beats and the rest of them just doing touch-ups and focusing on will building or something. It's like, oh, wow, I don't know. Maybe they're a really good team. Yeah. So, uh, By the way, the whoever vetoed the Green Lantern scene with Jon Stewart as Snyder's cut, thank you. <laughs> Don't ruin John Stewart, please. GG, well played. So, yeah, uh, and that's not to say, though, that it wasn't neat that he got his chance to make this movie in, like, a creative freedom says, but at the same time, I just don't see why this wouldn't apply to everything. Why didn't yeah. we say this mm -hmm. about Ryan Johnson's The Last Jedi? It was his vision. That's right, it was his vision. You just didn't like it, and people hate what they don't understand. Oh, no. <laughs> hey, yeah. look! It's really it's. It, it, hey, yeah, it's it's fun when people say that to you, isn't it? That you don't understand it. It's really <laughs> fun. Isn't that a great way to have conversations about films? Being told that you didn't get it. <laughs> oh my god! So they've just defeated Steppenwolf in Justice League for the second time, <laughs> and uh, in Snyder's, we've just started the nightmare sequence. And I'm curious which one reaches the <laughs> credits first. Not that this is a fair thing. I I don't even know where I started them both, but I'm just amused by. <laughs> We're still doing establishing shots for the nightmare sequence. <laughs> it's like, Come yeah. on, little buddy, you can do it. <laughs> run, Justice League, run. <laughs> Booyah! Have... I'm pretty sure Justice League's gonna Booyah. win because you get that whole fucking chat with the Joker about jerking him off or whatever. So it's, yeah, we got that <laughs> to come. <laughs> Dude, when I saw people saying like that was the fucking best conversation I've seen Batman and the Joker have, it's like. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> I just, Calm down. This, Calm it's, down. That is embarrassing. Um, All right, you should, I just noticed. You be... well, hold on. So in Justice League, does um does the ship that Batman was flying into the dome thing come back in Justice League? At, like once they save the day, does it show up again? Well, uh, couldn't you couldn't you argue it's Alfred sending a second one in or whatever? <laughs> what? Maybe. Oh wait, no, you couldn't, right? Because they're special. It's like one it's ship. It's just one. Yeah. They don't. They don't foreshadow. Yeah, we've we've been working on two of these things. Yeah, because he crashes the ship in both cuts. But does it does it come back in Justice? No, no, it doesn't. <laughs> oh, shit. that's sad. Is that the same ship, it's, or is that a different ship? It's the same ship. The big like Pretty back sure carrier thing, right? Yeah, because that that was. You're right. That was destroyed, as far as I knew. It was just, so it stays destroyed in in Justice League, but it it, it inexplicably comes back in the Snyder Cut. <laughs> well, I just remember. You guys have to uh, understand, all right? There's a lot wrong with this film. No. I like to imagine Joss Whedon doing all the reshoots, especially for that ending, and just screaming off camera, "Smile, smile, <laughs> damn you, smile more, more!" And they're like, <laughs> "Joss, why are you such a mean man?" Like, I'm just trying to get happiness into this world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, well, like I said, I actually have to go within like a couple minutes now, so I figure what makes most sense is for everybody to say what they're up to and what they're doing, and then we'll probably end the stream around this. So, <gasps> we go left to right, right to left, I don't know. Um, Who knows? Sure. Fuck it, left well. to right, go Cap, do it. Hello, I'm still working on a review of Devs. It's an awful show, it's really fun to talk about how awful it is. And, um... Yeah, more videos to come. Maybe a, maybe a Snyder Cut video. Who knows? We'll find out. You and I will find out at the same time. Anyway, uh, yeah, you can check out the channel. There's some good stuff there. That's all I got. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And um, I was going to do links for everything everyone's going to be talking about in descriptions already. All there. Click away. Copy paste. Mm. It's all wonderful. Fringy, what are you up to? What have you done recently? What did you release recently? <clears throat> so, the crash video is finally done. It's been out for about a week. The response has been very heartwarming. Thank you all for the kind words. And after a little bit of time thinking about what the next video will be, you might have remembered a few minutes ago that I, I mentioned that I'd rewatched uh, Avengers Endgame. Um, yeah, that movie's not good. Um, so, uh, <laughs> it's very I think, bad. I think, I, think, I think it might be worthwhile to uh, have a little wee chat about uh avengers endgame so uh yeah uh you you'll see that in like four months um but in the meantime <laughs> i'm working on the fringy comic the first page is up i think it's up on the patreon and uh but but yeah it'll, it'll be like probably a month away and then it'll start getting released weekly once i've got more pages done uh and then streams but otherwise yeah that's that's what i've been working on uh metal what are you doing that's that's me. I'm here doing EFAP. Uh, no. Uh, I started my work back up on the Drum Week 2 video. Uh, I finally finished merging all my notes. Uh, I think it's like 17 pages of notes. Uh, there's no script yet, so it's probably gonna get longer. Uh, it's gonna be Chunky Boy, because that movie's really bad. Uh, so yeah, that, that's gonna come out someday. Uh, I mostly have only time to work on it on the weekend, so... It's not as fast as I want it to be, but I'm I'm doing my best. Uh, mm -hmm. Other than that, I'm just I'm just basically streaming uh, after work. On the Twitch, that's, that's... Twitch, what are you playing li oh. lately? What's the cool new game? Uh, I uh, the cool new game, Dark Souls Remaster. <laughs> mm. Classic mm. one. No, I cool just game. fucked around. I, I'm actually figuring out what I want to play next, but uh, right now I'm just fucking around with random games, pretty much, and see what's fun. Let's see the, most of the phallus here is uh, just hanging out on the stream as well just talking about things and bips and bobs mm -hmm. all that good stuff uh i yeah. like bips and bobs yeah um i'm i'm i'm, I'm actually I'm a gonna, big gonna, fan gonna... of bips and bobs yeah yeah, yeah we yeah. don't hate everything we like bips and bobs yeah bips and bobs, Yay, are bips and bobs. yeah i'll probably start a stream up right when we finish up here so if you, you want to hang out i'm gonna gonna do a stream <laughs> <laughs> There's uh, there is a link to that in the description. Go and grab it Indeed. up. Uh, Mr. Southpaw, what are you doing? Well, still working on my script for Last of Us Two. It's uh, over a hundred pages long, and I'm trying to do the best I can to <laughs> uh, address every issue, at least every major issue in that game, uh, in depth, but also being relatively concise and to the point. Um, and of course, I'm I'm here in partaking in the DC EU arc on on EFAB. It's so incredibly fun. Um, and on that note, I I just want to say, you know, we we talked about this, and I want to make this clear. And you know, we're we're really not affiliated with Zack Snyder's Justice League, as far as I'm concerned. And in light of recent <laughs> events, we we really, you know, if EFAP teaches us anything, it's about coming together to criticize Ew. shit writing and that there's no room for bad takes. That is all. So true. Um, and the meme repository. What are you up to? Okay, well, um, I'm obviously still editing the um, EFAP movies for the DCEU. The next one on the chopping block is Su uh, Suicide Squad, just so I can get that all out of the way so that's not hanging over my head for the rest of time. And then immediately going on to Snyder Cut, after that, I've also obviously got my channel going on. Um, hopefully, I've got all the audio recorded for a Mandalorian video, um, so I'm hoping I can get that out once I have a little bit more uh, time to jump between the fat movies and the uh, and my own content. Just trying to 
figure out that balance and um, of course eventually uh, working on the uh, Rise of Skywalker video. And eventually, uh, so I'm, you know, this is a, this is still early days, but I'm also trying to get a feature film off the ground, um, and I'm getting concept art commissioned for that. So I'm hoping at some point in the future I can talk about that um, with it, with a little bit more detail once everything's sorted out. But yeah, I'm just keep an eye out for that as well. That's pretty sweet. What have you got as a, as a video ideas for the future? I wonder, like a. Topics you want to attack because uh, you did the Boba Fett one. Have you got anything like that? We are like people are wrong about thing. Uh well, uh, well, the uh, the Mandalorian one is about how people are wrong about stormtroopers. So that's kind of so that's kind of what um so that's what that's about. And I've got a I've got video. I've got actually um like a, a like a draft of a script written that's like how you would make a really good Superman game as well. Uh, so I also want to eventually. Uh, get that out and how you could you you could not only play as Superman but as Clark Kent as well and kind of have like a, a reporter kind of mode in there um, to kind of add a bit of variety to gameplay. So I'm I'm, I'm excited to uh, I'm excited to talk more about DC because I think well I think there's a lot of misconceptions about DC that I would like to uh, dispel with uh, my videos. Um, so that's something I also want to push forward in the future. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Um... Links for all of this in the description. As for myself, uh, the boys kicking on with it as per usual. Oh, and something, of course, is a uh, super chat. So I was unable to get to them. I will save them and uh, Rags myself will be doing catch ups as per usual. And, uh, you know, in whatever catch up that is, you'll be able to get more insight on uh, what Rags thought. However, uh, part of the reason why. Uh, this is a short EFAB as well as being relatively exhausted and um, actually no progress on the boys since last we spoke, precious EFAB audience, is because other things have to be worked on sometimes, you know? Like Gadelb, as someone's mentioned in the chat there, Gadelb, on its way, a legendary episode, possibly filled with references as new as recent EFABs. Who knows? Damn. The, the Mooper cut. <clears throat> Of of Gadalb. <laughs> but that's actually not what I've been working on. You gotta you got something coming soon, okay? You disgusting creatures. And uh, mm -hmm. I suppose you know there's, there's no reason not to mention maybe the the title of said thing. You see, when you only sleep for about six hours each night for the past like ten days, because you, you you're desperately trying to put something together that you think people might quite enjoy, and you were supposed to get it out, like, yesterday, and then today, and then you're like, no, it's gonna take a few more days, unfortunately. Um, you still have a little bit of hype for it, and it's still pretty clear what it may have been already, but, um, no point dancing around it too much. It's, uh, <laughs> basically something that is gonna be pretty interesting, probably. Something of a video <laughs> that might change some minds, might not, who knows? Called... Zack Snyder's Justice League, an unbridled rampage. <gasps> oh my um, god! Oh my yeah. goodness. <laughs> <laughs>